From exclusive items to portion sizes, we want to find out all the differences between KFC in India and the US. This is Food Wars. Here in India, we have two types of chicken sandwiches, a crisper and a zinger. In the US, we have two chicken sandwich options. The chicken little, because it's little, and of course, the Kentucky Fried Chicken chicken sandwich, the classic. Now let's weigh them to see how much they weigh. Obviously, Ugh. this thing has not been cleaned in a very long time. All right, first up, the chicken crisper. Our chicken little in the US weighs. Next up, the chicken zinger. 240 grams for the classic chicken sandwich. This thing is a work of art. All right, on to chicken popcorn. Here in India, we have it in three sizes, regular, medium, and large. We're gonna weigh our large popcorn to see how much we get. I actually really love chicken popcorn. I have an idea. We shall weigh one popcorn chicken and add that back to the total. My bad, my bad. They should serve this in movie theaters. I don't want regular popcorn anymore. Mm. I love that they sprinkle in a bunch of sesame seeds and it adds a nice crunch to it. What? Sesame seeds? We don't have that. All right, you guys are lucky. That sounds really nice. We only have one size according to the website and the KFC I went to, and that is this. <laughs> How accurate these measurements need to be, really. Oh, it's so good! Unfortunately, here in India, we do not have mashed potatoes, but that would be pretty awesome. We do have fries, we're big fans of them, and they come in two sizes, medium and large. And in the US, we also have two sizes of fries at KFC, the individual for an individual and the large, also for an individual. Let us now measure the large to see how much you get. 140 grams. <laughs> that's never not funny. That's the third time that's happened, and it's always funny. Look at that block of fries. Our largest fry is more than double their largest fry. Here's our individual. 150. Our smallest is bigger than their largest. In KFC India, we can get our chicken in six portion sizes. Number one, the single piece. Two piece, they like to give you one breast piece and one leg piece, kind. Four piece, leg piece to top it all off. The leg piece on top, as they say. Like cherry on top, no? Okay. Now we move on to buckets. We have four sizes. The first one is a five piece bucket that comes with only leg pieces and also does not come in a bucket for some reason. Why KFC? I want a bucket. Next up, we have a six piece bucket, an eight piece bucket, and the largest one of them all, a 10 piece leg bucket. Woo, that's a lot of chicken. In the US, our KFC chicken comes in seven portion sizes. One, which you can get a la carte, two piece with a combo, Three piece with a combo, four piece with a combo. Then buckets, that work? Okay. We have an eight piece, yeah, eight pieces. <laughs> the 12 piece. <laughs> and our largest bucket, the 16 piece. Ready, Yuli. <laughs> you get the idea. Next up, you're gonna need a drink to wash all that chicken down. Here in India, we don't serve cups, we just serve cans. We have Pepsi, 7-Up, Mirinda, which is an orange soda, Red Bull, and a Pepsi pet bottle. However, these will vary from store to store. In some places, they might not serve plastic, and in some places, you might not get these drinks, you might get something else. They also serve something called a Virgin Mojito Crusher, which they don't deliver, unfortunately, but uh, here's an image of it. Refreshing. American drinks come in these following sizes. The regular, which is 20 ounces, and the large, which is 30 ounces. And hey, we don't have there. If you want, you can also get half a gallon bag of your favorite drink of choice. Look at this thing. Mm. It's, it's convenient. 
Uh. Here is everything you will find on the menu at KFC India that you won't get in the US. Here's everything you can find at a KFC in the US you won't find in India. Take a look India, take a good look. Okay, let's start with chicken. In India, apart from the crispy chicken, we also get smoky red chicken. Oof. Wow. I believe this is KFC's answer to tandoori chicken. If you guys don't know what a tandoor is, it's basically a cylindrical oven that they light up using wood fire or charcoal and it adds a really smoky flavor to the meats or breads that you cook inside of it. I doubt KFC's across the country have an actual tandoor, but the flavoring definitely smells like that. The marinade looks like that. Oh my god. That's actually pretty good. You know what KFC? Pretty good job. You have to remember KFC is competing with a lot of Mughlai restaurants across every Indian city. And while this doesn't have as much of that smoky char that a lot of tandoori kebabs have, it has a lot of flavor and the chicken is quite juicy. Good job. It's super spicy though, so if you're somebody who can't handle spice, go a little easy on this one. When an Indian says something spicy, it's spicy. I believe you, man. I believe you. That looks incredible. We unfortunately don't really have anything too spicy on the menu for the like chicken and the bone options. Really the only thing that we have here that apparently you guys don't have is something that is like what I associate Kentucky Fried Chicken with is extra crispy. I don't know exactly what makes it extra crispy, but it is, as you can imagine, crispier than the regular chicken. Extra crispy to me is far superior to the regular way they cook chicken. I think it should be the other way around. Like this should be the regular and the other one should be like half crispy. You know what I mean? This is, all, this is way better. All right, let's move on to chicken sandwiches. Here in India, we don't have an American chicken sandwich, but we have a zinger and a smaller sandwich called a crisper. Cute. The crisper looks like it wants to grow up and be a zinger someday. They also come in two variants, a spicy crisper and a tandoori zinger. Let's taste all of them. Oh, it's pretty yum. They've used a different kind of mayonnaise here. It has a bit of sweetness to it and a spicy kick at the end. And now for the legendary Zinger. Um, back in the day, there were only two fast food chains here in India. It was McDonald's and KFC. And while McDonald's had more affordable burger options, the KFC Zinger was so delicious, it was always a treat to eat. Mmm. And it still is. I love that they use a whole boneless piece of proper chicken in there. Delicious mayo. It's so delicious. Okay, now let's try the spicy variants. This is the spicy crisper. Look at this sauce. It's almost blood red. I'm excited. Oh my god. The sauce almost has a Shezwan taste to it. Next up, the zinger, but tandoori. Mmm, I love the fullness of the chicken that comes in these burgers versus, you know, like a minced chicken patty in other restaurants. There's so much bite to it. It's so juicy, tender. That all sounds amazing. Stop, you're going too fast. I have to say those sandwiches look delicious and I am jealous. One sandwich you can get here in the US, can't get in India, is this little guy. The Chicken Little looks to be like a chicken tender in between these tiny little buns. Pickles. Goodbye. Get ready to get like five of those. Slightly different from what you have in in India, so I'm gonna use it as an excuse to show it off yet again. Our crispy chicken sandwich. This thing, the original, the bad boy. Also with pickles. Hang on. Get off of my sandwich. But it has this really creamy mayo sauce on it. The bun. I love this. Yeah. Other chicken stuff we got here, you ain't got. I'm already getting loopy. Start over here, Nashville hot tender chicken. Here, this I think is the spiciest thing you're getting at the KFC menu. And I'm gonna be straight up, but like I've had these before, these are pretty good. And they're really crispy, Yuli. Wanna hear that crisp again? Not sure if it's made it over to India yet. It is called a chicken pot pie. Not a pie, but instead of there being, you know, fruit or any of the sweet stuff you like, they fill a pie with 
chicken and what do you think else is in here? Corn, gravy, peas maybe, I have no idea. I'm not gonna rip this thing open. This thing has got some weight to it. This is a meal right here. This is not a side. I don't know where it is in the menu, but ooh. This right here, the KFC Famous Bowl. And it is famous, let me tell you. Uh, Nikhil, if you're wondering what this is, someone at KFC was like, how can we put everything into one bowl? And this thing was born. It is mashed potatoes, corn, uh, the uh, popcorn chicken, cheese, and gravy. All in a convenient bowl for you to eat while you're driving. It generally does nothing for the flavor. It's exactly what I would think this would taste like. It's just a bunch of this stuff in one bowl. Yes, in India, you can get wings at the KFC. But at our KFC in the US, you can get your wings sauced. And we have three different sauces. Honey barbecue, buffalo, Nashville hot. Honey barbecue, thumbs down. This buffalo is a lot more orange than I recall buffalo being. I cannot quite place my finger on why suddenly my stomach is killing me. <laughs> Do you see inside there? Okay. <laughs> On to the next wing. Bring on that food poisoning, baby. Um, yeah, all these are bad. All right, moving away from chicken, India's KFC actually has vegetarian alternatives for all our burgers. There is a vegetarian crisper, a vegetarian spicy crisper, and a vegetarian zinger. Now, while India has a majority population of non-vegetarians, around 70%, there is a huge vegetarian population, which is why a lot of fast food restaurants have to make sure they have a lot of vegetarian options on their menu to make it more approachable and acceptable for all people over here. There's also levels to vegetarianism over here. There are, I will eat egg, but not chicken vegetarians. There are, I will eat fish, but not lamb vegetarians. There are, I will eat the curry but not the pieces vegetarians. There are, I am vegetarian only on Tuesdays vegetarians. There are, I have made a promise to God for this one month vegetarians. There are, I am vegetarian so you will all be vegetarian vegetarians. They're the weird ones and we try not to talk about them. Which is why KFC in India brands itself as just KFC. There's no Kentucky Fried Chicken anywhere here because obviously I'm not going to go to a place that's named that if I'm one of these many types of vegetarians. One iconic dish that you'll find on the KFC India menu is biryani. And so KFC India has taken a very bold decision to launch their own biryanis. If you don't know what biryani is, you are living under a gigantic boulder, my friend. Hey, guess I live under a boulder because I unfortunately am not familiar with biryani, but I would love to know more about it. Hello, I am Christelle Pereira and I am a cook and a baker and you may know me as a finalist from the Great British Bake Off. This is biryani. Now biryani is a typical rice dish you find in South Asia and the way you make it is in layers. My dad is a biryani master at home and the way he makes it is with cooked rice, cooked potatoes, some fried onions and a curry. We like to go for a mutton biryani but you can get chicken or fish and in this case vegetarian biryani. We absolutely love it and we always eat it as a family unit with a lovely pot of calling rice on the side which is a lovely calling yogurt dish which goes really well with the spicy biryani and it's basically our equivalent of a Sunday roast because you have it in a big pot and you all take scoops and I actually don't think I've ever eaten biryani by myself for one person. Now we have to talk about this KFC biryani because for me biryani it's a home dish. You make it in a home kitchen, it's cooked by a family member and it's cooked with love. My first impression a KFC biryani, those two words just, just don't go together for me. Just to give you guys context of what it's like to be Indian and eat a biryani at KFC, it's like being Italian and eating a pasta at Domino's. Got it, thank you. Continue. They come in four flavors. Number one, classic chicken, nice and crispy. Number two, popcorn chicken. Number three, the spicy red chicken that I really enjoy. And number four, the veg patty, which it's so tempting to just push that to the side because veg biryani is already just a concept that we're not a fan of over here. But just for, just for now, you can, you can stay here. Okay, I'm gonna begin with the popcorn chicken biryani which is just so blasphemous to begin with. Mmm. Mmm. It's not a biryani. It's... 
I'm so upset right now. <laughs> this one, the spicy red chicken, has a bit of that tandoori vibe to it. They've really tried to overcompensate with the spices. There's a lot of clove flavor, just to convince you you're eating a biryani, so go easy on that curry. I could eat this. Like if I was hungry, not a biryani though. That biryani looks real depressing. I am sorry. But we do have these exclusive side dishes, which are mashed potatoes. I can't believe you guys don't have mashed potatoes. It feels like this is like flagship stuff here. Macaroni and cheese, biscuits, again, no biscuits. Coleslaw, this giant dish of just gravy, and of course, sweet corn. New country, new sauces, y'all know what that means. Sauce talk. First one, I mean, the KFC sauce. Why this isn't at every KFC internationally, I have no idea. Get a load of that sauce right there. And it's like ketchup and mayo, but it's really good. Uh, honey barbecue. I know what that tastes like. Honey mustard. That's not your thing? Honey. And of course you got classic ranch. Not much of a ranch aficionado, but theirs is just okay. And oh, I forgot about the hot sauce, Yuli. Phillies face the Mariners at 6.40 p.m. India does not have too many exclusive dips. In fact, we just have a veg eggless mayonnaise and a tandoori masala mayonnaise. It's time to taste. I'm using the same hand because here in India, we don't eat with our left hand. If you're wondering why, commenters, you let them know. <laughs> why don't Indians eat with their left hand? Well, it's just mayonnaise, so good job on that. Mayonnaise again, with a little bit of a sweet, but also spicy kick to it. I wish we had more options, especially considering there are so many different delicious chicken options. I'd love to be able to dip my tenders in more sauces. That is a weird sentence. For those of you with a sweet tooth, we have two exclusive dessert options. Chocolate chip cookie, this chocolate chip cake. How good does this look? Here in India, we have two exclusive desserts, a choco mud pie and a coffee mousse cake. Ooh boy. Just look at this cross section, my friend. Next up, coffee mousse cake. Yeah, um, these are pretty average as desserts. Drinks, drinks. Drinks! Maybe my favorite part of the exclusive section. Exclusive drinks you get in the US you cannot get in India. Mountain Dew. I'm back, baby. Mm. And if you're a Mountain Dew fan, such as me, you know KFC has got the exclusive Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning. So the Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning is like peach Mountain Dew. And it's really good, it's really good. Mm. I think this is a lemonade, the US style lemonade, not like that weird UK Sprite lemonade. Mm. Not so good. From there, you can also get Serum Mist. Ugh. Ugh. And of course, sweet tea. Whoa, that's like really sweet. Oh, that's really good. Exclusive drinks in KFC India. We have Mirinda which is an orange soda and Red Bull. Let's talk about Mirinda. Uh, this is a drink that really evokes nostalgia. 90s kids really know what I'm talking about when I say Mirinda. Which country is getting the better deal on its KFC? Let's compare a few menu items to find out. Both countries offer eight piece chicken bucket. Here in LA, one of these goes for $19.99. If you order an eight piece chicken bucket here at KFC India, it will cost you 699.05 rupees, very specific, which is currently 9.15 US dollars. That makes the American eight piece bucket 118% more expensive than the one in India. Does making your meal a combo help the US price out at all? Take this chicken sandwich combo with fries and a drink. It will set you back in America, $9.99. 
the Indian equivalent is a zinger meal where you can get a chicken sandwich, some medium fries and a drink for 319.05 rupees or 4.18 US dollars. In fact, the price difference is so great, you can get something called the ultimate savings bucket for just 599 rupees or 7.88 dollars. And this contains four pieces of hot and crispy chicken, six hot wings, four boneless strips, three drinks and three dips. Yeesh! In fact, you can throw in a choco mud pie as a dessert and still get all of this for much cheaper than the American combo meal. But is it really that cheap here in India? No, because two-thirds of India is still under the poverty line. And for them, this meal is still very aspirational. They earn less than $2 a day. Sorry to be a downer, but this is still a meal that is only available to the really privileged here in India. Unfortunately, KFC does not share a full list of ingredients with the public. It's actually the same in the US. All KFC shares with the public is a list of allergens. So what do we know about KFC? Well, the KFC India website has a couple of clues. We know that all of our chicken is farmed here and not imported, and all of it is 100% whole muscle chicken. Mmm! That means it's made from whole pieces of chicken and not cut together minced chicken like you find in chicken nuggets. In fact, the website says they have an open kitchen policy and what that means is anybody can walk into a KFC and apparently ask for a kitchen tour and you can go into the kitchen, look at everything and ask as many questions as you want. I've never heard that in my entire life, an open kitchen policy. I've worked in several kitchens and I'll tell you straight up, if I was in a kitchen working and some dude walks in and is like, hey, got a tour of the kitchen? I'd be like, yeah, here's your tour. There's the exit. Definitely can't do that in the United States. Don't go into a KFC chicken and demand a tour. The KFC US website also gives us some hints about the ingredients it uses over here. For instance, all of our chicken is raised on US farms to the USDA and FDA's standards. So that means there are no added hormones or steroids in American KFC chicken. In addition to this, as of 2019, Yum! Brands, the parent company of KFC, stopped purchasing chicken raised using antibiotics. Indian chicken farmers were previously criticized for overusing antibiotics. As recently as 2018, the Bureau of Investigative Journalism found out that a lot of Indian farmers were feeding cholestein to their chickens as a growth promoter without any medical supervision. Cholestein is known as the antibiotic of the last resort. Holy f Oh my god, bro. That's so frightening. And it's only given to humans when other antibiotics have failed. So, if we give our chickens cholestin, then the humans who consume it might become resistant to it. In fact, they can develop an antibiotic resistant superbug, and that's not good. Yuli, this sounds like the plot to a horror movie. What is he talking about? That is terrifying. I'm gonna assume we don't do that here, and if we do, oh god. But when a report came out talking about the ill effects of cholestin, India ended up banning it completely, so we're safe from cholestin at last. We should also point out that the KFC India website is in major need of an update. There is an FAQ page where people have asked things like, how many calories does this chicken have? Or, sometimes I see red deposits in my chicken. What is it? And for almost all of these questions, the answers are just filler text. So if you ask me what those red deposits are, I genuinely don't know. That's interesting. Let's take a look at this website right now. Mm -hmm. Is KFC providing healthcare to the employees? KFC responds, Standard dummy text ever since the 1500s, when an unknown printer took a gallery of type and scrambled it to make type specimen book. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Starbucks in India and the US. This is Food Wars. At a Starbucks in India, we get our hot coffees in four sizes. Number one, a short, a tall, a grande, and the big boy, a venti. I can't think of a single reason you would order a coffee of this size. Who is putting this much caffeine in their body? Me, Nikhil. Me. Let's measure this to see if it has as much as it should. Whoa, wait a second. Starbucks. I'm disappointed. It's close. It's 18 ounces-ish. All right, if I'm paying this kind of money, I want a bang for my buck. 20 ounces to the T. I think that's 20. I was about to dunk on Starbucks, but they actually gave us the 20 they promised. Cheers. Ah. 
look into the eyes of an insane caffeine addict. My vision has just gone blurry. India's iced coffee comes in three sizes. Tall. Mm. Grande. Grande. Venti. Venti. And an even bigger one, we got the Trenta. I want to mention now that our Venti iced size is bigger than our Venti hot size. The Venti hot was 20 ounces. This is 24 ounces. And of course, let's whoa, measure whoa, 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 whoa. it. Can't believe you've done this. It's not even 16 ounces, Starbucks, and this has ice in it, which should melt and give you more liquid. Is that, is that how fluid dynamics works? Maybe not, but my disappointment is, is palpable. Yeah, I'm gonna go 22 ounces. I don't know, it's two ounces, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally not a big deal. That's like two sips. I can't speak for anyone else, but already my bladder is about to burst, so maybe I don't need 24 more ounces in my bloodstream. If that wasn't exciting enough, we of course have our biggest ice size, which is the Trenta 30 fluid ounces. The bladder buster. This is for anyone who wants to spend most of their day in the bathroom. So you think, what, 28? Again, two ounces off. You know, Starbucks, four ounces more won't kill you. Oh, it's actually pretty good. Starbucks actually good? What the hell? Anyone who watches Food Wars knows we use this measuring cup for everything. And I know I don't clean it. <laughs> and I don't think Joe's cleaning it. And I don't think Yuli's cleaning it. So this thing, never been cleaned. Yeah, mm. And of course, if you're in the mood for 96 fluid ounces of Starbucks coffee, ba-bam! Get yourself the coffee traveler, AKA what Joe drinks in an afternoon. Here in India, we don't have a huge coffee traveler. We just have this little guy. It's an India edition, tiny pet coffee traveler. It's got a lot of cool India iconography on it. Um, there's a batsman, there is a, an elephant, all sorts of cool Indian stuff. And you can put in 355 ml of coffee in here, which is around 11.83 ounces of coffee, roughly a tall. So, the perfect size. We also have one liter bottles for ice latte and cold brew. Word on the street is they contain one liter each or 33.8 fluid ounces. It is so weird using the US system of measurement. I'm so used to our normal, correct metric system. But uh, let's not start an actual war over here. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, um, I don't care. Let's take a look at calories. A hot venti latte in India is 289 calories. For comparison, a normal serving of dal chawal is 200 calories. In the US, the same venti cafe latte is 250 calories. So it looks like the US has 13.5% less calories. To that temperature where it's like room temperature. My brain, my brain is Swiss cheese. Everything I say is idiotic. A hot venti mocha, which is also what my friends call me, is 473 calories. And in the US, our venti mocha is 450 calories. So, according to my math, once again, that's a calorie decrease of 4.9%. What do you think of that, hot venti boy? Okay, Joe, it's not a competition. Let's just try something a little sweeter, like this venti caramel frappuccino, which looks uh, decadent, to say the least. Oh my God, that is so sweet. 602 calories, and I can feel every single one of them in each sip. Okay, genuinely, I have had spoonfuls of sugar that are more savory than this drink. How can you make something sweeter than sugar? How? That's a lot of calories, my man. Ours is 470 calories, which is also 24 ounces. Now I should note, in the US, the calories listed on Starbucks.com are, quote, based on standard recipes and do not reflect customizations. Get this out of my face, I hate this. Why is this so? And they put like, they load the syrup in here? How can a human being drink one of these? I don't understand. And now, our most calorific overall drink that we have here in India, a venti strawberry and cream frappuccino 963 calories. Oh my God, I didn't even think it was possible to experience a sugar rush and a coffee caffeine high at the same time. 
At 963 calories, this is nearly 50% of your daily caloric intake. So please drink this at your own risk. And I am a risk taker. <laughs> Oof, I feel transported to another dimension where everything is more colorful and I can taste sound. I don't know, I feel like we should have an ambulance ready if I'm going to finish this drink. That's a lot of calories, I have to say. I'm very impressed. Our most highest calorific drink is the Mocha Cookie Crumble Frappuccino at the venti size, and it's only 590 calories. Oh, God. This looks so bad. Oh, man. It's, it's like so powerful. Like, it's so sweet that everything from here on for the rest of my life is just gonna taste like paper. So what about the cost? This venti frappuccino will cost you 390 rupees, which at the time of filming this video is 5.14 US dollars. In the US, a venti caramel frappuccino is $5.45 or about 413 Indian rupees. Now, I wanna point out that this is 24 ounces and not the India 20 ounce venti. So if we break it down per fluid ounce, it's about 11.5 cost per fluid ounce decrease in the US. Let me give you some context about Starbucks in India. They are catering to the rich and the elite because it is very expensive over here. In South India, where I'm from, you can get a filter coffee for less than 40 rupees, which is a fraction of a dollar and it's delicious. Starbucks would cost you upwards of $5 and that's unaffordable for most of India. Here is everything that you can find in a menu at an Indian Starbucks that you won't get in the US. Quick clarification, some of the items we have here are location specific and specific to the season that we're ordering them. It's currently summer here in Mumbai and some of these items are store specific. So maybe you won't get them when you go order, but let me know. And here's everything you can only find on the menu at a US Starbucks you can't get in India. Now, a bit of clarification. We know Starbucks will customize drink orders and there are thousands of variations in special secret menu items. Eh, thank you, Starbucks. So, just to make things not completely insane, these are the official things on the Starbucks menu at both India and the US. Cool? Uh, let's go. All right, let's begin with all the hot exclusive drinks, starting with salted caramel latte. Not bad. Stardust Mocha. Boom, we have clarified. No sparkles, nothing about this cream Stardust. I don't know what you're talking about Starbucks, but it tastes good. Chai tea, or as we call it here in India, chai. Can I just say, it's a bit of a pet peeve when you guys call chai, chai tea. It's like calling tea, tea tea. Let me describe a good chai to you. All right, it should be warm. It should be gingery. It should feel like a hug from your mum in your childhood. And it should perk your morning up. And it should be under 10 rupees, but this is expensive. Hello, it's Christelle and I'm here to talk about chai, which is actually my favourite drink. Every person has their own recipe for chai, but it's a combination of spices and black tea and some milk and usually sweetened with a bit of sugar. But for me at home, my recipe, cardamom is the most important spice, cinnamon, ginger, a pinch of cloves and my secret spice is a bit of black pepper, just to give that lovely warming spicy feeling, but, but it's not savoury, it's just a lovely blend of spices. The flavor is not bad, but I wouldn't call this, I wouldn't call this a chai. You know what, this is a chai tea. Because it's not quite a chai, it's not quite a tea. Fair enough Starbucks, it's a chai tea. Next up, and the drink I'm most excited to have, Thandai Spice. Now Thandai is consumed primarily in North India in the state of Uttar Pradesh, where it's this drink that's sweet, it contains spices, it contains rose petals, saffron, and sometimes, optionally, you can add bhang, which is marijuana, and it's completely free, legal, and optional to add it, and people enjoy it during the festivals like Holi and Mahashivratri. Well, I'm sorry, did he say that, that that drink has marijuana in it, or you can put weed in it? I mean, this is California, so if there's a drink you can put weed in, you think I, we would have it, right? Not bad. It's got little pieces of pista and badam and other nuts. How did you get Thandai right and mess up something as simple as a chai? USA, we got a lot of hot exclusives. I'm gonna start all the way down here with something called the Cafe Misto. Bland. Moving on, almond honey flat white. 
This flat white I like because it has like a nice honey flavor to it. The straight up flat whites, I just, I don't get it. Cinnamon Dolce Latte. I like it. It's not too sweet. A white hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, come on. This is like really good, but I don't know if I could drink a whole one of those. This is the caramel apple spice. No thanks. Steamed apple juice. What? Apple juice? The hot apple juice. When are you gonna, oof, I'm gonna go for some apple juice right about now. I haven't seen you in forever. Let's meet up for apple juice. Cinnamon Dolce cream. Ugh. Steamed milk. And yeah, barf, vanilla cream. When you walk past that ice cream place in the mall, it tastes the way it smells, like strong vanilla. I couldn't imagine having more than two sips of that. Already my stomach's starting to hurt. Oh, I'm gonna be so sick. And now it's time for the cold exclusives. I'm not having a caffeine crash at all. The citrus cold brew. Citrusy. Out of everything, this one has kind of a nice mild flavor. The cocoa chai almond. Oh, I just had such a mild one. I took a big sip and this one is sweet again. Vietnamese caramel cold brew. It should typically have condensed milk, but this has normal milk and it's quite good. Nitro cold brew. It's basically cold brew, but if you press a button, you drink it faster. <laughs> Dumb joke. It tastes like any other cold brew. I'd be interested to know what the nitrogen processes. What is, what is nitro cold brew? Well, they add nitrogen to it. And you know what that does? I have no idea. Next up, chocolate truffle cold brew. You know, that sounds like something your child self and your adult self would want to combine if they had to collaborate on a drink. Let's see if it's actually good. Absolutely not. Oh my God, Stardust Mocha again. Mmm, I still don't know what the hell Stardust is. There are chunks of something, something otherworldly. It's, it's like cookies and cream. It's an Oreo, it's an Oreo. Thunda Spice, uh, same flavor, but now cold. Mmm, -hmm. too much sugar for one young man to consume. I'm losing it. I'm seeing the light. Oh no, I'm literally seeing the light. There's a light above me. You know, the funny thing is, Thunda is meant to be consumed cold, so this is the appropriate temperature and way to drink it. But it's layered with so much whipped cream and it's so sweet. Thunda requires a balance of spices and sweetness and that's what this is lacking. And the final two drinks are salted caramel and strawberry with cream, but I already tasted those. Maybe, maybe it got better with time. You never know. You gotta give everything a chance. I'm never giving anything a chance ever again. And now for the pre-bottled drinks, uh, they've got three of them in one liter bottles. This is the ice shaken hibiscus lemonade. Looks quite refreshing. Hmm, that is very nice. It says it serves four to five cups, which if you're in an Indian family, they're gonna make this last for at least 20 people. And it's very reminiscent of Ruavza, which is a rose flavoring that we add to water and it's super delicious. I think this is a good substitute. White Mocha Caramel Cold Brew. Oh my God. I've gotten to the stage where I can smell sugar. I can see sugar. I can hear sugar. I think I am sugar at this point. Starbucks Signature Chocolate. Normally I would be very excited about this, but I am so soaked to the brim with sweet stuff. It's actually good. It's like the amount of chocolate you want to put in your cocoa, but you know, it's probably not good for you. I'm losing my goddamn mind. <laughs> All right, starting down here, something you can only get in the US is the mocha cookie crumble a frappuccino. It's looking a little sad. So, Food Wars tip, bring your own whip. That's another one, Joe's tips. Mm. I'm not getting the cookie part of it. It just tastes like a chocolate milkshake. I don't know if that's really doing much for the flavor. The caramel ribbon crunch frappuccino. I don't know how anyone could drink a whole one of these. The recommended serving for this, Joe, should be like two sips. It's like sip number two, and I'm good for a week. Ugh! The high fructose corn syrup is working overtime in that one. The cafe vanilla frappuccino. You know I always keep this thing on me. The least objectionable one, I guess. Actually a little weak, to be honest. Then again, after these two, maybe it's perfectly fine. Nitro, the official cold brew of the Fast and Furious franchise, Joseph. Just pour this on your engine and off you go. Off you and Vin Diesel go. It doesn't require ice. Has a smoother flavor, right? Now, if you want something a little bit sweeter in your cold brew, 
you can get yourself a vanilla sweet cream nitro cold brew. Joe f***s with it. We got a vanilla oat milk, we got a brown sugar oat milk, and we got a chocolate almond milk. Here they are. Not as strong of a flavor as I thought it would be. Brown sugar. I'm definitely tasting it. Yeah, not bad. I have reason to believe this was unshooken. I think I could shake it without. I would recommend this one out of all three, but insist they shake it in front of you. You can get yourself an iced flat white and an iced honey flat white. Mm, 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 mm. Skip them. Iced cinnamon dolce latte and an iced Starbucks blonde latte. Not bad. Can confirm a sip is good. I don't know about a whole one of these. Already I'm kind of like, eh. Starbucks teas, or as my mom calls them, I can make this at home. Starting off with Indian Spice Majestic. Wow, okay. Oh, can I just say, drinking this after everything else is such a breath of fresh air. You know, it's a simple tea, but it's very flavorful, very spicy. Would recommend. Next up, Matcha Espresso Fusion. It's part of the trifecta of three ingredients that have become very popular in India. Matcha, Peri Peri, and Red Velvet. I feel like the espresso counters the sweetness that it has and the matcha flavor is there. Again, just cut down on the sweetness and this would actually be good. Now the exclusive hot teas you get here in the US, the Royal English Breakfast Tea Latte, London Fog Tea Latte, Honey Citrus Mint Tea, a Jade Citrus Mint Brewed Tea, the Mint Majesty, Mint Matcha Green, all bad. The trinity of gross, I don't want. The peach tranquility. And they spell it tranquility, but it should be tranquilla, T-E-A. I feel like they missed a trick there. Okay, so those are the two hot teas. It's now time for the cold tea, starting with an iced green tea. I feel like when you start drinking green tea, it's a sign of adulthood and there's no going back. That's actually pretty good. And now I feel old. <laughs> Hibiscus passion lemonade. So many ingredients, but I know I'm gonna taste only sugar. Hey, that's pretty good. It's kind of flowery, fruity. I really like this. A Maveha Espresso Fusion. Oh, this is an iced matcha? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> my bad, my bad. It's Guys, it's, it's a Starbucks handwriting. Honestly, sometimes I think it's just doctors writing prescriptions on these coffee mugs. By the way, let me know in the comments, what's the weirdest way somebody has spelt your name in Starbucks? Mmm, I prefer this to the weird hot sweet one. Yeah, I like the teas way more than the coffee, so I don't know what that says about Starbucks, but I'm a fan. I feel the exact opposite. I do not like tea at all, and this is all the stuff on a Starbucks menu I have never gotten and would like to never get. But, gotta do it, it's the job. So we will start at down here at the Starbucks in the US. You can get yourself iced black tea and an iced black tea lemonade. Moving on, you can get peach teas. We got an iced peach green tea and an iced peach tea lemonade. So this tastes good because it's like peach and lemonade. I don't taste any tea. Green, iced, green tea, lemonade. Oh, grande, not GR's. The first GR's grande. Grande, iced, green tea, latte, latte lemonade. Oh, I'm losing it. See, I, don't, I, I stopped drinking caffeine for a second and I fall apart. Oh, matcha, no! No, not matcha! Grande matcha lemonade. All right, lemonade. Lemonade is doing all the heavy lifting on all of these. I absolutely hate this. Royal English breakfast. Mmm. You know what will help? A little caffeine. Mmm. Woo! All right. Also, Starbucks gets something called refreshers. From what I can tell, they are fruit juices with fruit in it. Imagine that. I would never normally get a refresher, I just wouldn't think to, but now I get to try all of them. Pink drink. Ooh, yeah, fruity. Moving on, we have the uh, strawberry acai lemonade. I like this. Similar problem to a lot of the Frappuccinos. One taste and I'm like, I could get into it. But a whole one of these, I mean, I feel my gut kind of starting to ugh. Just the mango dragon fruit, right? Dragon drink. Mango dragon fruit lemonade. I think this is the best one so far. One second. All right. Don't put that in. Moving on, we have uh, the green drink zone. Star drink, assuming star fruit, kiwi star fruit. Does lemonade kick it up even another notch? Hmm, this one I like the flavor the best, but it's a little strong. 
Yeah, all these are pretty good. The last refresher is the strawberry acai. They have a regular lemonade and a blended strawberry lemonade. I mean, come on, lemonade. Everything else that's had lemonade in it, I've enjoyed. So let's just go straight to the source. Whoa, dude, Starbucks lemonade is like really good. What, is this even the top 10 things you would get at Starbucks? A lemonade, what? Now, like your lemonade and a little bit of strawberry. This is fantastic. Wow, even after all these, this is a, a standout. This is really good. Why is this so good? Fantastic. Food! We have a lot of Indian exclusives. I'm gonna start with the salads. This is a vegetarian grain salad. It's got quinoa, it's got some paneer in it, it's got corn kernels that look unborn. I'm sure this is super healthy, but it's also very dry. Now the meat version of it, it's got uh, chicken. I'm not really a fan of cold salads. If you are a health freak, you might enjoy this, but if you're a fan of food, you probably won't. Okay, next up, I'm gonna try all of their rolls. Rolls are a huge staple here in India. They're one of the most famous street foods and it's great for the working class citizen. This is the Murg Kati roll. Murg means uh, chicken in Hindi. Oh, that's pretty good. Finally, some spice. Oh my God, it's a life save. I feel like I'm being brought back to life after all those drinks. This is really good. You'll find this only in India, but honestly, Starbucks, you should consider selling this all over because it is tasty. Next up is a kakari kebab roll. Kakari kebab is basically minced uh, meat, typically lamb, and it's served with a, a paratha or a roti. I've never seen it in a roll, and I've never seen it in a pink roll. Mm, you can see. The main thing about a kakari kebab is it should melt in your mouth. This has too much of a bite to it. Not a fan. Next up, chatpata paneer roll. Chatpata means full of masala and flavor and it's zingy. And paneer is cottage cheese. We love our cottage cheese here in India and we call it paneer and you should too. Next up, cheese chili toast. So obviously if you order this at Starbucks, I assume they actually toast this and the cheese melts and it's super delicious. I can tell you right now, this flavor profile will go really well with Indians. We love our cheese chili toast, monsoon season. Mom goes to the kitchen, toasts the bread, a lot of butter, some cheese, some chili, bite into it. Your mouth's on fire, but it's rainy and cold, so you're all okay. This is not quite there, but I feel like it could be. Next up, tandoori paneer sandwich. I'm gonna have to say that this bread is a little hard, to say the least. Might be a bit of an old sandwich. Flavor is good though. If I had any of this food fresh at a Starbucks, I might have a very different opinion. So far, the paneer items have been way better than the, the meat items. I'm starting to guess there's somebody in the Starbucks R&D team who really likes paneer. Sandwiches and protein boxes. Here we go. You can get a bunch of exclusive sandwiches, US, Starbucks, starting right here with the crispy grilled cheese on sourdough. Again, ham and cheese on a baguette. Then we get the turkey pesto with provolone and ciabatta. Chicken and bacon on brioche. Why is it? Can we get that chicken on the whole thing here, guys? A focaccia, tomato, mozzarella. At a Starbucks, you can get a chicken caprese on ciabatta sandwich. On to the protein boxes. The chickpea bites and avocado. Can you tell what's in there? Obviously avocado, chickpea bites, egg and cheddar. Cheese and fruit, peanut butter and jam. Grilled chicken and hummus. There's your hummus, there's your pita, there's your grilled chicken. You can also get, which was not available at the store today, egg and gouda protein box, a cheese trio protein box, and a cheddar and salami protein box. Next up, egg white and chicken multigrain croissant. Should I just call it a croissant to upset people, the denizens of the internet? If you are somebody trying to be protein conscious, put on the pounds, this might be good for you. Next up, a masala chicken croissant. I guess you can't go wrong with masala chicken. You can't go wrong with a croissant. croissant. It's just really good. Next up, a basil tomato mozzarella sandwich. I can imagine just eating this on a summer day. Really yum. Next up, creamy spinach and corn pocket. Pocket, that's pretty cute. As a kid, this is the only way I enjoyed eating spinach, unless it was in palak paneer. But right now, I appreciate it and I really like it in this 
pocket. Next up, chicken chic pocket. Chic kebab is basically minced meat and it's sort of pressed onto a skewer and then grilled. Over here they've done that and then they've chopped them into little sausage pieces. Mmm, minty, it has that pudina flavor. A lot of onions that have just been caramelized, so it's like sweet, but also spicy. I really like this. Starting with the breakfast, sandwiches, and wraps, the bacon gouda, egg, it's gouda somewhere on here. A sausage, egg, and cheddar. The double smoked bacon, cheddar, and egg, dude. It's good. Ham and Swiss croissant, and bacon, sausage, and egg wrap. What's up? I didn't. Other sandwiches you can get are spinach, feta, egg wrap, the roasted ham, the turkey, bacon, cheddar, and egg white sandwich, and the impossible breakfast sandwich. But you know what they do have? Bacon and Greer, egg white, and roasted red pepper, kale and mushroom. Get yourself an avocado spread for dipping. Bagels! We got them! Can I assume this is in everything? Because it's got everything. Cinnamon raisin? I can tell because of the raisins. Hey, plain for the New Yorker, right? Oatmeal, oatmeal. We got regular, and they come with a nut medley, brown sugar, dried fruit. I bet it's like a puck now. It's been sitting for a while. All right. <laughs> you can also get a blueberry one. It's obviously the same stuff with blueberries. Strawberry and overnight grains. Next up, a double chocolate chip cookie. I think if I put this in the microwave for five seconds, this is a banging, banging cookie. A tea cake. This is uh, lemon flavored. And finally, they have a banana loaf cake. But guys, I am dangerously allergic to banana. And so I wish this cake the best of luck. Maybe you guys can try it and let me know in the comments whether it's worth ordering. On to the baked goods. In the US, you can get an assortment of baked goods as you can see in front of me. I'll just start uh, down here. We got scones. Oh, this is a blueberry scone. Petite vanilla bean scone. These can't be the same price. Cake pops. Yeah, chocolate. Which one do you think is Earth and which one do you think is birthday? I feel like this has got to be birthday. Glazed donut. Hey. Red velvet cake. Pumpkin loaf. You can also get a cinnamon coffee cake. Yeah, brownie. Chocolate chip cookie. Available, yet yeah, not today. Pumpkin cream cheese muffin. It is now time for ice creams. Did you know Starbucks makes ice creams? I had no idea. Java chip ice cream. This looks really good. Check it out, son. Yum! Coffee, chocolate chips and mocha. That is something else. I really like this. Next up, vanilla ice cream and chocolate sauce. Now everybody in India, their childhood has involved Amul vanilla ice cream and Hershey's chocolate syrup. Let's see if this sort of evokes that nostalgia. Oh, the vanilla ice cream is so good. Next up, vanilla ice cream with strawberry sauce. You either got the Hershey's chocolate sauce or the Hershey's strawberry sauce. Younger Kinney would not have appreciated this, but older Kinney, really enjoying it. It's fruity, tangy, sour, and it really complements the yummy vanilla creamy ice cream. Next up, we have the same Java chip, but now with more choco chips and chocolate sauce. So this is a bit of an overload. Too much. Are you, can you zoom in on my hand? <laughs> it's shaking right now. Caramel macchiato. Mm. It's really nice, it's not too sweet, it's kind of salty. Next, the affogato, which is uh, ice cream in coffee. I love how we're taking hot, bitter coffee and sweet, creamy ice cream, mixing them together and somehow they're not choosing violence. They're choosing to be friends, harmonious in my mouth. Affogato again, but this is house affogato, so I'm gonna assume Starbucks that this should be better. You're putting your name on it tastes the same. And finally, we have the caramel macchiato ice cream. It's similar to the small cup of caramel macchiato I had, except this does not have a drizzle of caramel sauce. If you were ordering ice cream from Starbucks, I would recommend the simple Java chip and the simple caramel macchiato. No drizzle of sauces. It's not as sweet. It's kind of nice. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between McDonald's in India and the US. This is Food Wars. Drinks in McDonald's India come in three sizes, regular, medium, and large. Drinks at the McDonald's in the US, four sizes. Extra small, small, medium, and large. Time to keep them honest. 
Lost a couple drops. 26, 27 fluid ounces. Oof. Hmm. Fries in India come in three sizes, regular, medium, and large. In America, our fries come in four sizes, I think. We have a small, kids, or kids, small, I can't tell the difference either, medium, and large. The medium and large come in these really cool new packaging where you can just open it up like that, and it's nice and easy to share, it's a little plate. Good job, McDonald's, very innovative. But now it's time to measure and see how much we're really getting. First things first, the large. 175 grams. Obviously it's different per scoops or whatever. Yeah, let's go here. This one, almost exactly 100 grams. This one, 80 grams. Fry math, hang on. This is like, Yep, there you go, 20 grams. That's 20 gram difference right there. So you tell me, internet, is the kids in the small different sizes? I don't think they are. Food Wars is on it. We're on it, baby. What about McNuggets? Here in India, you can order them in three sizes, six pieces, nine pieces, and 20 pieces. They gave it to us in two boxes of 10 each. Oh, is that it, India? Cute. Our McNuggets start at four, then you got six, 10, 20, and not to be outdone, booyah, 40 McNuggets. All the math heads watching will be quick to point out that that is double India's largest nugget option. The only burger that India shares with the US is the McChicken, the humble McChicken. Not even gonna bother with the analog scale now. Boop. 149 grams. Ah, this is so frustrating. Just one more gram and it'll be perfect. Uh, with the paper, I mean, we'll do this and shave off a, an eighth of an ounce. Our McChicken weighs 140 grams. Here is everything you'll find on the menu at McDonald's India that you will not find in the USA. And here's all the McDonald's menu items from the US you won't find in India. Here in India, we can't really recreate the iconic McDonald's Big Mac because it's made from a beef patty. And to keep to the religious sentiments of Hindus and even Muslims, we don't serve beef or pork in a lot of fast food restaurants. We have something called the Chicken Maharaja Mac. As you can see, it's got three buns, two patties, a lot of cheese and mayonnaise, some tomatoes, onions, lettuce. Let us try it now. <laughs> Oh my God, that is truly a Maharaja Mac. If you're wondering, a Raja is a king and a Maharaja is like an emperor. So this is clearly our answer to the Big Mac. Now let's taste the Veg Maharaja Mac. I think it's actually a very cool challenge that a lot of fast food restaurants here have had to adapt to the Indian palate as well as sensibilities of food. We have come up with such cool, iconic fast food that you won't get anywhere else in the world. Like, look at this. This is outrageous. There's no way to eat this without being messy. There's literally no way. Mmm. Oh my God, that's really good. Yes to all that, looks really good. Because of India's lack of beef, all the American beef options are technical exclusives. Mm. Mm. All right, the Big Mac. There it is. Just brimming with stuff. My go-to for like 20 years. I still get it occasionally. The classic McDonald's hamburger. Beef patty, ketchup and mustard. Of course, you can get it with cheese, hi. You can upgrade to a double cheeseburger or a McDouble. What's the difference, you ask? I'm not sure either. So let's start with the double cheeseburger. Look at that, look how yellow that is. Beef, cheese, beef, cheese, tapas. The McDouble is beef, cheese, beef, so it's just one slice of cheese in the middle, but not on top. What's the price difference? Can we get that on screen? And how much is a slice of cheese? Joe's Hack, get yourself a McDouble and bring your own slice of American cheese. Booyah, save yourself this amount of money. The problem with millennials today, the reason you guys can't buy houses is you're spending all your money at Starbucks, you're getting your double cheeseburgers instead of a McDouble and bringing your own cheese slice. I mean, you guys are terrible with money. What, you're eating what? Seven, eight McDoubles a day like me, right? And that adds up to like, at the end of the year, $18? 10,000 years later, that's a down payment on a house. <laughs> what are you guys doing? All right, next up is 
the iconic Mekalu Tikki burger. You take mashed potato and you fry it in breadcrumbs and you get this really delicious cutlet. Here in India, they adapted it into this burger with a very special sauce, some tomato and chopped onions. Mm. It's just so classic. They nailed this burger. Next up, there is a Mexican Mekalu Tikki, which I assume has some stereotypical Mexican ingredients and flavors like jalapeno. Yes, jalapeno. Mm. Nice, it's way more spicy. Good twist. Next up, they have a Mek Egg Burger. Mek Egg. Mek Egg, Mek Egg. I don't know why I did that. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, sorry. I did not expect pesto. Next up is a chicken kebab burger. Every time an Indian fast food chain tries to adapt an Indian special food into a burger, I take it with a pinch of salt because this is not what we're used to seeing when we think of kebabs, but I'm gonna try it and let's see what happens. Mmm, it's very, very dry. Patty has almost like a cardboardy taste to it. I wouldn't put those flavors together if I was thinking kebab. Make cardboard tikki maybe? No? Okay, that's a bit harsh. I'm sorry. Next up is the mech veggie, which is the vegetarian counterpart to our mech chicken. If I had to eat this versus the chicken one, I would not be upset at all. Really good. Next up, we have two American burgers, the American Cheese Supreme Wedge and the American Cheese Supreme Chicken. My hunch for what makes them American is that they will have a nice big square of cheese and they will not be spicy at all. Except they have a lot of jalapenos on them. Joe, let me know if this constitutes American. That's American cheese, my man. That's what makes it American. I don't know about those other toppings, but yeah, it sounds about right. All right, so this is what the McDonald's website says is in this burger. Whole wheat bun sourced from Maharashtra, tangy jalapenos from Karnataka, shredded onions grown in local Indian farms, and cheese from Amravati, also in India. Quite, quite close to home, <laughs> this burger. Currently, this would probably be my favorite order, a mech spicy chicken. And there's the vegetarian option, which is a mech spicy paneer, which is just leaking lettuce. For those of you who don't know what paneer is, it's basically cottage cheese. We love our paneer. We put it in curries, we eat it plain, we put it in kebabs. It is so delicious. Let's try this. Mmm has just the right kick and goes really well with the paneer. Fair warning, while this may have a light kick of spice for us, it might be a hard kick for you. So take everything with a pinch of chili powder. Gonna move up to something called the Quarter Pounder. And that's like their big burger. So you can get a quarter pounder with cheese. Here it is. I mean, this looks, it looks fake, right? Like just kidding, it's cake. Or the, the, the new one is, a, it's actually a candle. And then you can get a quarter pounder with cheese, deluxe more veggies on it, all the junk that I brush off. You can upgrade to a double quarter partner with cheese. Let's take a look, oh man, look how thick this is. And then you can get that same double with bacon, yeah. Oh man, skimping on the bacon, guys. What we lack in beef burgers, we make up for in gourmet burgers. That's right, here in McDonald's India, we have our own collection of chef special gourmet burgers, delicious. And uh, I think this is a rolling menu. I think they introduce new things from time to time. The buns themselves look a lot more gourmet. You know, there's a nice riff down the middle. Kind of looks like a butt, uh, but that's okay. We're not going to concentrate on that. First up, we have triple cheese American veg burger and triple cheese American chicken burger. Same thing, cheese, jalapeno, some sauce, lettuce, simple chicken patty, a gourmet bun. Does this scream American to you? Next up. Cheese Lava American Veg Burger and Cheese Lava American Chicken Burger. Again with American and again with the with a strange relation of food to volcanoes and lava. Okay. This burger is very spicy. This qualifies as a, as a volcano product for sure. Congratulations, McDonald's. The lava in the title of this burger works. The Mech Spicy Chicken Premium though has an egg patty inside of it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. That's pretty good. I just feel so existential right now. Imagine sitting here at this table and just tasting every single burger on a McDonald's menu. Amazing. But also.
We also have some exclusive wrap options. We have big spicy paneer and big spicy chicken. I think this is the same mix spicy chicken patty and it's wrapped around a tortilla which is actually way closer to an Indian chapati than most other fast food restaurants. It doesn't feel as synthetic. Our McDonald's in the US had wraps for a brief period of time. One day they were gone, nobody noticed. Yeah, you guys got some chicken stuff that we don't have, but we got a few of our own. More recently than you think, they finally introduced their chicken sandwich to an already crowded chicken sandwich market. And that is, of course, their crispy chicken sandwich. And this thing is fantastic. It's one of the best ones. They were late to the game and they kind of took it over, in my opinion. Now, what I like about it, it's simple. Look at this. You just got crispy chicken, pickles, that suck. It's baller, it tastes great. Like it a little spicy India? It probably doesn't compare to what you guys are rocking in India, but you know, this one has a little nice heat to it. Pickles, sauce. Want to take it up a notch? Got to go deluxe. And the cool crispness of the vegetables just clash so well with the spicy sauce. It's good. It's good. Nikhil, say the word, and I'm putting one in the post for you tomorrow. So when it arrives in three weeks, you can throw it out. Now we're getting into exclusive side dishes. Here in India, we have these add-ons. Number one, the veg pizza McPuff. This is one of the most delicious things we have here. It's basically a pizza hot pocket. Masala veggies. These are potato veggies with classic Indian masala flavor to them. Ooh boy. Masalas are basically what we use to spice and flavor dishes. And they consist primarily of ground up spices like cardamom, cloves, red chilies, Kashmiri chilies. You go to every Indian home, the mums, the grandmums will have their own random, you know, masala mix that they use and that's guarded and treasured in their family forever. Next up, we have cheesy masala veggies. They're also serving a classic cup of boiled corn, which is so unique and they give you a side of amul butter. Uh, guys, amul butter is part of our culture. Makhan, makhan. This is probably gonna be the most delicious bite of the day. I love corn. Next up, chicken strips. They come in packs of two, three, or five. Cheesy nugget veg bites. Yeah, this is just a vegetarian version of the chicken nuggets and it's got some corn, some tomato. Mmm, it's okay. Next, we have the double cheese McMuffin. And lastly, we have Mexican cheesy fries. On the McDonald's India website, one British customer said that these Mexican cheesy fries are the real deal. I have no idea how a British person can say that Mexican cheesy fries are the real deal, but anytime a British person says that another culture's food is the real deal, it puts a little fear in our small Indian hearts. Yeah, those fries look like ass. And the next exclusive side that we have is apple slices. Cut them up, put them in a plastic bag. About to get saucy, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Sauce talk. Thank you. Spicy bubble. Not a good. We got a tangy barbecue. Ooh. Much better. Mmm. Honey mustard. Tastes like salad dressing. Cute and sour. I would tie it with the tangy barbecue because it's so different, so we'll keep these guys sent here. Ranch, I don't know. America, we love our ranch. Ranch is just okay. That's why I said it. Ranch is just okay. Oh, and all ranch tastes the same. Yeah. And finally, honey. <laughs> How do you like that? Honey's the best one. And all that money, all that energy, all that time, creating all these recipes, trying to sway the American pop the American mind. And you got, you got beat by a bunch of bees. Power to the bees! We have one exclusive spice mix as well as one exclusive sauce here in India. We have chili sauce, which is pretty straightforward. It's chili sauce. But let me tell you about Piri Piri Spice Mix. So McDonald's launched this in 2013 here in India. And it was so popular. There were riots when they said they were gonna discontinue it. And so now, it's a permanent addition to the menu. First, you get this shake bag, then you grab your fries, and then you just pour that in there. Oh.
Boom! Oh boy! Can we cut to a before of the fries? You saw how they were. Now look at these. You can see the little flecks of spice just adorning each fry. Hello, it's Christelle, and I know Nikhil has Perry Perry McDonald's chips, but in the UK, it is all about Nando's, cheeky Nando's. Let's talk about Perry Perry. Perry means pepper, and it's a blend of spices, so it's got things like paprika, ground bird's eye chili, a bit of oregano, a pinch of ginger and cardamom, but it's a Portuguese spice blend. It's funny because obviously Nikhil mentioned that the Perry Perry fries just blew off in India, and it makes sense because I'm from Goa, which is in the south of India, Goa was colonised by the Portuguese. And so I really think that Indians are accustomed to that Portuguese taste palette, which is why Peri Peri fries are doing so well in India. But enough of the talking, I want to dig into these fries because they look great. Mm. Oh, this is so good. Harry, get involved. Not eating chips without me, are you? Oh, sorry, I've already had a head start. Cheers. Cheers. God damn, if that isn't like crack. For the early risers, there's plenty of exclusive breakfast items at the US McDonald's. Sausage, biscuit with egg. Next one, sausage biscuit. I mean, they take the egg out, so it's just... This, of course, is bacon, egg, and cheese. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the point of the breakfast where we get into the McGriddles. I love McGriddles. What's a McGriddle, you ask India? Fantastic question. McDonald's had this genius idea to replace the breakfast sandwiches they already had with pancakes. And they also like inject syrup into it somehow, but it is a breakfast sandwich with pancakes for buns, and it's the best idea anyone's ever had anywhere, ever. <laughs> look at this, look at this, look at this. They've got like a little M in there. This is a mini pancake. I know I'm wearing the gloves, but this one's mine. Mm. We have a veg McMuffin and a sausage McMuffin. Mm. The sausage here in India is not made out of pork like it is in the US. Instead, it's made out of simple chicken. Speaking of sausage, you can get breakfast burrito. Bro, I could put five of these away, easy. Easy. You're like a total drag and you want oatmeal in the morning. We have it. It's about as inspiring as you would think. Hotcakes and sausage. Of course, it comes with hot syrup. This here, uh, the big breakfast with hotcakes. And it's big. A lot of eggs, kind of wimpy looking bacon. Got yourself two English muffins here. And of course, comes with hash brown. Potatoes, who doesn't love them? McDonald's hash brown, undefeated. These things are so good. India exclusive desserts. We have a Black Forest McFlurry a vanilla chocolate muffin and a chocolate chip muffin. It's kind of like a McFlurry soup right now. This would be really good when it was actually a McFlurry. Desserts, USA, we got them. So start down here, very simple. Chalk chip cookies. Uh, this next thing, apple fritter, right? Mmm. This right here is called a glazed pull apart donut. Blueberry muffin, if you've had one, you've had them all. This is a what type of pie? It's a guava and cream pie. Let's see what's inside. Okay, I'm suddenly more interested. Yeah, guava and cream. How about we'll call it the cream and guava pie? Nah, this sucks. <laughs> huh? I don't it. Standard menu item, the McDonald's apple pie. Everyone knows about this. I don't want a pizza version of this. Eh. And last but not least, cinnamon roll. Too sticky, I don't feel like eating it. <laughs> Update, it's not sticky, it's actually... Exclusive drinks, starting with, we have something called Be Naturals Mixed Fruit Juice. Next up, we have something that they call Raw Mango Fruit Splash. Oh, it's a bit too sweet. Berry Lemonade Splash. All of these come in these very unique, reusable bottles, apparently. Next up, strawberry chiller, green apple chiller, and lemon chiller. It's just flavored water. That's exactly what it is. It's flavored water, and I kind of like it. This is a mixed berry smoothie. It's still quite sweet, but quite good. Next up, American mud pie shake. Mmm. That's pretty yum. Drink roulette. 
Ooh, and the ice melted. Fantastic. Dr. Pepper. Let's go. Coke, non-exclusive. Let's go. Sweet tea. Too sweet. Oh yeah, unsweetened tea, not sweet enough. You guys combine. For the kids watching. Why are you watching? Where are your parents or supervisors? You can get yourself apple juice, milk. Come on, drinking milk. The thought of drinking straight milk like hurts my stomach. There's also chocolate milk on the menu. Once upon a time, this was an iced French vanilla latte. Now it's more of a room temperature French vanilla latte. It's just okay. It's like really, like really sweet. Strawberry banana smoothie. Yeah, I always love getting these. These are good. So I'm gonna assume they're not good for me. Exclusive hot drinks. First off, we have strawberry green tea. Next up, uh, English breakfast tea and Moroccan tea. Next up, a flat white coffee. India, a land where we run on chai and McDonald's does not have a chai option. Caramel macchiato, cappuccino, caramel latte, a vanilla cappuccino, the V with the V does look like a U. McDonald's premium roast coffee. I'm gonna hang on to this one. In India, a chicken Maharaja Mac will cost you 231 rupees for just the sandwich. That's around 3.03 US dollars. We do not have the chicken Maharaja Mac, but we do have the Big Mac. And a Big Mac in the US costs $4.89. That is a 61% price increase. Now, what if you turn this into a meal? A Mexaver Maharaja Mac combo comes with regular fries and a regular drink and will cost you 356 rupees. That is 4.67 US dollars, still less than the price of the American sandwich on its own. But does the combo meal make a difference in the US? A medium Big Mac combo, so Big Mac, medium fries, medium drink, is $8.99. That's a 92% cost increase. Even worse than if you just bought the sandwich on its own. On the Indian McDonald's menu, you'll find a two-person meal which contains a chicken Maharaja Mac, a veg Maharaja Mac, large fries, two pizza McPuffs, and a drink. All of this will cost you 681 rupees or 8.93 US dollars. So basically, you're getting food for two people for the price of one person's meal in the US. However, while it seems a lot cheaper than the food in the US, it's still very expensive and aspirational to people over here. Your Minimum wage per hour is equal to our daily minimum wage. And so, yeah, a lot of people can't really afford this kind of food. The English speaking Indians that you see in a lot of YouTube videos on the internet aren't really a proper reflection of the majority of people that live in this country who still can't afford food like this. So I'm checking my privilege and we should all make sure we check ours. But let's play devil's advocate. McDonald's India has definitely included a lot more affordable options on their menu and so they are more approachable to the average urban Indian than other fast food chains. Let's compare some items to see who has the least healthy McDonald's food. In the US, a McChicken contains 400 calories, 21 grams of fat, 39 grams of carbs, five of those are sugar, and 560 milligrams of sodium. How about the Indian McChicken? One of these contains 398 calories, 15 grams of total fat, 48 grams of carbs, 5 grams of which are sugars, 787 milligrams of sodium. So the Indian version has slightly fewer calories, way lesser fats, but much more carbs and sodium. What if we made that a combo meal? Well, a medium fry in the US contains the following. 320 calories, 15 grams of total fat, 43 grams of carbs, no sugar, and 260 milligrams of sodium. While a medium fries in India contains 340 calories, 17 grams of total fat, 41 grams of carbs, zero grams of sugars, and 256 milligrams of sodium. And if we add the medium Coke, that is adding 210 calories, no fat, 56 grams of carbs, 56 of those are sugar, and 55 milligrams of sodium. Ooh, a nice salty Coke. We'll do the same. Here in India, one medium Coke will cost you 151 calories, zero grams of fat, 38 grams of carbs, 38 grams of which are sugars, and there are zero grams of sodium. But my God, that is a lot of sugar packed in this cup. That leaves the Indian meal at a grand total of 889 calories, 32 grams of fat, 127 grams of carbs, out of which 43 grams are sugars, and 1,043 milligrams of sodium. Sheesh. 
which means this whole bad boy all together is 930 calories, 36 grams of total fat, 138 grams of carbs, 61 of those grams are sugar, 875 milligrams of sodium. Little bit lower sodium than India, but we got you guys beat in calorie, fats, carbs, and sugar. Mm, 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 mm. We win, we win. Uh. Unfortunately for India, the combo stats are a little misleading and the difference maker is the Coke because the American meal has a larger portion. If you order the Coke Zero in both countries, the Indian meal will actually have a higher calorie count. McDonald's India does not share a full list of their ingredients, but there are some things we do know about their food. Like, did you know that McDonald's India actually changed Indian farming practices just so they could grow the kind of potato that they wanted? When they first launched in India in 1996, McDonald's promised the government that they would use products grown and sourced right here in India. But people who had eaten McDonald's abroad realized that the fries didn't taste quite the same. The reason for this is that Indian potatoes were too small, round, had way too much moisture and sugar content. And so the fries made out of them were not long enough, they didn't get crispy enough, and they didn't have that distinctive McDonald's oomph to them. So McDonald's partnered with McCain Foods and they spent nine years trying to perfect their potato. They imported saplings which had the perfect shape and starch content that they needed. They also chose Gujarat as their farming location for its climate and they switched from a flood irrigation to a sprinkler system to reduce moisture content and save water. The result? Bigger and more starchy potatoes that can be used to make the McDonald's fries that you know and love. McDonald's in the US mostly uses Russet Burbank or Shepherdy, Shepherdy potatoes. Potato me? So, these are big enough to have a distinctive long fry. Yeah, look how long this is. Wow. Known to be low moisture and low sugar content. This means they can remain crispy when fried and don't caramelize too fast so you can get a nice, even browning. McDonald's in the US actually discloses all of its ingredients. So we can figure out a few other differences. In the US, for instance, our mayonnaise contains egg yolk, as does most American mayo. Thanks to the FAQ page on the McDonald's India website, we found out that the mayonnaise is eggless, along with all of the other sauces except for the tartar sauce. When people describe things as vegetarian here in India, they typically mean it doesn't contain egg. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Domino's in India and the US. This is Food Wars. Here in India, our Domino's pizzas come in three sizes. Our Domino's pizza comes in four sizes. The small, eight inches with four slices. The small, 10 inch, which is six slices. The medium, 10 inches with six slices. The medium, 12 inches, which is eight slices. And the large, 12 inches with eight slices. The large, 14 inch, which is I don't know, four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12, 12, 16 slices, because I don't know why they cut it this way. I didn't ask them to, so. And the extra large, 16 inches or six slices. Unfortunately, our large margarita pizza only comes in one crust option, which is the hand tossed. You don't get it in pan or in cheese burst or any other kind. So I am going to weigh one slice of large margarita hand tossed pizza to see how much it weighs. 93 grams. And I will weigh a slice of our hand tossed and our pan to compare the weight. Please note that our mediums are the same size as their larges. That's pretty insane. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all, buddy. Hand tossed. One random slice is 79 grams. A slice of pan, same surface size, we'll say but obviously a lot thicker. Like, wait, I mean, come on. Ha! 139 grams. So that's a little less than double. This is our large Domino's Margarita Pizza. It's also known as the plain or cheese in the US. This is 12 inches long. It costs 419 rupees or 5.55 US dollars at current conversion rates. So the total surface area of this pizza is 729.7 centimeters square, which means it costs 0.76 cents per square centimeter of this pizza. Take our large 14 inch pizza, which is 1399 or 1056 Indian rupee with an area of 
squared centimeters, just like these slices are squared. I totally did that on purpose. That's 1.4 cents per square centimeter. That means the Indian pizza is 45% cheaper than the American version. This is everything you'll get on a menu at Domino's India that you will not get in America. A literal skyscrapers. You guys have actual skyscrapers. We have Domino's pizza box skyscrapers. Here's everything at the US Domino's you can't get in India. We have five, it's 10. We have five different crust options. We have pan, then you have wheat thin crust, cheese burst. Is there supposed to be cheese in here? Oh, there is cheese in here for sure. Then we have hand tossed and we have something called new hand tossed. Maybe somebody else's hands were used to make this one. In the US, our Domino's is five crust options. This one right here, gluten free, but you can only get that as a small pizza. Next over here, hand tossed. Over here, the much thicker pan, that's medium only. This guy in the middle here is the crunchy, Thin, which I just found out five seconds ago, they also cut in squares. Didn't know that. Last, and certainly not least, this is the Brooklyn style. They're thin slices, but you only get this in the large and the extra large. Hell yeah, that looks so good. Just by looking at them, I can tell that the hand tossed is slightly thinner. Mmm, new hand tossed. It's a little firmer as a crust. I would opt for the regular hand-tossed pizza. Finally, just for fun, the cheese burst. That is such a guilty pleasure. So I thought this was cheese burst in the sense that just the outer ring of crust had cheese. The entire pizza base is cheese burst. All right, here is our range of vegetarian pizzas. Here in India, to keep with the religious sentiments of both Hindus and Muslims, who are a majority in our country, we avoid using beef and pork in most fast food restaurants. But what that means is that we get a lot of delicious, you know, vegetarian options. Number one, Mexican green wave. I will say the colors on this pizza definitely look like the Mexican flag. Jalapenos, some tomatoes, onion, cheese. Next up, we have veggie paradise. Wow, imagine calling an entire pizza a paradise. Red peppers, capsicum, olives, corn, and cheese. You guys in the comments, let me know, does this look like paradise to you? I'm not in the comments, but I'll tell you right now, it absolutely does not. It's funny, their veggie paradise is my pizza hell. Next up, deluxe veggie, mushrooms, paneer, corn, capsicum, and onion. I typically don't like when there's too much on my pizza, but the things here really complement each other. Pretty good, but again, there's so much going on in this. It's truly a deluxe pizza. Next up, we have peppy paneer. How fun! Red peppers, capsicum, and paneer. If you are wondering what paneer is, it's basically cottage cheese, and we love our paneer. Okay, next up we have paneer makhani. If you're wondering what makhani means, it's a paneer version of butter chicken. If you're wondering what butter chicken is, friend, you need a culinary education. Hmm, would I ever want paneer makhani on a pizza? Maybe not. I don't like it. Next up we have cheese and corn. It's got cheese, it's got corn. And finally, Indi paneer Tandoori pizza. Tandoor is basically an oven we use here. It's cylindrical. We use wood fire and coal in it to sort of give uh, the meat and bread some char to it. And Indi, well, this pizza has just not hit mainstream yet. Oh, that is spicy and a half. If you can't take heat, avoid this one. My favorites so far, none of them. I will order a non veg pizza. Wow, India has a lot more vegetarian options than we do, and good for them. I personally don't want any of that. We do have two of our own exclusive veggie options. This here is the Pacific veggie, and over here we have the spinach and feta. I don't want to try either of these. Do I have to? It's a wasting valuable stomach space, you know? Like, it's only so big. All this awesome Domino's food here, you think I want any of this in my stomach? Who cares? All right, fine. What's it got, like feta cheese on it? This isn't so bad. Non-vegetarian pizzas. Number one, we have the pepper barbecue. Doesn't look like it has any vegetables, just a bunch of chicken pieces and 
with a nice smoky barbecue flavor. But you can choose a pepper barbecue chicken with onion. That is a great combination. Chicken sausage, quite, quite sausagey for sure. The next pizza is what I believe to be the best pizza you can order from Domino's India. The Chicken Golden Delight. What a delightful name. This is one of the oldest pizzas that's been there on the Domino's India menu. It's got nice sweet corn, it's got some jalapenos in there and some delicious, delightful chicken. Next we have the Dominator, which seems to have every single meat topping option on the menu. My God. Consider me dominated. I don't think he, I don't think he knows what that means. <laughs> Wow, we're learning a lot about Nikhil today, aren't we? <laughs> Whatever you into, my man. And next we have Chicken Fiesta. It's got some tandoori chicken pieces, some capsicum, onion, nice simple flavors. You can't go wrong with this one. And finally, Indi Chicken Tikka, which is just the chicken version of that paneer pizza I had. And that one just burnt my lips. So steer clear of this one if you can't handle spice. But if you do, this is the one you should get. Actually, some of those look pretty good. I'm very impressed. Now here in the US, every pizza that has beef on it is an exclusive. And we also got some chicken ones. Let's do this, I am starving. All the way over here. This is the extravaganza, which looks to have a bunch of veggies, mushrooms, and pepperoni. I'm so hungry. Thank you. Yeah. This is the meatza, two capital Zs. I'm seeing pepperoni ham, sausage, possibly hamburger, all the meats. Hell yeah, let's go. Mm. I can maybe do one bite of that. We're not starting to sweat. Next, we got the Hawaiian pizza. Mmm, A plus on this one. I f with this one, definitely very good. Cali, chicken, bacon, ranch. You see it looks like it has uh, sun-dried tomatoes, bacon I'm assuming, and chicken, white sauce, Little flimsy guy. This is the Brooklyn style, so I don't know why it's California. Oh yeah. No white sauce. Buffalo chicken pizza. I mean, they drizzled it on there, right? You see that just drizzled. This one's like surprisingly very good. The ultimate pepperoni. Not just any pepperoni pizza. The ultimate pepperoni. Oh yeah. Well, it's covered in pepperoni. Who is right? Mmm. Oh yeah. Put me in a pepperoni coma. Oh yeah. Oh, the deluxe. Deluxe is just that. A little bit of everything. Black olives, sausage, peppers, ham, probably bacon. You put black olives on anything, it just tastes like black olives. Ooh, Memphis barbecue. I am pro barbecue sauce on pizza. It looks like a chicken here too. Yeah, onions. Mmm, yeah. Oh man, that barbecue sauce, that's really nice. Wisconsin. Six cheese. There's no way there's six cheeses here. I don't think I can name six cheeses. We have mozzarella, cheddar, Asiago. Is American, is that kind of cheese? Did I say cheddar yet? Blue? I don't know. <laughs> Next up, if all of those non veg pizzas aren't enough for you, they have an entire section called Chicken Lovers. And they have these four pizzas that look absolutely insane. They're more topping than pizza at this point. This one is called the Chicken Five Feast. So they have chicken, pepperoni, chicken tikka, chicken meatballs. There is so much going on over there. I like it, but it feels like a drug, a pizza drug. Next up, we have the spicy double chicken. It has two different types of chicken, pepper chicken and tandoori chicken, and I assume it will be spicy, and I'm gonna take Domino's word for it. And then we have chicken Maximus, which sounds like a Roman emperor who is also a coward. <laughs> um, they have chicken sausage, chicken tikka, just a lot of chicken, just a lot of chicken. That's, that's what this has. Like, oh my God. Can I just weigh this? It feels like a, a small baby. I'm holding a small baby. 545 grams for a medium pizza. And finally, we have what appears to be the king of all of these chicken lover pizzas. It's an Indo Fusion Max. Sounds like, I don't know, some sort of detergent. But uh, dude, you can't even tell what, like, what number of ingredients is on this. I can't even see the pizza at this point. 
Oh my god. I feel like a new man. You have to order this once in your life. It gives me deep displeasure to announce that Domino's India has decided to uh, create these monstrosities called pizza burgers. Look at this. Is a burger supposed to make this noise? In Bangalore where I'm from, if uh, something bad happens to you, your friend will say you got a bun. And this is the bun they're talking about. They have three flavors: classic veg, premium veg, and classic non-veg. Ah! Oh man! No! It's just veggies and so is that cheese? No. No, 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 no. You know what? I thought this would be bad and it's worse. It's much worse. It's not a burger. Like nothing about this is a burger except for the bun. This might be the worst thing I've eaten on food wars so far. Okay. We did kind of the same thing, only we call them sandwiches. I've never gotten one of these outside of food wars. I'm just going to pick this one right here. It looks like it is a chicken habanero. You want to everyone want to get bummed out? No. Philly cheesesteak. Listen up, Philadelphia. Domino's wants to make you guys proud. Philadelphia, why are you not rioting right now at the Domino's headquarters, wherever it is? Because this is just insulting. Oh, no. Remember the Mediterranean veggie? Here it is in sandwich form. I also want his banana peppers on it. Ooh, here we go. Chicken, bacon, ranch. Love that combination. Oh, no, Yuli, look at this. Look at this. This is just too much. This one I just labeled sandwich. I didn't know which one it was. What the f***? Look at this. What is this? Is this a buffalo chicken? No, on this one, guys. Buffalo. Let us know in the chat how insulted you are by this. Both residents of Buffalo and Buffalo the animals. Uh, Italian. They didn't skip by the pepperoni. Gotta give them credit for that one. The chicken parm sandwich. Surprisingly bland. They're not terrible, but I mean, why get this instead of pizza? Continuing the list of exclusive abominations, we have a string of pastas, but also pasta pizzas, which look um, fascinating. Here in Domino's India, we use fusilli pasta, fusilli being the whole helix DNA strand of pastas. We have creamy tomato wedge non -veg, and we have Moroccan spice wedge and non -veg. And to accompany these I'm sure delicious pastas. We have pasta pizzas in the same flavors. Wow, just really inventive stuff going on over here. This is the Moroccan Spice Vegetarian Pasta Pizza. Here we go. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. It sent a shiver down my spine. It's so bad. How many different types of carbs are in this? My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Okay, I'm gonna try one pasta just in case it's good. Let's mix it up. This one has some tomato sauce in it. This, this, this is bad. We here in the US have our pasta options that come in penny noodles. These type of noodle guys. Is that a good shot of a penny noodle? You can get it in pasta primavera. Chicken carbonara, chicken alfredo, Italian sausage marinara. Again, I'm not, I don't know why you're getting pasta at a pizza place. I like it just fine. Is this the best pasta you can get in your neighborhood? Most certainly not. Now on to chicken wings. We have three flavors, tomato chili sauce, peri peri, and boneless peri peri. I'm gonna try the peri peri wings just to see how they stack up. They're all right. This is your standard run-of-the-mill chicken wings. In a country filled with millions of flavors, I can't believe we're still doing these same standard flavors like peri-peri, barbecue, and ranch. Where is my chicken 65? My chicken mulgapuri? My chicken ghee roast? Oh, chicken ghee roast. Domino's. If you do chicken ghee roast wings, I think you're gonna get a lot more people. Wings in the US. We got them too. Here's three flavors that we have here in the US. Honey barbecue, sweet mango habanero, and garlic parmesan. Domino's. If you're watching, you need to effective immediately stop doing this. I don't know who in your organization said, you know what we should do? Instead of tossing it in the sauce, you know, how everyone expects the wings to come, we'll just put on here and drizzle. 
Look at this, look at this mess. Toss it, toss the wings. Toss in the sauce, toss it in the sauce. That's how everyone does this, how it's supposed to be done. Next up, exclusive sides. Number one, cheese pops, tater tots, as you call them. We have fries and they're crinkle cut. That's unique. Not a lot of restaurants here in India do this. They have been flavored with a bunch of stuff though. So I think they've used their um, oregano and chili flakes over here. They have here a veg parcel. It's like a little puff with the same, you know, paneer pieces over here. Then they have what they call uh, tacos. There's a vegetarian version with some simple veg cutlets. And they have a non-vegetarian version with a slab of chicken. I did not expect that. I am speechless at the level of quality these sides have compared to the pizzas. Then you have a chicken parcel. And finally, they have literal meatballs of chicken with peri-peri dust on top of them. This is literally just one of their pizza toppings that they're selling as a side. Yes, India has breadsticks and stuffy cheesy bread, but they don't have garlic ones, but we got those. We also have these Parmesan twists. Look at these twisty guys. And for stuffed cheesy bread, you can get it as spinach and feta or bacon and jalapeno. Dips, this, I don't know what, they just were like, how can we give people pizza without bread? Behold, this, it is a dish of cheese and marinara sauce. They're calling them dips, cheesy marinara. And the five cheese, come on. Look at that, look at that oil, you see that right there? Exclusive sauces at the US Domino's, you know what that means. Sauce talk. Here you can get these exclusive sauces in the US, can't get them in India. We got hot buffalo, sweet mango habanero, honey barbecue, ranch, Ooh, blue cheese for the wings, right? And garlic. Yeah, it says ranch. They gave us two ranches instead of a ranch and a garlic. And marinara. Well, they're like generous in the marinara. That's a big one. We have two separate dips over here in Domino's India. We have a cheesy dip and we have a cheesy jalapeno dip. Cheesy dip. Ooh. Oh, that tastes good. Okay, cheesy jalapeno dip, really yum. Something about this tastes spoiled. Is this past its expiry date? It tastes like curdled milk. Go with the cheesy jalapeno dip for sure. It's time for desserts. Dessert. We, we just have one dessert here in Domino's India, but it's a banger. This is a choco lava cake. You heat it up and boom. Gooey lava goodness. Oh, wow. This fixed everything that was wrong with the menu of Domino's up until now. Just eating this is so comforting. I can feel those memories of the pasta and the burger and that ridiculousness that they served slowly disappearing from my head like, like thoughts from Dumbledore's head when he's near the pensive. Hey, India, check out these desserts we got. You can't have them. Uh, over here, we have a marbled cookie brownie. i go for a brownie, right? What the hell, dude, these are great. Oh my God. It's cookie dough and brownie. What a great idea. This tips, I don't know who, I don't know who in your organization said, let's do dips, but you need to let that person go. It's like chunky applesauce and cinnamon twists. Now it's time for drinks. Yet again, it's PepsiCo winning over here. We have Pepsi, we have 7up and Mirinda. Unlike a lot of other restaurants, Domino's is yet to switch from plastic pet bottles to something like cans or reusable cups. Drinks you get in the US, can't get in India. I almost said the UK, Jesus. I'm cracking up. Coke, Diet Coke, Fanta Orange, The Doctor, Sprite, Dasani water. I'm, I'm taking a Dr. Pepper. It's time for calories. Our large hand toss margarita pizza has 256.4 calories per slice. So that means the full pizza is 2051.5 calories, which is over twice your daily recommended protein intake and 172.5% your daily sodium intake. Yeesh! 
Our large cheese pizza is 2,240 calories. That's a 9.19% increase from India's cheese pizza. Look, I screwed up. I needed a thin crust for the crust section of this video, and I just randomly made it this large. Just understand that maybe, Victoria, can you do me a favor and take this pizza here and just like put it right there? Like, can you just do that in post, please? Next up, one slice of a large deluxe wedge pizza is 220.5 calories, and so the entire pizza is 1,764 calories. This is our large Pacific veggie, veggie pizza, and it is 310 calories per slice, which makes the full pizza 2,480 calories. That's a 40% calorie increase in the US. And oof, get a load of that sodium over 200% your daily amount. At Domino's India, our highest calorific pizza is the Chicken Dominatrix. Do Domin chicken Dominator. The Chicken Dominator. Dominating the calories, I guess. One slice will cost you 399 calories and the entire pizza is a whopping 3192 calories which is 159.6% of your recommended daily intake. Please steer clear from eating an entire chicken dominator. Our US Domino's pizza with the most calories is this, the Cali Chicken Bacon Ranch. One XL Brooklyn slice of this is 560 calories. That makes the full pie 3,360 calories. That's 168% your daily recommended calorie amount. It's worth it, it's delicious. Go get a slice. Tell them Joe from Food Wars sent you. They'll have no idea what you're talking about. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Subway in India and the US. This is Food Wars. Subway sandwiches in India come in two sizes, six inches, 12 inches. Subway in the US also has those two sizes, six inch and 12 inch. Now the website also says there's a four inch sub called a chota sub, chota meaning small, but mysteriously it is unavailable. We called four outlets, wasn't there. And now we shall measure the 12 inch sub to see if it actually is 12 inches. Keep them honest, right? That's 12 inches. All right, Subway. I'm getting more than 12 inches here. Subway has given me a 13 inch sub. This is why I love Subway. Fun doesn't stop there, because in the US, Subway also offers catering options. First, you can get this, a platter, which is five foot long subs cut into threes, making a total of 15 pieces. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom. The discrepancies continue here in India. The website says that we too have a platter option, but we called a bunch of stores, no platter option. And on top of that, in the US, you can get a three foot long party sub. Gosh. We didn't get it this time. Graphics, you can go ahead and put a three foot party sub right in front of me. Thanks, guys. Okay, is my ex girlfriend running the Subway India website? Because it's full of lies. They not only advertise a three foot sub, but a six foot giant sub. And surprise, surprise, we called a couple of stores, no six foot giant sub. In fact, they said there are barely any six foot humans here in India. Why would there be a six foot sub? And I was like, yeah, sorry, I am the idiot. Hang up. Okay, I am a short thing, 175 centimeters. This is how much I measure. Now this is a six foot sub next to me. Why would this be a thing? It's taller than me. Well, Joe is six feet tall, so go ahead and Ugh. So if graphics go ahead and make me a sandwich in three, two, one. You know, this is pretty comfortable. Can we do the rest of the shoot like this? Ugh, this is pretty nice. Here in India, Subway has actually opted out of using a lot of plastic, which is why they only stock these 330ml cans, which I am going to measure just to make sure we are not being fooled by PepsiCo. Mmm, smells like my teeth decaying. Yeah, looks about right, 330ml. Subway in the US, we're still totally using plastic cups. Small, medium, large, and the large is supposed to be 40 ounces. Why someone would want to drink 40 ounces of something that's not malt liquor in one sitting is beyond me. But if you want 40 ounces of soda, good Lord, 
Subway has you covered. I, of course, am curious to see if there actually is 40 ounces in this drink. Full Food Wars transparency. I did have to fill up my own fountain drink. Let's be honest. Can we agree that if you had to get your own drink, fill it up to go, you would probably get this much? Now keep in mind, the cap is recessed. If everyone roast me in the comments for not filling it up enough, like you can only fill this thing up so much. Oh my God, not even close. You know, I'm even gonna like get the condensation on the cup in there. It just it even like help tip the scales in their favor, right? 34, six, you guys are, just say it's the 34 ounce cup. No, 35 ounces. We're still gonna get it. Still gonna get it. Shame on you. I saw that John Oliver episode. Terrible Subway. Shame on you. We're gonna do the franchisees and we are doing skimping on the sodas. Here are all the Subway menu items from India that you won't find in the US. Here's all the Subway menu items from the US you won't find in India. Obviously, Subway lets you customize your sandwiches, so we're not talking about every single different combination. We're just going on what is on the menu now. Let's begin. It's glorious. This feels like a Subway buffet, and I get to pick whatever I want. First of all, the aloo patty. This is basically potato, which has been cut up into pieces and then fried with breadcrumbs on top. Mmm. This is not bad, but I think you can add all the fancy sauces you want into this thing. Nothing will beat a humble Mumbai vada pav. Corn and peas, that looks like a lot of mayo. I don't think I shall ever order this sub. This is a local legend, the Hara Bara Kebab sub. This is the first thing a vegetarian will order at an Indian restaurant because it's this delicious mishmash of spices, vegetables and potato, fried, tangy, delicious. Next up, we have a Mexican patty. I would like to extend uh, an apology to all my Mexican brethren watching that their great culture has been reduced to a patty of aloo and beans. Paneer tikka, beautiful pieces of cottage cheese as you call it. Is it uh, weird for me to bite a subway right through the middle? Would that upset you? It's nice. I wouldn't go with this particular combination of vegetables and sauces. Also, I just want to point out there are literally three pieces of paneer in here. When I used to go to Subway in college, I would make sure that they put in like a lot of protein. This is despicable. Veg sheik kebab. Sheik kebab typically is uh, minced meat that's sort of pressed onto your skewer and then grilled. But this is a veg version. It has a lot of different mixed vegetables and potato. Mmm, that's pretty yummy. I love the onions. The sauce combination is great. And the sheik kebab itself, lot of flavor. Next up, we have the vegetarian shami kebab. Uh, as you can see, they're nice round little balls. Shami kebabs are from Lucknow here in India. They have a very crispy exterior and a delicious melt in your mouth interior. They're typically minced meat, but this is a vegetarian version. Let me try this. Mm. Oh, best one so far. I'm so full. Next up, Chatpata Channa Subway. What a fun name. Chatpata means uh, full of masala, zingy flavor, really delicious. Channa is lentils. It looks kind of like a dirty diaper, but I assure you, this is going to be absolutely delicious. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. Now on to the non-vegetarian sub, starting with this one, the Indian chicken tikka. It's pretty good. I just took a mouthful and there was absolutely no chicken. Every bite should have a bit of everything. Chicken kofta. Um, kofta is basically meatballs and this is chicken flavored. You can see the meatballs right there. Wow, that's actually really good. Whoever picked the sauces on this one, this is the way. Barbecue, sweet onion, bit of ranch, a bit of mint mayo. This is the best sub out of all of them. I actually think it's the combination of sauces that makes the sub what it is. It's leaking flavor. Peri Peri Chicken. Ever since McDonald's released Peri Peri fries here in India, there has been a Peri Peri revolution over here. A Peri Peri revolution, as I like to call it. A lot of chicken, a lot of meat, um, not a lot of veggies. What, what happened here? Some olives would have been nice. And finally, this rejected subway over here is Tandoori tofu, which I refuse to eat on principle because we also have paneer over here. 
It looks pretty much the same and I'm sure it tastes great. You know what I realized? Subways opened up like this don't really look all that great on camera, do they? Oh my God, this looks like somebody's organs. US exclusive sandwiches. You know they say? Greatness is in the agency of others. Well, I'm here to say greatness is in the agency of other sandwiches. I've tried almost none of these. Starting over down here, we have something called the Maza Meats. Let's take a look at this, Yuli. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen this before. Look, they even got like the little, like, uh, like the fresh mozzarella, as well looks to be all the Italian meats. Oh, by the way, unless otherwise important to the sandwich, I got everything with lettuce, tomato, and onion, and like no sauce unless it includes a sauce, so some mercy on the people who had to wake up two hours early to make these sandwiches. It's just like, yeah, just put the same junk on all of them. Moving on, Supreme Meats. Oh yeah. This is up my alley. Salami, the other salami, ham. No turkey though, huh? Is this Capagol? What is this? Provolone cheese. This is something that I would probably get at Subway. The Baja Turkey Avocado. I mean, I'll put enough for you here. Turkey. Oh yeah, hey, they were generous with the avocado, I think, right? Going right in the middle. No big deal. Moving on. Honey mustard rotisserie style chicken. Oh yeah. I like the flavor of that better than like the regular chicken. The All American Club, ham, turkey, bacon, the Baja chicken and bacon. It's like weak. Even the bacon doesn't have a lot of flavor. Let's get into the steak. Baja steak and jack cheese. Black Forest ham. Buffalo chicken. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow, they were generous with the buffalo sauce. Chicken bacon ranch. What does it say with like the strongest flavor in this is the tomatoes. You guys don't have the cold cut combo? That looks like bologna. Then we have this next one. Whoa, -ho -ho -ho. the meatball, right? India, I assure you this tastes way better than it looks. Roast beef. Is, you guessed it, roast, oh God, that turned to bread pink. Is that normal? Oh, spicy Italian, a favorite of mine. Two salamis, both spicy, you know, just like in Italy. The turkey Cali fresh. I'm, I'm, I think when something's a Cali sandwich, the Cali means bacon and avocado. The steak Cali fresh, <laughs> which has, let me guess, bacon and uh, avocado? No, ah, there's the bacon. So unless I got COVID in the past five minutes, the food at Subway has seemingly become incredibly bland. Steak and cheese? <laughs> These steak sandwiches are like bricks. I'm looking at this. Oh, Yuli, yeesh. Now, there are some sandwiches which appear on both menus but have little differences when it comes to ingredients. For instance, our Subway Club comes with turkey, ham, and bacon, and our Italian BMT has ham. In India, our Subway Club actually has turkey, lamb and chicken slices and our BMT does not contain bacon. This is because most fast food outlets here don't serve ham or beef because it will hurt the religious sentiments of Hindus and Muslims. In addition to our sandwich fillings, we also have some differences in our bread options. We have honey oat multigrain, we have roasted garlic and parmesan oregano Italian white bread. But this looks oddly similar to the American Italian cheese and herbs. Is it the same thing, Joe? Let me know. No. Here's exclusive US bread options at Subway. Cheddar jalapeno bread, gluten-free bread, tomato basil wrap, and hero bread. In both the US and India, you can get any sandwich as a wrap or in a salad bowl. Other US exclusive option is the melt. I wasn't gonna get every single melt. Uh, the list goes as follows. Baja chicken and bacon melt, chicken and bacon ranch melt, Baja steak and jack melt, buffalo chicken melt, ham and cheese melt, Italian BMT melt, Meatball marinara melt, oven roasted turkey melt, spiced Italian melt, steak and cheese melt, and tuna melt. I went ahead and got two steak melts and, which one? oh brother, the tuna melt. Oh God, it looks like cat food. Ooh. I, I definitely don't have COVID, because I tasted that. I need a steak and cheese melt uh, palate cleanser after that. Mmm. <laughs> Now we're talking. Here are our breakfast sandwich options. We have egg and cheese, chicken slice egg and cheese, and Western egg and cheese. I am very curious to know what makes this Western. Mmm. I can see how this would be a Western option. Nice, bland, 
easy on the palate. Let me tell you something about India, all right? If you flavor something that we're buying at a restaurant with just salt and pepper, we call that a rip-off. At least, at least 10 spices. For some inconceivable reason, you can get their breakfast sandwiches, full-on flatbreads. Oh, good God, this, and they're so greasy. Ugh, egg and cheese. Oh, look how terrible this looks. Ah, oh, no! Where's the cheese and what? Oh, come on, man. Absolutely not. This really is a bummer. Oh my God. Oh, did you hear that? Like, I mean, these eggs, are you kidding me with this? What? I couldn't imagine eating a whole one of these for breakfast without going directly back to bed. There's a Black Force ham, egg and cheese. Oh God. And now let's never speak of those breakfasts ever again. We have some exclusive Subway toppings here in the US you cannot get in India, such as spinach, banana peppers, and Monterey cheddar cheese. According to the Subway's website, in certain parts of the country you can also get avocado, carrot, guacamole, sweet peppers, feta cheese, pepper jack cheese, provolone cheese, Swiss cheese. Here in India, unfortunately, all the toppings we have are also available in the US. Damn it, Subway, are we not special enough? Guys, let Subway know in the comments what special toppings we should have here in India. However, we do have our own exclusive sauces. Sauce talk. Starting with mint mayo, which is absolutely a banger and the entire world needs to taste this. Tandoori mayo, which we end up using because we overuse the mint mayo, this balances it out. And finally, red chili sauce. I've also never heard of mint mayonnaise and that sounds incredible actually. So in the US, we have a few of our own exclusive sauces such as ranch, oil, Subway vinaigrette, and plain mustard. You guys have honey mustard like us, but not plain mustard. And in certain locations around the country, you can also get buffalo sauce, creamy Italian sauce, golden Italian sauce, savory Caesar, sriracha, and uh-oh, tzatziki cucumber. Tzatziki or just is the tea silent? Tzatziki. Tzatziki cucumber. In my defense, I am incredibly nauseous. What if we took all of the US exclusive items and put them in one sandwich? Well, this time we're not going to. And thank you. We actually made an effort to make an edible US only sandwich. What we have is a steak sub. Cheddar jalapeno bread with spinach, banana peppers, Monterey Jack cheese, ranch, and mustard. Hmm. This all works well together, except the mustard stands out, which is kind of a mm, could do without it. And the spinach is fine. I don't taste the spinach, so I guess it wouldn't kill me to get some green in here. Now, what about an India only sub? Here is one with roast garlic bread, tandoori chicken tikka, mint mayo, tandoori mayo, and red chili sauce. Mmm. I'm really feeling the lack of exclusive toppings here, Subway. This is just meat and dripping in sauce. Make India exclusive toppings happen right now, Subway. This is the eat, pray, love version of a sub, in the sense that it makes sense to everybody else in the world except Indians. Moving away from subs, our snack section will tell you that we have a pepperoni toasty and a veggie toasty. Unfortunately, at the time that we ordered, it was not available. I have tasted them before though, and the pepperoni one is pretty yummy. Subway has potato chips, of course, and these are some US exclusives starting on this end. Sun Chips, Cheddar Harvest. Sun Chips and Subway have always had a really good alliance. Good for them. My favorite, Miss Vicky's. The jalapeno chips, these things are so good. You can also get the Miss Vicky's Lime and Cracked Pepper Chips. The one I went to, didn't have them. This I can't believe. You guys don't have the nacho cheese Doritos? I mean, this is like, like the most popular chip, right? And last, Lay's Baked. And also, kids can get a pouch of applesauce. I'm assuming adults can get it too, but they're technically for kids. In India, Subway's chip options are a lot more limited and they vary from store to store. The one we visited had a variety of flavors in Cornitos, which are basically nacho chips and Lay's. And they had my personal favorite Lay's flavor, West Indies hot and chili. But the crew has informed me that they will not roll further if I don't give a shout out to India's Magic Masala. Our Subway cookies have one exclusive flavor, and that is this, the raspberry cheesecake. 
This is so good. I don't know how they do it. We sort of have an exclusive here in India. In the US, you can get a chocolate chip cookie, but here you can get dark chocolate chunk cookie, or if you really want to join the dark side, a double dark chocolate cookie. Here at the subway in the US, Coca-Cola rules everything around me. We got a lot of Coke products here. I put these in order of which one I would probably want to have with a sandwich. Coke, Diet Coke, not a big diet guy, but it's like, eh, with the calories. Next is Sprite. I mean, who doesn't love Sprite? It's a little strong. I don't know if it goes well with a sandwich, but why not? Then we move on to the Simply drinks. You got yourself Simply Lemonade. Who doesn't like lemonade, right? Simply Orange Juice. I feel like this is more for the breakfast sandwiches, right? I mean, OJ after 11 a.m. seems kind of strange to me. And then this Apple Juice. If you want to have an energy drink with your sandwich, vitamin water, triple X. And then Gator Gatorade. Yeah, I mean, I like Gatorade, but I mean, it doesn't pair with food at all. Last and not least, all natural energy, green tea, hydrated coconut water, antioxidants, electrolytes with ribose. Let's find out. Whoa, that's terrible. This one smells like BO. Here in India, Subway's actually partnered with PepsiCo. So instead of Coca-Cola products, you can get things like Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Pepsi Black, Mirinda, Tropicana Orange Juice, and Aquavis Water from the makers of Aquafina. That's so complicated. Why? It's like a movie title at this point. Which country is getting a better deal on its subs? Let's compare a foot-long turkey sub in both. In the US, this will cost you $8.99. In India, ordering a foot-long turkey club sandwich on Zomato, one of our food delivery apps, will cost you 476.19 rupees. That's around $6.27 right now. And while that's 30% cheaper than the US sub, it's still pretty expensive for the average Indian. For context, in under $7, you can feed an entire family of four, and you're gonna get a very delicious, hearty meal in most restaurants over here. Now, to play devil's advocate, the subway near my college back in the day had a crazy deal going on where they gave us a six inch sub, a cookie and a drink of our choice in under $2. And we used to eat lunch there nearly every single day. So I guess from store to store, there are different offers and Subway is and can be kind of affordable. Subway prices have been a contentious issue in America for a long time. A franchisee named Stuart Frankel invented the $5 footlog back in 2003, which hit the mainstream in 2008. Cheaper labor and food costs combined with an increase in foot traffic meant the promotion was actually a huge earner for Subway. Sadly, it didn't last and the deal was phased out around 2012. When Subway tried to bring it back in 2017, it was met with uproar from many franchisees who said it was impossible to make a profit from the promotion. The same thing happened again in 2020 when Subway tried to push a $10 for two footlogs deal, which was killed after two weeks. Which country Subway is the most unhealthy? Let's start with a foot-long turkey sub on whole grain bread with lettuce, tomato, onion, peppers, and cucumbers. In the US, this sandwich contains 520 calories, six grams of total fat, two grams of saturated fat, 78 grams of carbs, of which 12 are sugars, and 1,580 milligrams of sodium. In India, the nutritional information for this same sandwich is 586 calories, six grams of total fat, four grams of saturated fat, 94 grams of carbs, of which eight grams are sugars, and 1,362 milligrams of sodium. When you break food down like this, it sounds pretty scary. So, the US sandwich has more sugar and more sodium than the Indian version. They have the same total fat content. I don't know what to take from that. But the Indian version has more calories, saturated fats, and carbohydrates than the US version. My theory is because we have that extra inch. What's the most calorific thing on the US menu? Currently, it's a foot-long Cali Fresh steak sub with smashed avocado. On whole Italian bread, one of these is a hefty 1,220 calories. There's also 68 grams of fat in there, 87% of your daily allowance, as well as 2,380 milligrams of sodium over 100% of your daily allowance. The most calorific thing on the Indian Subway menu is this paneer tikka sub, foot long, whole wheat bread with standard salad. It's a whopping 820 calories. 
Now this is less calorific than the American Cali Steak Sub and contains significantly less fat at just 41% of your recommended daily intake. The main thing to watch out for, however, is the saturated fat. There's 16 grams of it in here, which is 80% of your recommended daily intake. Oh, saturated fats, you sly dog. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Burger King in India and the US. This is Food Wars. In Burger King India, our drinks come in one standard size, which looks to be your small or medium. But you can also opt for a can of 330ml. Burger King in the US, our drinks come in four sizes. Value, small, medium, and large. Let's measure this cup to see how much is actually in here. Does it make anybody else want to pee? Or is it just me? 34 ounces. What well, says 38 at the bottom of the cup? It ain't 38. Our Burger King fries come in two sizes, medium and king. Our fries come in four sizes, value, small, medium, large. I remember the large being bigger than this. I'm just glad that the fuss we rose for the first UK, US Food Wars Burger King has resulted fry transparency. Next up, chicken fries. I didn't know this was a thing, so I'm very excited to eat them. It should have five pieces. Three, four, five, six. Thank you, Burger King. Oh, never mind. One of the fries had broken. They gave me five. Ours also is one size. Nine chicken fries. It's like a pack of chicken cigarettes. Seven, eight, nine. A nice brown on brown. Yeah, we thought ahead for this one. The next one we shoot, I'm wearing, I'm wearing all brown. I'm wearing a brown jumpsuit. We're gonna paint this brown. The most unwatchable series. Here's everything you'll find on the menu at Burger King India that you won't find in the US. And here's everything you can get at a US Burger King you can't get in India. Let's begin with the Whoppers. This is a good time to mention that here in India, most fast food restaurants do not serve beef or pork to keep the religious sentiments of both Hindus and Muslims. Conservative Hindus will not enter a restaurant that serves beef. Conservative Muslims might not enter a restaurant that serves pork. All right, keeping all of that in mind, let us begin with the chicken whopper. Ooh boy. Okay, Burger King definitely has larger burgers than most other restaurants here in India. Look at this, it's the size of my face. I am the Burger King. That's so good. You might notice if you are a regular Burger King consumer of the foreign lands, that if you were to eat this one, it's a little spicier. And I think they've done that because most Indians love their spice. There's a lot of bite to it. Next up, double chicken patty. Whoa, 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 whoa. This one's got some heft to it, huh? The mutton whopper. Mutton, if you are unaware, is goat meat. And Burger King is one of the few fast food chains here that actually serves red meat of some kind. Indians love their mutton. I love my mutton. It's definitely more meaty, has a lot more bite to it than the chicken. God, Burger King, what are you doing? The quality is out of control. Every beef burger at Burger King is a US exclusive. Got all the Whoppers. Let's start down here. The little guy, the Whopper a Junior. Not enough meat, you say? You can get yourself a double Whopper. Same burger, two patties. Can they go bigger? They can. The Triple Whopper. Look at this thing. Hey. Close your mouth when you're taking a picture. The Texans of the audience might have to help us out in the comments here. The Texas Double Whopper. Texas prides itself, from what I can tell, on always going bigger. So why wouldn't it be the Texas Triple Whopper? A rare moment where Texas was reserved. Texans of the internet. I think you guys need to step in here. I don't think that sandwich is doing you guys proud. On to the wedge options. This is a wedge whopper. I expect great things from this bad boy. I would say this is pretty lackluster. Next up, veggie double burger. If you want double the disappointment. Another thing that we have that technically isn't beef is the Impossible Whopper, which is made with Impossible beef. I'm actually very curious. How does the Impossible Burger patty taste, Joe? Regular beef. I have to hand it to him. It tastes exactly the same. I want to give the environment a, ch a break. Maybe get one of these every once in a while. Next up, we have an exclusive King collection of burgers. These better be uh, quite royal and aristocratic. Number one, hot and cheesy veg. A lot of uh, jalapenos. 
the patty actually has like cheese melt in it. Hot and cheesy King's collection on a scale of common villager to the king himself. I would rate this village bard. Once in a while you want him there just to appease a few people but otherwise pretty lackluster. Paneer Royal. Just by the name itself, this one should be incredible. So paneer, if you don't know, is cottage cheese and here in India, it is almost a staple. We eat it in everything. We eat it in curries. We sometimes just sear it and eat it plain. And obviously it had to make its way to burgers. The paneer is really good, chewy and delicious. I would rate the paneer royal, a local baron. Helps the king around a little bit. Now on to the two non-veg options. We have fiery chicken, Ooh, plain and simple. They just want this meat to blow my mind. It's just spicy. That's all it is. It doesn't have the depth of flavor that the chicken whoppers did. Chicken tandoori. If you guys don't know what a tandoor is, it's basically this cylindrical oven that we heat up using wood fire and charcoal traditionally. And we use it to create everything from kebabs to breads. I doubt all Burger King outlets have an actual tandoor in their restaurants, but let's see if they were able to replicate that smoky flavor. On a scale of absolute street urchins to Maharajas, I would rate these two court traitors that uh, try to backstab the king and now they're on trial. They have a lot of bark, but not enough bite. They're gonna be executed soon. Non Whopper Burgers, aka Burgers. Get yourself something called the Big King. Well, that's what it looks like. Don't have it. What we do have is the Single Quarter Pound King, Bacon King. I would say a generous amount of bacon. It's great. Then these little, much more reasonable sized burgers. Bacon cheeseburger. Bacon double cheeseburger. A bacon free double cheeseburger, right? One of the most hilarious things on the Burger King menu is, of course, the Rodeo Burger, a burger with barbecue sauce and onion rings, because why not? Hey, yeah, cheeseburger, regular dry ass hamburger. Who cares? Enough kingly sandwiches. It's now time for the regular vegetarian options that they have. We have crispy wedge, crispy wedge double, crispy wedge with cheese, BK classic, BK classic with cheese, light Whopper Junior, and light Whopper Junior with cheese. Why is it called light Whopper Junior? How many more things do you need to add to the name to make it seem small? Mini, light, small, Whopper Junior, Kindergartner, Burger. How about that next time, Burger King? Okay, I don't want to try any more veg burgers, but this one, the BK Classic Veg seems different. Like the bun looks to be the same, but they've definitely used more perky buns here. Don't use that audio clip out of context. Okay, finally, if you're a vegetarian, I would recommend the BK Classic with cheese. Boom. Although it is currently for a limited time, thought I would share with you guys here in the US, we have the Southwest options at Burger King, starting with the Southwest Bacon Junior, the Southwest Whopper, the Southwest Impossible Whopper. What makes it Southwest? Oh, I'm, ooh, I'm seeing like crispy little chippy guys. Ooh, spicy, ooh, it's got some heat to it. Yeah, there's, there's guacamole on here, hang on. I kind of fuck with it. I wouldn't eat it if I didn't work at Food Wars, you know? <laughs> and now for the chicken sandwiches. These look so tiny compared to the Whoppers. We have crispy chicken, crispy chicken double, crispy chicken with cheese, BK classic chicken, spicy grilled chicken, big smoky grill chicken, light Whopper chicken junior, light Whopper double chicken junior, and light Whopper chicken junior with cheese. Yes! I could walk at Burger King right now. We're gonna try just two of these burgers just to see if they're any different. First one, the spicy grilled chicken. Oh my God. I can imagine myself going to a drive-thru, taking one of these, driving to work, sitting in silk boat traffic, getting annoyed with all the other people honking, realizing I should've gotten a bigger burger, and next day ordering two. Nice. Next up, the big smoky grilled chicken. I don't see how this is smoky at all. In fact, it's kind of sweet. And to the non-beef options. I personally think these new chicken sandwiches are fantastic. The chicken, that's C-H apostrophe king, because it's Burger King. Spicy chicken sandwich, same thing. 
Got some spicy sauce on it. This is very good. If you like these but want a little more veggies, because you're some old fogey, here you go. Vegetables. They also make the Chick King Deluxe. Deluxe equals lettuce and tomato. This car crash of a sandwich is the spicy. Actually, the spicy with veggies is actually kind of nice. The coolness of the, uh, the lettuce and the uh, tomato actually counterbalances the spice. The original chicken sandwich shaped like the new iPhone for some strange reason. This guy's been around forever. It's their answer to the McChicken. It tastes exactly like a McChicken. Chicken Junior, well, that's a little guy. A spicy Chicken Junior. And last, the only non-chicken thing in the chicken section is the big fish. And now for a set of snacks that comes under their stunner menu. We have King Egg Burger, King Egg Wrap, Crispy Veg Wrap, Veg Crunchy Volcano. That's right, this is not even a wrap, this is a literal geological formation. Tiki Twist Burger, Veg Makhani Burger, and Chicken Makhani Burger. And finally, Crispy Chicken Wrap and Crunch Chicken Volcano. All right, the first burger we're trying is the Chicken Makhani Burger. So, Makhan means butter and it also means a lot to us Indians. You just walk in a room and you say makhan, it will resound through the room, like people's eyes will perk up, the hairs on their arms will rise. Oh my God, yeah. Okay, so they've gone for like a butter chicken, murg makhani flavor, but it just tastes like tomato puree over a stale chicken patty. Next thing that I really wanna try is the, the volcano itself. And I think this is their answer to Taco Bell's Crunch Wrap. Oh, that's pretty good. You were this close to offending two communities and Mother Earth herself, but pretty good. Next thing I'm gonna try is an Aloo Tiki Twist. Uh, tiki Twist sounds like a cocktail, but Aloo Tiki is actually, it's like mashed potato fried with breadcrumbs and it's used in charts, it's used in a lot of other dishes. And they put these crispy shards of what seems to be the same material in the volcano. Na, 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 na. Illuminati confirmed. On to breakfast is. We got breakfast at the BK in the US. You can get an assortment of sandwiches, biscuits, melts. I didn't get all of them. Starting down here, a croissant, which of course, for those of you not in America is, they took a croissant and stuffed eggs and cheese and your choice of breakfast meat. Bacon, egg and cheese croissant. Sausage egg and cheese croissant. Ham egg and cheese croissant. Bacon egg and cheese biscuit. Sausage egg and cheese biscuit. Ham egg and cheese biscuit. Cheesy ham breakfast melt. Sausage and cheese breakfast melt. Cheesy bacon breakfast melt. And for both the sandwiches and the biscuits, you can also get pretty much every combination of meat, egg, and cheese on said biscuit or sandwich. Ignormous burrito. Uh, no, 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 no. I am not starting off my morning with this. No, thank you. This looks like a dirty diaper. Like, what is any of this? I feel like if I bit this in the, like one bite of this in the morning and I'm on the toilet. Get yourself two platters, sausage and pancakes platter. And this one, I think it's like the platter deluxe. You get yourself pancakes, get yourself bacon, get yourself eggs, and of course, syrup. Next up, chicken wings. Burger King here sells boneless chicken wings. They feel like chicken tenders on me. They're super meaty, it's like proper chicken. It's not like that processed nuggety chicken juice thing that happens. In the US, our Burger King has nuggets and they come in four pieces and eight pieces. I asked the Burger King employees about the 16 piece and they said they don't have a 16 piece. They just give you two eight pieces. Now it's time for Burger King India sides and sauces. Number one, we have the classic peri peri fries. They give it to you with a little sachet of the peri peri powder and a little shake bag. Pour it in there. Voila! Your simple plain fries are now peri perried. Hmm. Go with McDonald's peri peri fries. I'm sorry, Burger King. Too powdery, almost chalky. And the flavor is not quite there. <coughs> okay. Peri Peri Fries has come back with a vengeance. Fair enough, there is a bit of spice to it. Next up, cheesy fries, Italian cheesy fries. And I don't know what makes these Italian, but I think it's a whole lot of oregano. And finally, veggie strips. Well, the BK here in the US, and get yourself onion rings, jalapeno cheddar bites. Let's see what one of these looks like. Mozzarella stick, mozzarella applesauce. 
Can't have nuggets without sauces. You know what that means. Sauce talk. As for the dips, we have easy cheesy, twisted mustard, fiery hell. They literally named one of their dips fiery hell. First up, buffalo sauce, honey mustard, ranch, sweet and sour, zesty sauce. Do we know what this is? That is just mayonnaise and, and like brown mustard. Marinara sauce, salsa del sol. It is milkshake time. Burger King has three flavors right now. They have mango, berry blast, and chocolate. Guys, at the time of filming this, it is currently mango season here in India. None of you have tasted a real mango until you've tasted the king of all mangoes, Alfonso, available here. Everywhere you go right now, you're gonna get a delicious mango milkshake. We also make something called Amras, which is like a delicious mango juice that we eat with puris and stuff. Let's see if this compares to fresh mango juice. Oh, it's pretty good. It's not too sweet. It does kind of taste like mango ice cream, sort of mixed, but I like it. I really like it. Next up, Berry Blast. Paper straws, Burger King, thank you. The dolphins appreciate it just as much as I do. Whoa, I did not expect that flavor. Here we have something called blackcurrant ice cream that's rampant in uh, very demented families that order the, the blackcurrant ice cream. I'm sorry to single out these Indian families like this, but this tastes like that. I'm sensing a pattern here, so it won't be a surprise to me if the chocolate milkshake also just tastes like watered down chocolate ice cream. The mango one, I suppose if it wasn't mango season, you could go and get a mango milkshake. But otherwise, go to any other fruit or milkshake store in India, get a nice thick mango shake with actual mangoes, way better. On to the cold drinks, let's start with the shakes. Over here we have a frozen Coke. You can also get a frozen Fanta Wild Cherry, sounds amazing. Our Burger King did not have it. First one is this, the Oreo shake. Why is that so good? It's like a shake made out of the stuff in the middle. Brilliant idea. And you can also get chocolate Oreo shake. No, it's not, this one's better. This one's very good. Desserts! I'm a sucker for desserts, but why would you order dessert from a fast food place? Unless I'm going to be proven wrong. First up, they have chocolate mousse cup. Okay, it's got a little bit of cake at the bottom. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate at the top. Chocolate chips on the top. Too decadent, very sweet. Next up, they have a choco lava cup, keeping in theme with their random volcano based food items. And I'm sure this would ooze out chocolate, but you have to heat it first. That is so sweet. When would I eat this? I'm trying to think of when I would eat something this sweet. Never. We have three dessert exclusives. The first one is this, the Hershey's Sunday Pie. Chocolate chip cookies? a soft serve cup or cone. Where is it, Joe? Well, it's roughly 100 degrees here in Southern California, and that thing would have melted into a soup before we even got it to the studio. Imagine either a soft serve ice cream cone or a melted soft serve ice cream cone would be more accurate. As for cold drinks, we have Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Mirinda, which is an orange soda, and iced tea. All of these are under the PepsiCo range of products. And of course, in India, the Pepsi slogan is Har Ghunt Me Swag, which means every sip has a lot of swag. And uh, I have to live with this cringe for the rest of my life now. Here in the US, we have obviously a variety of exclusive drinks. Can't get in India. Coke, Dr. Pepper, Diet Coke. There it is, Barks, baby. Fanta Orange. I should say that at least the BKs that I go to here in sunny Southern California has those Coke freestyle machines. So you can also get yourself an orange juice. It's really funny looking at orange juice next to orange drink. <laughs> like, look at the difference between it. Orange juice, orange drink. Capri Sun apple juice. Burger King iced coffee. The BK Cafe, which is, of course, coffee. Milk. Let's talk price. A single Indian chicken whopper will cost you 199 rupees or 1.56 US dollars at current conversion rates. In the US, a Whopper costs $8.79 or 668 Indian rupee. That's around a 236% increase in price. Make it a meal with medium fries and a large drink and it'll cost you 383 rupees or 5.03 US dollars. 
Add a medium fry and a medium drink to the order, and that brings the price to $16.37, or 1,246 Indian rupee. Again, about a 225% increase. Now upgrade to the large size, and it's 407 rupees, or 5.35 US dollars. Make it a large, $16.77, or 1,276 Indian rupee. It's a 214% increase. 200 rupees for a single burger is actually very expensive. And while fast food in the US and other foreign countries might seem like something that the average person can easily afford, here in India, this is expensive. And only the upper middle class and the rich can actually go out and have a burger like this. In fact, in Mumbai, where we're filming this right now, our most popular street food is vada pav, which is like a potato burger. And it costs just 15 rupees, which is 20 cents. It can fill you up, downgrade the cost, upgrade the taste, get a vada pav. To better illustrate the price difference, let's compare the US large Whopper combo to our combination of two Whoppers, two crispy chicken sandwiches, five piece chicken strips, king fries, and four drinks. All of this still costs less at just 1,102 rupees or 14.45 US dollars. We would have to add a crispy wedge with cheese and a crispy chicken with cheese to get around the same price. But again, I have to remind you that in $14, an average family here in India could eat at home for a week. Calories time. My favorite part of these videos because I realize how much I should not be eating this food. Let's start off with a crispy chicken sandwich from Burger King. <clears throat> it has 430 calories. And in the US, our crispy chicken sandwich is 670 calories. Next up is one of Burger King India's most popular burgers, the Wedge Whopper at 728 calories. Imagine that, high calories, low taste. We don't have that, but in the US, our Burger King does have the Impossible Whopper, which contains 630 calories. Next, let's compare the fries. An average box of king-sized fries will cost you 535 calories. If I had to choose between these fries and an hour of cycling, that's very really light, probably skip to cycling. But, but this is still bad, it's, it's a lot of calories. And in the US, a large fry has 430 calories. And now, for some reason, if you're really looking to pack on those calories, introducing Burger King India's most calorific sandwich, the Masala Wedge Whopper, at a total of 734 calories. Damn. The website of Burger King India also says they sell a 15-piece grilled chicken wings with a total of 1,256 calories, but uh, we called a bunch of stores, it was unavailable, and I think they discontinued it because they did not want to kill half the country. Oh, yo! Yeah, this is definitely a block of calories. And in the USBK, our most calorific sandwich is this, the Bacon King. Just one of these bad boys, 1,359 calories. Oof! From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Pizza Hut in the US and in India. This is Food Wars. The smallest pizza in the US is the personal pan pizza, and it is six inches across. In India, our pizza start at personal size. It's seven inches wide and has four slices. The US also has a small pizza, but only with the gluten-free crust. And it is difficult, 10 inches wide. So depressing looking. Then we're on to the mediums. A medium pizza here in India is 10 inches and has six slices. A US medium pizza comes in at 12 inches wide. This medium pizza is equal to the small pizza in the US. People in the US, sometimes it's just really hard not to stereotype you guys. Next up in India, we have Nothing, because medium is our largest size. That's right, we have only two sizes, personal or medium. No large for us because Pizza Hut is watching our <laughs> weight, I guess. <laughs> Stereotype away, my man, because in the US, you know we got this large, and it is 14 inches in diameter. So America's largest pizza is four inches wider than India's largest. That doesn't sound so bad, however, now, if you calculate the surface area of the two pizzas, those few inches make a big difference. The India medium has a surface area of 78.5 square inches, 
while the US large clocks in at 153.9 square inches. To save you from doing the math, that's a 96% increase. That means the US large pizza is nearly double our Indian medium. What the heck, Pizza Hut? The type of crust you get doesn't affect the width of the pizza, but how does it affect the value? We're going to weigh a medium hand toss slice versus a medium pan crust slice to see which one gives you more pizza for your money. All right, I'm gonna do the same with our pan and San Francisco style pizzas. Uh, they're medium size. All right, so medium hand tossed weighs 94 grams. Pan the thick boy. Boy! Whoa, 104 grams. That's a difference of, what was the first one? Uh, that's a difference of this many grams. This one is pan style and it weighs 78 grams. This slice weighs 66 grams. Fairly lighter and I think this is because when they make this pizza, they press it down into the pan and that's the San Francisco style. This weighs more and therefore is more because it's more bread. You want the cheese and the sauce, you want the fun stuff, right? I don't know. Oh boy, this is gonna be trouble. Here is everything you'll find on the menu at Pizza Hut India that you will not find in the US. And here are all the Pizza Hut menu items from the US you won't find in India. Let's start off with the foundation of any pizza, the crust, starting with the San Francisco signature style. To my understanding, it's basically a pan pizza, but they press the dough in with their hands, so it's kind of a hand toss. Next up, we have something very special. It's a Chezwan pan pizza. Oh my god, yeah. I really like this, it's spicy, really yum. Just to give you some comparison, the way chicken tikka masala was invented in the UK, but clearly inspired by Indian cuisine, Shezwan sauce was actually invented here in Kolkata by the Chinese community that settled down here. But it's obviously inspired by Chinese cuisine, and now it's become part of Indian cuisine. We have accepted it wholly, and we eat it all across India. Very exciting to see it integrated into the Pizza Hut menu, and it actually tastes very good on this pizza. Next up, they have a stuffed cheese crust max with two X's for emphasis. You can already see that this thing is loaded with cheese. Next to the cheese, alongside it, there's like a sort of creamy sauce, which Pizza Hut is calling Peruvian creamy sauce. Whoa. Oh my God, yeah. This is decadent food. Next up, we have a stuffed crust uh, with veg kebab. That's right, if you don't know what kebab is, it's basically meat that's cooked in like a tandoor. If you don't know what a tandoor is, please go watch the older episodes of Food Wars. I've explained it eight times. A lot of people like to leave the crust behind, but I feel like Pizza Hut is making sure all of the pizza is eaten because even this looks like a dish in itself at this point. Oh my God, that's really yum. And the final option, the stuffed crust with a non-vegetarian kebab, ooh. As you can see, this is uh, what looks to be chicken chic. Oh, that's the best of a lot. That was amazing. Oh my God, smashed it, Pizza Hut. That might be the best pizza I've had on Food Bar so far, and I didn't even eat the pizza part. We also have a variety of crust options in the US. Starting down here, you saw it already. Here it is again, the hand toss. This to me is like classic. This is the default. You guys don't have hand tossed? Moving on, thin and crispy. I mean, how much, I look at this. They can't charge the same amount for this, right? I don't think they should. Moving on over here, the original stuffed crust. They put cheese in the crust. Can you believe that? Oh, no, it is, it is solidified. But that's not me from biting into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last, and let's be honest, least gluten-free crust, look, I don't know what's going on gluten allergies, and my apologies if you have one, but I'm looking at this, I'm just like, I'm sorry guys. I mean, is this that much better? I don't know how you can enjoy this. And for a limited time, Pizza in the US has Detroit style pizza. Let's go, let us go. Look at this, are you kidding me with this? Detroit style pizza, what's Detroit style? Well, they cook it in a square pan that has like sides to it. It's like when you cook brownies and every brownie is like a corner or end piece. It's like that for pizza, so every, slice is gonna have the crispy crust on the outside. It's thicker. One of my favorite pizza styles. I'm glad Pizza Hut's doing it. Generous with the pepperoni, guys. I appreciate it. 
Not the best Detroit style pizza I've ever had, but it's pretty good. I think they go bread cheese topping sauce. These are the toppings we found under the categories classic, favorites, and delight. Very arbitrarily named, but yeah, let's jump into it. The first option is chicken sausage. It smells really good. A lot of onions. I love onions. Hmm, it's pretty classic. The next pizza is spiced paneer. Paneer, if you don't know, is cottage cheese. We make it all over the place here in India, and it's one of our favorite ingredients. We use it on everything, even pizzas. Not very spicy, but definitely it's got like a tangy twist to it. Next up, we have the veggie feast. It's got some herbed onion, capsicum, and sweet corn. This is like such a wholesome, chill pizza. It's definitely a classic. It's something your mom would make at home. Next up, we have the veggie tandoori, uh, which I have already taken a bite of. Uh, we got this one with the Shazwan crust, so it's definitely spicier than the typical pan pizza you'll get. And I already tasted it, and I told you I loved it. I love the spice. Next up, we have spiced chicken meatballs. It's a very straightforward pizza, but we got it with the cheese burst um, filling. Next up, we have the chicken and corn delight. It already has the word delight in the name, so I'm assuming it should be a delight, but I'll be the judge of that. Capsicum, chicken just strewn across, and uh, corn. It's got too much going on, I would say, personally. I would not order a pizza like this. Next up, to round it all off, this is the double chicken sausage pizza. Am I wrong in saying that this just looks like a boring version of the normal chicken sausage pizza, which has onions and just feels a lot better? We have a pepperoni pizza that is made of pork and not chicken, and a pepperoni lover's pizza. Which one has more pepperoni? I can't tell. The supreme pizza. It has pepperoni. Mushrooms, green peppers, onions, and that's it. But if that's not supreme enough for you, we have the Super Supreme, which now they've introduced black olives. Meat lovers, baby! Meat lovers! You got pepperoni, you got bacon, you got sausage. I bet there's something else on there that I don't know, another meat. It's, just, uh, it's beautiful. This next pizza is the Veggie Lovers, and I absolutely hate it. Now, you want veggies, go get a salad. Don't put on pizza. You're not fooling anyone, all right? Backyard barbecue chicken. Yuli, do you have enough B-roll? I think it's barbecue chicken, but I think they use barbecue sauce instead of pizza sauce. Genius. Genius. This is so good. Oh, yeah. A buffalo chicken. It's like surprisingly good. Pizza does not have a straight Hawaiian pizza on the menu. The only thing they have is Hawaiian Chicken. I see, obviously, chicken. I see a pineapple. I think I see ham. Yep. I think Hawaiian should just be pineapple and bacon. And if you want to throw some chicken on, that's fine. But if you have a strong opinion, either for or against pineapple on pizza, you're wrong. It's a perfectly fine topping. I don't know why everyone gets so worked up about it. More pizzas, and these are all part of the signature collection. Um, there are 11 pizzas in front of me. Two, four, six. Ah, okay. First off, the country feast. Um, it looks Super saucy, it's overloaded with vegetables. There's mushrooms, capsicum, onions, sweet corn, roasted peppers, everything that you want on a country-themed uh, pizza. All right, next up we have tandoori paneer. Uh, if you remember in the previous categories, we had spiced paneer. So all I'm looking for is why is this different? Oh my God, that's really yum. Next up is the veggie lover. It's basically got tomato, onion, uh, capsicum, mushrooms, and some red paprika, and hopefully a whole lot of flavor. It's underwhelming, I'm gonna be honest. Next up, we have chicken tikka. Everybody knows chicken tikka. It's a bit too strong, too tangy, and I think they could have gone with a thinner layer of sauce. Next up, we have the Malai chicken tikka. Malai is basically cream, so um, Malai kebabs. They basically grill the chicken and then they pour Malai on top. We have the chicken pepperoni. Double paneer supreme. You like paneer? You like supreme clothes? Well, this has double of it, minus the clothes. Veggie supreme. Everybody in India has heard of this pizza. This is a painting. I can genuinely see this on the wall of an art gallery. There's capsicum, there's olives, there's corn, there's onions, there's corn again. 
veg kebab surprise i'm curious to know what's going to be surprising about this <laughs> surprise surprise it tastes bland and now on to our penultimate signature pizza this is the chicken tikka supreme woohoo basically what they've done is they've taken four different kinds of chicken and they put it on a pizza and finally in the line of signature pizzas we have triple chicken feast it has all of the above ingredients and we've also gone the extra mile and taken it with a chicken stuffing in the crust overall pizza hut has actually killed it i think all the ingredients have tasted super fresh all the meat has also tasted really soft and juicy and delicious and the sauce has been consistently yum throughout damn pizza hut good job as mentioned before currently have a detroit style pizza at the us pizza hut this is what it looks like two slices are missing i skipped lunch and breakfast to be honest for those of you outside of the united states detroit is a city in michigan they have their own style of pizza i really enjoy it you can also get it as a supreme detroit style and a meaty deluxe detroit style and i didn't get them because it all looks exactly like this one fun option on the pizza hut india menu is their new range of momo mia pizzas which are pan pizzas with momos baked into the crust. Now, if you don't know what momos are, they're basically dumplings from Nepal and Tibet. Uh, they're served all across India and they've become huge favorites for everybody over here. They've also given a Szechuan sauce to the side, um, which is what you typically eat with momos. Hmm. No. Oh. That ain't right. I don't see how this is working. I can't think of a single Italian who would put a pocket of ravioli on top of a pizza and then bake them together. And this is effectively what that is. We also have a range of flavor fun personal pan pizzas that you can get with a host of new flavors, starting off with classic corn. Next up we have the classic onion and capsicum, tandoori mushroom and corn. Uh, so it looks similar to this, but they use tandoori sauce and they've added mushrooms. Next up we have the classic paneer onion and capsicum. Then we have the classic chicken sausage but personal pan sized. Next we have the Italian pepperoni and onion and just a reminder that the pepperoni that they've used is chicken pepperoni. Tandoori chicken tikka and onion and the classic loaded chicken delight. Personally, I wouldn't order these pans. I would get the larger pizzas because they tasted way better. On top of set menu items, we can also customize our pizzas in unique ways. For example, if you don't want tomato sauce as your base, you can sub it out for creamy garlic parmesan, barbecue sauce, remember from before, buffalo sauce, or a no sauce option if you are a maniac. And if you want, you can specify light, regular, or extra sauce. Unfortunately, we can't change the sauces on our pizza bases, but we have a bunch of custom toppings that you will not find in the US, like baby corn, sweet corn, herb veggies, spiced paneer, and veg kebab. And we also have exclusive toppings you cannot get in India. For instance, we have pepperoni, which is pork. Our Italian sausage has pork. Bacon, uh, I believe is pork. Meatballs, beef and pork. Ham, pork, and then beef and pork. Then the vegetables. We got white onion, we got pineapple, which is a fruit, and we have banana peppers, which I don't know if it's a fruit or a vegetable or a pepper. Are peppers fruit? Whenever we have the option of customizations on food wars, we like to combine all of our exclusive ingredients to make an India-only pizza. So this pizza has a Szechuan base with baby corn, wedge kebab, spiced paneer, and herb wedgies. It looks pretty gnarly, I'm not gonna lie, but let's see how it tastes. Hmm. I can see why Pizza Hut didn't put this officially on their menu because maybe the ingredients don't go, don't go that well together. But hey, this is an India-only Pizza Hut pizza, and that means something. And of course, we had to create our own U.S.-only pizza. So the thin, crispy base, creamy garlic parmesan sauce, beef, bacon, white onion, and everyone's favorite vegetable, banana peppers. <laughs> this looks like a cartoon pizza. Oh. Okay, is that bad? It's not great, I wouldn't get it. Uh, yeah, it tastes like onion and bacon. Don't get this. Oh. Pizza Hut has a bunch of sides. So let's start off with the breads. First off, we have cheese garlic bread. Then we have a uh, spicy supreme cheese garlic bread. It's basically cheese melted on top of a garlic bread baguette. It's got some green chili and 
some chopped onions. It's very delicious when it's hot. Mexican garlic breadsticks, oregano sprinkled on top, some jalapenos, some chopped olives and onions. It looks really delicious. Creamy garlic breadsticks. And finally, we have garlic breadsticks in a little packet that says garlic breadsticks. The US Pizza Hut only offers regular breadsticks and cheese sticks. So in fact, the only actual exclusive side that we have in the US is fries. We have a bunch of other sides, including baked cheesy momos wedge and baked cheesy momos non-wedge. Ooh, that's a potent smell. You know what? It's not half bad. Next up, we have potato poppers, which are pretty much tater tots. We have the indie rock and roll wedge and the indie rock and roll non wedge. This is basically a roll, but I like how the wrap is kind of thin. No, oh, again, it's quite good. Next up, we have the zesty paneer pocket and the zesty chicken pocket. Uh, these are pretty much like pizza pockets. There's some mint mayo, some normal mayo, some cream cheese, chicken, and jalapenos. We have jalapeno poppers. Um, I imagine they're just filled with cheese and some jalapeno bits. Oh, ooh, I did not expect that consistency. And that brings us to an old classic chicken wings. Spicy baked chicken wings. So I suppose they're a healthier alternative. Wing street wings. Yes, both traditional and boneless. You can get them in the following flavors. Lemon pepper, oh, let's go lemon pepper. I usually don't like lemon pepper, but these are pretty good. Ooh, honey barbecue, ugh. These, guys, these things are like condensation. Uh, ooh, the medium buffalo. Ooh, Cajun style. Eh, just okay. Spicy garlic, what? Naked, that's wings with nothing on it. Why would you do that, I don't know. Buffalo burning hot, three flames. Mmm. This should be your medium. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. Sweet chili. Am I sweating? I feel like I'm sweating. They're all just, eh. You know, I mean, I, I like wings. Maybe, maybe my wing standards are too high. Garlic parmesan. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, my God. I mean, the sauce is like pasta sauce. It's really thick. And it's got a lot of flavor to it, but. It's just like sitting in the sauce. So either you get a mouthful of sauce or none. And these come in portions of six, 12, 18, or 36. And next up on the menu, you can also find a range of pastas, starting with the creamy mushroom. You know what, if I have to listen to this, so will you all. Just get, get some on the boom mic. Decent pasta for a fast food restaurant. They have a cheesy comfort wedge pasta and a cheesy comfort chicken pasta. It's too gooey. We have the spice tomato twist wedge pasta and the spice tomato twist non wedge pasta. If you come to Pizza Hut to order pasta, I hope we never cross paths. Nikhil, you have no idea. We absolutely love our carbs in this country. And as you can see, we have bowls and bowls of carbs that we call pasta. You can get four exclusive oven baked pastas at pa Pasta Hut, at Pizza Hut. I'm not eating any of these. They all taste terrible, all right? The end. You can get a oven baked chicken Alfredo. Don't get this. Or if you don't like chicken, you can just get cheesy Alfredo. And then of course we have the Italian meats pasta, which is pepperoni and Italian sausage. I mean, oh, oh, Italy. Oh, Italy. I'm so sorry. And lastly, the oven baked veggie pasta. I mean, this, this, is, this is a doorstop. <laughs> I, I can't stand the Pizza Hut pasta. I cannot stand it. You see the sauces, you know what time it is. Sauce talk. Starting down here, get yourself blue cheese sauce. Then get ranch. Oh, a garlic sauce. We can have a honey barbecue sauce a medium buffalo sauce, and a side of marinara, just for uh, dipping your breadsticks, and also the icing, the Cinnabon icing for the Cinnabons. And there's a note that says, I really wanna see Joe dipping some pizza in the frosting and eat it. <sighs> Give me this. Oh! Actually, at first I was like, yuck, but this is kind of good. And now on to dips, your dip sh**. First off, we have 
Tomato ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> then we have a uh, mayonnaise. Fun fact, it's veg mayonnaise. Doesn't have any egg because a huge population of this country is pure vegetarians, which means that they don't eat anything from an animal, even egg. Then we have a cheese dip. And finally, it's a Szechuan sauce. And they've ser they serve it with the momos, they serve it with a bunch of other things. Yeah. We got desserts you're not gonna find in India. That includes down here, the cinnamon sticks. They're like breadsticks, only cinnamony. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Get your mind out of the gutter. And moving on, we have here are the Cinnabon mini cinnamon rolls. This is the triple chocolate brownie. If I had to guess, two pounds. What do you got here? The ultimate chocolate chip cookie. Right? This is like a, fr this is like a frisbee. And for all you sweetie pies out there with sweet tooths, here are India's exclusive desserts, starting with a choco lava cake, baby. Ooh, molten. The choco lava cake in Domino's, much better. Next up, you get a whole range of ice cream from Quality Walls, one of India's biggest ice cream manufacturers. You can get a tiny tub of Chocotastic Supreme Sunday. Then you can get a Cornetto, a cone, Super delicious. And I really love the end of this because it's just a block of chocolate. And I used to fight over this with my friends. Then you get a Magnum. Everybody loves a Magnum. And finally, you can even get a family pack of ice cream. Soda! Last exclusive are, of course, the drinks. Both countries have Pepsi. But the pizza in the US, you can also get Wild Cherry Pepsi, Orange Crush, Mountain Dew, baby, Sierra Mist, which they didn't have, and Aquafina. Here in Pizza Hut India, our exclusive drink options are Pepsi, 7-Up, Mirinda, and Pepsi Black. They also serve an iced tea at the restaurant, but they don't deliver it, unfortunately. I would have gone for the iced tea. All right, now let's take a look at Pizza Hut's pricing, particularly some clever marketing tricks they're using to make you believe you're getting more value for money than you actually are. In the US, a medium cheese pizza on the pan crust will cost you $13.49. In India, a medium margarita pizza will cost you 319 rupees, which is currently 3.93 US dollars. That means over here you are paying 11.9 cents per square inch of pizza. While over here in India, you're just paying 4.4 cents per square inch of pizza. That makes the US pizza 170% more expensive. Generally with pizza, the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. A US large has a surface area of 153.9 square inches and costs $15.49. That brings the cost per square inch down to 10 cents, making it 15% cheaper than the medium. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Pizza Pop Quiz. Which has the higher surface area? One medium pizza or two personal pizzas? If you said two personal pizzas, congratulations, you're an idiot. Because when it comes to calculating the surface area of a circle, small changes in diameter can create huge differences in surface area. On the Pizza Hut India website, you can get a combo offer of two personal pan pizzas for rupees 279. However, a medium pizza costs pretty much the same. But I guess if you want two different flavors of pizza, it makes sense to go with the combo. In this medium cheese pan crust pizza, it has 1,940 calories, 79 grams of total fat, 33 grams of saturated fat, 224 grams of carbs, and the sodium, oh boy, 3,480 milligrams. A medium margarita pizza in India will cost you 1,377 calories, total fat 40.29 grams, of which saturates are 14.7 grams, carbohydrates 192 grams, and 2,717 milligrams of sodium. Yikes. Now the American stats look a lot worse, but I do want to point out that our medium is much larger than India's. So if you break it down per square inch, you'll see that. The US version does have more fat and more saturated fat, but India's pizza actually contains more calories, carbs, and sodium. But what about the most calorific item on the Indian menu? If you really want to mess up your day, you have to order the medium wedge surprise kebab pizza with wedge kebab stuffed crust. 
a whole one of these pizzas will contain 2,673 calories. That's 133.65% of your daily caloric intake allowance. Oh my God. Okay, the calories are high, but the sodium is even higher. There is 6,344 milligrams of sodium in here, which is 275% of your daily recommended allowance. What about the most calorific pizza in the US, you ask? Well, that would be a large pan crusted meat lovers, which this isn't. So imagine it bigger and thicker. Okay, an entire one of these contains a whopping 3,570 calories. It's 178% your daily allowance. And the sodium is even worse than that of India's. There's 7,150 milligrams of sodium in here. That is 298% your daily recommended amount. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Dunkin' Donuts in India and in the US. This is Food Wars. Here in the US, you can get your donuts in one, six, or a half dozen, or 12, AKA a dozen. Don't put that in there. Here in India, you can get your donuts in packs of one, three, or six. One US sticky glazed donuts. Indian glazed donut. It weighs 49 grams. 59 grams. In the US, we have four sizes of hot coffee. The small, the medium, the large, which unfortunately they forgot, Duncan, and the extra large. Here in India, our filter coffee comes in one size, this one. If you're wondering what filter coffee is, it's one of the most popular drinks here in India. It's made by taking a decoction of coffee, mixing it with sweetened milk, and typically when they're preparing it, they pour it from a huge height to create this froth. It's super delicious and it's very strong. It'll wake you right up in the morning. As for our other drinks, they come in two sizes, either medium or large. This is an Americano. Let's wait to see how much we got. I might have to go to the bathroom after this. 10.14 fluid ounces. If that's not enough for you, Duncan's in the US also has a box of Joe, which contains 100 ounces of hot coffee. And Yo! Gosh! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This should be the extra large. In the US, we only have three iced coffee sizes. The small, the medium, and the large. No extra large, but they did remember the large iced coffee, so thanks, Dunkin's. So the Dunkin India website says that they serve an iced Americano, but we asked three outlets here in Bengaluru, and they said, no iced Americano. We even asked them, hey, can you put some ice in our Americano? They said, no. So if you really must have an Americano that's iced from Dunkin, you have to take your own ice and go there. So what, what I, what's the large, but it's supposed to be 32. I, I mean, I think it's, yeah, the cup says 32. It's supposed to be 32. Yuli, zoom in on that and shame this business. 32? This is everything that you'll find on the menu at Dunkin' Donuts India that you will not find in the US. Here is everything you can get in a US Dunkin' Donuts you can't get in India. Let's start off with this one. It is called Choco Villa. And I think it's called that because there's a little triangle of chocolate which looks like those houses we used to draw as kids. Oh my God. Yum! It's filled with my favorite donut filling ever, which is Bavarian cream. Choco almond. Mm. It's okay. It's filled with the Bavarian cream again. With the cream, unreal. On to the next one. This is called a Chocoholic. It's got a piece of Kit Kat sticking through it. I want to see if it's one Kit Kat bar or if they've taken two and they've sandwiched them together. Let's pull from this end. Yeah, I was right. If you're a chocoholic, this is the one for you. The inside has also got chocolatey filling in there. The chocolate is starting to hit me real hard right now. This stuff is so sweet. This is called Rainbow Crunch. Oh, there's strawberry frosting on top. So this has a strawberry taste. It's okay, it's a donut. Next up, we have Cookie Delight. It's called Cookie Delight because they've taken cookie powder and smacked it on top. This one's called Crispy Crunch. For people who have trypophobia, this one is probably not for you. 
Oh my god. This ain't it. The crispy stuff on top is just not working. Again, however, they do have the Bavarian cream inside. I feel like there's a hurricane inside my body right now. Next up, we have a donut called the Jemmy. My fellow Indians will recognize that there are gems on top. This is one of the most nostalgic chocolates here in India. And I've eaten them since I was a kid. Super yum. You'd think a kid would like them, but I can't even imagine a kid version of myself liking something that's so overdosed with sweetness and chocolate. Is it Jemmy? Yes. Too Jemmy? Also yes. I'd avoid. So I thought this was all the exclusive signatures, but I've been told that there are two more. And let's start off with this one. It's called Choco Pop. It's got chocolate on top, chocolate sprinkles, chocolate wavy lime things, and it's filled with chocolate. It's very sweet. Uh. Woo! 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 <sighs> All right, and on to our last donut. This one is called the Choco Berry Bomb. That's actually quite nice. It has definitely cut the sweetness that I've experienced. There's like some berry jam inside, which is kind of tart and nice. The top is milk chocolate with shavings of white chocolate. Woo! Yeah, it's a good donut. I wouldn't order it. It's too much. All of this, I would not order any of these. They're too much. Exclusive donuts you can get in the US, you can't get in India. Now, we're filming this the first week of October. Of course, the number one flavor you get this month is pumpkin. Mmm, so pumpkin. And yeah, this tastes just like pumpkin pie. Also, you can get yourself a glazed blueberry donut. See, look at that. Glaze on top, blueberry dough on the inside. Also delicious, love it. Glazed chocolate. Figured this was everywhere, right? So good. Ooh, Boston cream. The Ben Affleck of donuts. Looks like a regular donut, doesn't it, everyone in India? But, the prize is cream on the inside. I know everyone likes donuts, maybe I haven't done it in a while, but crap, these are really good. One of my favorites. I f with these. Double chocolate, maybe my favorite, because they just did what they had to do. Take a chocolate donut and put that chocolate frosting I like right on top of it. A double thread. Oh, these are so good. I am in heaven! Nice strawberry frosting with sprinkles. You don't got this? This is like the Homer Simpson donut, right? This is the, the one that you always see me eating. Oh, the vanilla cream. Gotta say, don't think I've ever had this one before. Oh, come on. It's like Scarface over here. I'm just covered. A little, a little much. Oh, God, God. Here's some powder right here. Powdered donut. India, you don't know what this is? Come on, it's like donut number one, right? Also in the US, you can get a vanilla frosted with sprinkles and a bear claw, which they unfortunately did not have at the time of shooting this. Hang on. Oh. Munchkins? You guys ain't got munchkins? What? We have a variety of munchkin flavors, but this one specifically is the pumpkin munchkin. And mmm. Tastes just like pumpkin pie. Fantastic. Hey guys, we're now on to a different category of donuts called the all-time favorites. Uh, I took a quick hospital visit and I'm completely fine now. I'm sorry about the madness from the previous set of donuts. Um, I'm fine now. I don't know what came over me. Okay, so we'll start off with uh, this specimen over here. It's called the Cookie Cart Wheel. Adorable name and yes, it does look like a wheel. I like how they put the white stripes. Yeah, it's sweet. Next up on our list is a donut that's not intimidating at all. It's only called Death by Chocolate. Will this kill me? Probably not. But will this kill me from diabetes if I eat too much? Absolutely. And for that reason, it's a win in my book. If you thought Death by Chocolate was scary, this is Alive by Chocolate. In terms of visual differences, I can already tell this one has more of a cookie crumble on top. They're very similar as expected. I will say this one is feels more like it lifts your spirits and you feel more alive. And this one will probably put you to sleep in a coma. So death and alive, it makes sense. Mmm! 
Whoa! On to the next one. We have something called very very strawberry vanilla frosting on top. It's got some pink streaks and it looks to be stuffed with strawberry jam, which sounds amazing, especially after all this chocolate overdose. It's sweet. Oh my god, it's nice though. All right, it's time for our final donut, and this one is a bit of a boss battle. So this is a donut eclair. It's called the breakup party eclair. I guess because if you go through a breakup, this is what you end up eating. So the first few bites were quite nice. They weren't as sweet, and they didn't feel as rich. But I realized most of the chocolate is kind of centered towards the center of the eclair. And so it's a lot more decadent the closer you get. Great for breakups, great as a metaphor for what you feel when you're going through a breakup, and as a donut itself, pretty average. Both hot and cold espresso and coffee drinks in the U.S. have options for flavors you can add as flavor shots, which are unsweetened, or flavor swirls, which are sweet and creamy. Now, flavors unique to the U.S. include shots of vanilla, toasted almond, blueberry, raspberry, and coconut, and Flavor swirls, you can get French vanilla and pumpkin. So I went ahead and had each one of those swirls and shots added to one coffee right here in front of me. We'll call it the Food Wars Drinkaroo. I don't know what it is. All the flavors in one drink. The lady, when I ordered it, was like, Really? And I was like, Really? Oh, God, this is so bad. Oh, whoa. This, whoa, whoa. Oh man. It's like there's like an electric charge to it at the end. I don't quite understand. Mmm. <laughs> this is poison. Don't get it. All right, it's time for drinks. Let's start off with the cold options that we have here at Dunkin' India. Uh, the first one is a classic lemonade. Let's go ahead and try it. It looks very clear. That's nice. It's refreshing. They've not made it too sweet, and I kind of like it. Next up, we have a virgin mojito. I don't see why somebody would go to Dunkin' Donuts, get a donut, and then a virgin mojito on the side. Quick point to make, you can get them in a small bottle or you can even get them in larger options. Next up, we have two flavors of iced tea. We have lemon and peach. I'm gonna try the peach. If I had to pick one of these, this is the one I'd go for. Exclusive hot drinks here in the US. We have these three. Uh, the first one is like a specific coffee blend at Duncan called Duncan Midnights. Oh wow, that has a, that is power. That's strong. Wow, <laughs> it's like it's like really strong. I kind of love it. Moving on, you can get yourself a chai latte. India doesn't have chai lattes. What's going on, guys? Yeah, it's really good. And of course, a matcha latte. No, not matcha. I hate matcha. That's the green one, right? Beverages that taste like lawn clippings. Mm-mm. Ugh, I hate it. All right, it's now time for our milk-based cold beverages here in India. We have a range of frappes, some iced shaken coffees. Let's start with the frappes coffee, caramel, and hazelnut. And they have a seasonal flavor, which is Alfonso mango. If you've not heard of the Alfonso variety of mangoes, it grows all over here in India. And it is the king of mangoes. You have to try it if you get a chance. I'm gonna start off with this one because I love mango flavored anything. It's not bad. Next up, we have some shaken iced coffees uh, in three flavors, caramel, classic, and hazelnut. Also the classic flavored uh, shaken iced coffee. It's not as sweet and I want to put this one on a pedestal. <sighs> Thank you. Okay, next up, they also sell a iced mocha and an iced latte. It's time for the chocolate milkshake and can I just say it looks decadent. It's quite thick. Um, it's kind of grainy. Like you can taste the graininess of the chocolate, which I like, but I don't know if some, some people might not like that. Some people might like really smooth chocolate milkshakes. Okay, so if you're traveling to India and you must eat at Dunkin', I would recommend you have the Alfonso mango frappe if it's in season. But I would also say don't go to Dunkin', go to any juice shop. You find them all across India and they take fresh mangoes and they'll make you a mango milkshake that will blow your mind. They'll put actual pieces of Alfonso pulp in there and you'll chew on it while you drink your milkshake. 
God sends. So they, they made these two hours ago. I'm sorry. Assume they don't look like this. Anyway, we have these cold drinks in the US. They're called refreshers. They're actually pretty good, surprisingly. Starting down here, we have the strawberry dragon fruit. I am such a child. It's spelled S-T-R-A-W-D-R-G-N-F-R-T. And all I could think of was dragon fart. Well, that's actually pretty good. Peach passion fruit. <laughs> F-R-T. I keep thinking fart. I'm such a child. Whoa. Blech. What the hell? I think all the syrup like went to the bottom. It's like way stronger than it should be. Yeah, because up top it's really weak. Somewhere in between there's a good sip, but I didn't find it. Anyway, all right. Peach passion fruit coconut. Yeah. Oh, but this is, is that cool? Does that work? Okay. Uh, no. Oh, gross. Yeah, the, the coconut ones are bad. Keeping it up on the cool drinks, you get yourself a frozen coffee, a frozen matcha latte, a frozen chocolate, and of course, the culottes. Wait, frozen hot chocolate? Isn't that just chocolate milk? Oh man, that is strong. That is a milkshake. Yo! It's not terrible. It's this, the flavor is very strong. This is a, apparently the, uh, a blue raspberry. I think they have other flavors, but. Once upon a time, I worked at a movie theater. Yes, really. And we figured out a way to get into the syrup box because Fountain Drinks had syrup and soda water at the same time and mixes right when you pour it in. It was like a really dark color and we dared each other to drink it. I remember it was so powerful. I thought I was gonna throw up and I'd never experienced anything like that powerful flavored until today. Surprise, surprise, Dunkin' Donuts also serves chai. Uh, so you have two flavors, this is ginger chai and we have elaichi chai. Uh, elaichi is cardamom. Ginger in Hindi is adrak. And it's just such a beautiful word to say. Oh my God, adrak ki chai. Oof, they've gone heavy on the ginger for sure. As advertised, these do taste like elaichi, which is cardamom and ginger. Yeah, they don't quite have the, the, the soul of a chai that you get on the roadside. But I really love how Duncan has tried to do this makes you feel a little bit more at home. So thank you, Duncan. Sandwiches and wraps and bagels and breakfast stuff. Oh my. Get a good look, India. We have a huge selection of non-donut-y breakfast uh, sandwiches, variety stuff you can get. Oh man, I hit a wall and I apologize. And I'm back. You can get yourself maple sugar bacon breakfast sandwich. We have these wake up wraps and wake up wraps are, I don't know, really phoned in breakfast tacos. I don't know how else to describe it. It's a tortilla. They put the stuff they already had for the other sandwiches in there. They fold it over. I'll just grab one. You can get yourself one and oh man, this thing is like. Hey, everyone watching this video in the comments, let me know. I show you this and then when I open it, are you more likely to eat this or less likely? Let me know in the comments. Duncan, nobody wants these. You can get yourself a tomato pesto grilled cheese. Pesto's fine and all, but when something has pesto on it, you don't realize it. Doesn't this look like, like, look at this green. Does that look like, would you go, oh, it's pesto? Or would you be like, oh, I think it's moldy. You also got the grilled cheese. Oh. <laughs> then you get yourself the sourdough breakfast sandwich. Yo, these things, so, solidified, probably edible a few hours ago. I'll, I'll, I'll take a bite of this. Sausage, egg, and cheese. No, yeah, not bad. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Somewhere encased in this melted cheese is bacon, I assure you. There's also a turkey sausage, egg, and cheese somewhere. Oh, you can also get bagels at your Dunkin' Donuts. Why, I don't know. But you can get bagels plain, cinnamon raisin, multigrain, Sesame seed, and this one, everything. And you get yourself some cream cheeses, including garden veggie, strawberry, and plain. Also, you can get an avocado spread, which they did not include. Duncan! India, you're not gonna believe this. Our Dunkin' Donuts, you can get a side of, <laughs> you can get a side of something called snack and bacon. What's snack and bacon, you ask? It is a bag of bacon, bagel minis. You can get plain and everything bagels. Here's one right now. I think these have cream cheese inside of them. Yeah. 
I don't think I've ever had one of these before. That's not a bad idea. Not bad, guys. Also in the US, you get an order of hash browns. Now at Dunkin' Donuts, apparently, you get these, what are we calling these? Omelet bites? Uh, you get bacon, egg, and cheese, or egg white and veggie. Come on. You, this is straight taken from, from uh, Starbucks, right? We went to the Dunkin' India website, and over there, on the menu, they claim to sell burgers and a few sides like nachos. However, we went to the outlets, and the manager said that they're phasing out all savory food in Dunkin' nationally. But he was kind enough to make us one single non-veg burger, just so that we get to taste what it would have been like. It has a whole chicken piece in there, which is already kind of nice. Some onions, what looks like tandoori mayo, and the bun looks pretty tasty. Oh my God, that's actually really good. I've done many episodes of Food Wars, tasted many burgers from restaurants that are literally burger joints, and this literally rivals those burgers. This is pretty good. What's happening, Duncan? Okay, so the fact is that Duncan has actually scaled down massively here in India. In Bangalore, where we're filming, there used to be 20 Dunkin' Donut outlets. Now there are only three. So rumor has it that Dunkin' might be phasing out of India in general, and the decision is going to be made in the coming weeks. So maybe this video is the last remaining legacy of Dunkin' in India. And this is probably the last burger that has ever eaten. Oh, dude, this might be the... Guys, this might be the last burger ever consumed from Dunkin' Donuts here in India. Okay, let's talk price. This large Americano is Rs. 139, which is currently 1.71 US dollars. But keep in mind, at the time that we're filming this, the Indian rupee is at an all-time low. So hopefully things will get better and this won't cost so much. That same drink in the US is $3.69 or 293.44 rupees. That's a 63.9% increase in price. Okay, so the biggest menu item that we have here in India is our box of six. Now you can get two categories. You can get classic donuts, which are a lot simpler and it'll cost you rupees 399. Or you can get the favorites donuts, which we have here, which are a lot more extravagant and will cost you rupees 499, which amounts to USD 6.12 right now. If you want 12 donuts, you need to get two boxes of six, which will cost you rupees 998. For food, our biggest menu item is a dozen donuts. $18.73 or 1,492.85 rupees. Thank you. Our biggest drink is the box of Joe Avella. It's the most expensive single menu item, $27.48 or 2,190.25 rupees. Now in India, we have something called a vada, which is pretty much a, a donut, but it's savory and it's fried. And I want to say that those cost around 20 rupees, while this original glazed that I've bitten into a few times costs 85 rupees. So it's important to note this price difference and people here will definitely think about that before buying something like this. Nikhil, stop eating the props. Okay, so Dunkin' Donuts India has not released any of their nutritional info out for the public and they've not gotten back to us when we asked them for information as of now. However, I can confirm that one donut is probably less nutritious than one salad. Let's talk about Dunkin' US nutrition, starting with the glazed donut. In the US, it has 360 calories, 22 grams of fat, 10 grams of saturated fat, 420 milligrams of sodium, 420, 39 grams of carbs, and 18 grams of sugar. And let's compare that donut oh, to this one, the Boston Cream in the USA. A Boston Cream is 270 calories, 11 grams of fat, 320 milligrams of sodium, 39 grams of carbs, and 18 grams of sugar. A Dunkin' Donuts Large Ice Dunkin' Dark Roast Coffee with cream and sugar in the US is 260 calories, 12 grams of fat, and 37 grams of carbs. Now, assuming that the iced coffee is the same in the US and India, getting a large iced coffee with cream and sugar and both the glazed and a Boston cream donut is 890 calories. That's 35.6% of your daily calorie intake. Yo! Again, Dunkin' Donuts has not released any of their ingredients to the public. However, there is one huge difference between the US and Indian donuts, and that is that the Indian donuts are all eggless. 
This is because a huge percentage of Indians are vegetarian, especially Hindus, and so they even consider eating egg as non-veg food. And so, yeah, most fast food restaurants have decided to not use egg in any of their foods to make it more accessible to a larger part of India. But the US does have it out of sight, so I will share with you the ingredients right now. First up, the coffee. Regardless if you're getting it hot or cold, if you get it black, it's going to be 100% Arabica coffee. Nice. Now, if you want to add cream and sugar to it, then you are adding milk, cream, to sodium phosphate as a stabilizer, sodium citrate as a stabilizer, and sugar. If you're going to be adding flavor to your coffee drink, one flavor you can get in both India and the US is caramel. And in the US, our caramel flavor is made up of all this. In the US, our standard glazed donut is made up of all of these things. You think that's a lot? Here's everything in our Boston cream donuts. Yikes, that's a lot of words. From calorie count to portion size, we want to find out all the differences between Lay's chips in the US and in India. This is Food Wars. Here are all the Lay's chips you'll find in India that you won't find in the US. And here are all the Lay's chips in the US you can't find in India. Oh my good god, yeah! To begin things, I'm gonna go with the one I hate the most, Spanish tomato tango. Yeah, I've just never really liked this flavor. It's just too heavy on the tomato side. No, oh man, that aftertaste is... Horrible. I have nothing nice to say about this flavor. Also, just to note, our standard lace chips come in the ridge style. We do also sell the flat style, but that's more of a special variety of lace. Next, it's West Indies hot and sweet chili, formerly Caribbean hot and sweet chili. That's what I'm talking about. Get out of here. And now, for the Maharaja of Indian lays, Magic Masala. If you haven't heard of this, you must be living under a rock because this is the little emperor of chips, commonly known as Blue Lays. Look at this chip, dude! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! It's already so spicy! The reason this chip has become so popular in India is because they have actually managed to capture the masala of India so well. And masala, if you're wondering, is like ground-up spices that are added to every single dish we eat here. This is truly magic. I want to know what they're like. Joe got himself some. Oh, man. And the chip bags in India are like much harder to open. Oh, man. You guys got them locked up tight. I got a rip. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn, these are good. Not too spicy. Great flavor. We have so many flavors. I couldn't get them all for the shoot. I mean, I'll just start right here. Barbecue. This is like the classic chip. I think this is more popular than the classic, to be honest. The US has, I would say, at least 10 different variations of barbecue, possibly more. So I have just like standard barbecue is. Pretty bold move by Lay's. Salt and vinegar. Love salt and vinegar so much. I love it so much. Top chip. Top chip right here. Love salt and vinegar. Cheddar and sour cream. Ha ha ha. Lamon. Another favorite. Oh man. It seems like lime flavored chips would be weird or citrusy chips, but so good. And these are like really limey. All the super fans watching know I do not like pickles. No. I might kick it up a notch. Flaming hot dill pickle. And the flaming hot, that font, that implies that's like flaming hot Cheetos, right? Mmm, better, still not that good. <laughs> Last in this uh, group is a chili limon. Yeah, these are coming home with me. Other flavors in this category that I couldn't get the time of filming. Cheddar jalapeno and sweet southern heat barbecue. I was totally able to buy them online. I get a thing in the mail two days ago saying the post office is holding them ransom and wants five more dollars for postage for me to pick it up. Not happening. I will not be intimidated by the United States Post Office and keep the chips, all right? Also, what I couldn't get at the time of filming was honey barbecue, Chesapeake Bay crab spice, adobas, which is a different spicy chip, which is actually very good. I was bummed I couldn't get those. And the Doritos Cool Ranch Lays, unfortunately. Let's now talk about two exclusive flavors that are in both countries, but slightly different. We have uh, the Sizzling Hot Lays and the American-style cream and onion. It was previously known as American sour cream and onion. 
it's great no fuss one of my favorite flavors it's been there for like over two decades i feel in india and there's a reason for that ours is just regular sour cream and onion i also got american style sour cream and onion from india and then one after the other the flavor on these are much stronger and even says now with more flavor, this is more flavor. I gotta say, I like these uh, India ones better. Up next, we have Sizzlin' Hot. This is a flavor I've actually never had. I'm very excited to see how it stacks compared to Magic Masala, which is already pretty spicy. Whoa. Yo, look at this chip. It's literally red. Not really, oh. Nice. It's not as much a direct heat as the Magic Masala. Hey, it's a nice flavor. In the US, we have Flaming Hot flavor. Now let me explain. This is Flaming Hot kettle chips. Couldn't get the regular Flaming Hot. We'll get into kettle chips later. It's like regular spice as a heat to it without being too specific. I think they use, use red chilies right here. It packs a nice punch without being too overwhelming with the flavor. It's like the perfect amount of heat without getting too overwhelming, so. Okay, so we don't only have ridge style chips, we also have some flat ones. In fact, they're called wafer style, which I think is pretty much your classic style of Lay's. The first flavor is salt with pepper, not salt and pepper. Don't you dare say that. It's very nice. I should buy this more often. I've never tried this before. Very good job. Okay, on to the next wafer style chip. We have sun-dried chili. Mmm, I love sun-dried anything. Beam that sun ray onto any vegetable, I will eat it. Oh, damn. This is really good. They smashed it with this one. Got a proper kick as well. Oh, it's really yum. And one of the most beautiful sights you'll see in India is people sun drying their own chilies on their roofs, porches, wherever. Biryanis, curries, they all use sun dried chili. And this chips packet really has nailed this flavor. Maybe my favorite, kettle cooked. We already saw the flaming Hot kettle cooked. These are thicker chip. They transport a lot better, obviously, than Esme broken. Got more like a, a potato taste to it, a potato snap. It's like, I love kettle chips. Sea salt, cracked pepper. These are so good. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, look at Mmm. Mmm. Sea salt and vinegar. This ain't your pond salt. This ain't your lake salt. This certainly is not your fjord salt. Why is salt and vinegar so good? Attention everyone, my favorite kettle chip is about to be eaten by me. The jalapeno kettle chips. I'm not gonna talk about Miss Vicky's because this isn't a Miss Vicky's video. And I hate to say it, these might be better. So got the jalapeno flavor in there. It's not too spicy, so you can really chow down on these. Moving on, unfortunately, to something that I kind of can't stand are baked. Wah, wah. You get them in original and you get them in barbecue. Like eating cardboard. Lay's has something called the Better For You series. So we have these and then lightly salted barbecue, lightly salted wavy. I mean, I want the salt, but like how much? This is what paper tastes like. We got simply sea salt thick cut. And you can also get the Simply Barbecue Thick Cut. They have something called layers, which are these guys. Bite-sized layers, crispy layers, tasty layers. You get them in three cheese, sour cream and onion. I've never seen this before in my entire life. Oh, the bad stinks. Oh, these are, these are really bad. These are terrible. Whoa, these are real chemically tasting. Oh my God, these taste like they were poisoned. And now for our next range of exclusive chips, we have Lay's Mac. That's max with two X's. Why the two X's? That's like saying it's more better. I've not seen or tasted these before. Starting with macho chili flavor. It is kind of ridged, but I would say it's more wavy. I wouldn't say it's super spicy. I kind of like that this one doesn't leave that burning sensation in your throat. It's really nice. Yeah, I, I don't know about the branding, but I really like this flavor. Next flavor, peppery cheddar. Whoa, all sorts of stuff happening here. There's like some mint to it. Oh, you know what this tastes like? This tastes like malai tikka, like chicken malai tikka dipped in pudina chutney. This is very unique. 
Our next flavor is sizzling barbecue. Oh, the reason this is called Lay's Max, it's because it has max crunch, max flavor, and max taste. And I can wholeheartedly say both of these have delivered. Mmm. It even smells strongly of barbecue. So these work. They're great. More fun chip styles. I think we can call these the India style, but we also call them the wavy style. They are wavy, hence the name, and you can get them in original, reduced fat, honey barbecue, ranch, and you also get them in uh, salt and pepper, lightly salted, fat, low fat, if I didn't say that already. Like, the waves are like wider. You guys have like really like condensed waves. Lay's apparently wanted to answer the age old question, how can we copy something popular and make it much, much worse? And stacks were invented. You guys know what Pringles are, right? Of course you do. Well, hear that? Well, put them in a tube, they won't break as easily, right? Holy fuck. Look at this. So what was the point of putting in this tube? I hate this so much, but to really prove my point, yo dog, look what I got. By the way, paper tube, excellent idea. Dave Pringle, whatever your name is. <laughs> Stacks. And now to our final set of exclusives, the gourmet collection. I have had a lot of gourmet food in my life and I've very rarely been actually impressed with the food. Vontos cheese and paprika. <laughs> Vintage cheese and paprika. Oh. If I had to taste this chip without any of the fancy packaging, I don't think gourmet is the first word that would come to my head. Thai sweet chili gourmet. This literally tastes like the West Indies hot and chili, but on a flat chip. So gourmet is just packaging. That's what we've learned from this experiment with these two chips. Skippable. In addition to that, we also have Lay's Poppables. Poppables come in sea salt and vinegar, sea... Oh, Julius Pringle, that was his name, not Dave. They also have poppable sea salt and vinegar, poppable sea salt, poppable white cheddar, and poppable honey barbecue. Okay, I don't wanna eat all these. What's the, what's the cereal that looks like this? Is it Chex? If you got these on accident, eat them, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't reach for these over regular potato chips. Here in India, our Lay's chips packets come in five sizes. There's 30 grams, 50 grams, 73 grams, 104 grams, and 174 grams. The big boy, the party pack. I feel like I could eat this whole thing on my own, to be honest. In the US, our lace chips come in six variety of sizes. All the way down here, get the 28 gram bag, which comes in the multi-pack. Next up, 74.4 gram bag. In the middle here, there's also an elusive 78 gram bag. Look, I saw it on target.com and walmart.com. It exists, it just wasn't available anywhere in Southern California. I looked, okay? One step up, we have what I think is the classic grocery store bag, 226 gram, AKA the eight ounce bag. You've seen it a million times, this is the one. Right next to that one is the family size bag, which I also couldn't get a hold of. 297.6 gram bag. I couldn't find it because the American family is dead. But what is alive and well is of course our biggest size, the party size. 368 grams for all you familyless partiers. Lay's has you covered. That means that the biggest bag in the US is this much larger than the biggest bag in India. But wait, there's more or less depending on the packet that you get. Because according to Amazon, the weights of these different packets might vary. So they're given a weight range. The biggest weight difference is in our largest pack of 174 to 190 grams, which is a difference of 16 grams. So let's see how much we get in one packet. Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo! 175 grams, one gram extra from what is advertised, which is, I'll take it. So let me show you what 16 grams of chips looks like so you can see what you're potentially missing out on. It doesn't seem like a lot, but I think that's quite a substantial amount of chips you're missing out on. To be fair, they, they did write 174 grams only on the pack. In the US, our flavor bags weigh less than the original flavor bag. Take this barbecue flavored Lay's bag. 
It weighs 7.75 ounces, or seven and three-fourths ounces. Yuli, can we get in there? You see that? Thank you. Compared to the eight ounce you get with the original bag. Okay, same price, less product. Now, Harry did research on that episode, so take it away, Harry. What? No, do your own research. According to Harry's research from the last Lay's episode back in 2014, PepsiCo claimed the reason that there is a slightly higher price per ounce for flavor chips is the added seasoning. So then, Lay's, can you explain to me why this lightly salted bag gives you fewer chips than the original bag? It's more money, but less salt, eh, Lay's? Check it out. The lightly salted, so less salted than this, also seven and three fourths. While we're exposing potential Lay's lies, this 28 gram bag in the US supposedly contains 15 chips, according to the Lay's website. Let's see how accurate this is. And I'm gonna count all the chips in this 30 gram packet to see how many we have. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't contain one whole chip. One. 12. 13. I mean, if we're doing it by chip related piles, 6, 12, 8, then close to 18 chips per bag. Huh, all right, I'll concede. Cool, so that's 24 chips. I would say realistically, this is like 20 chips that have been broken into many other pieces. But let's be real, they could have fit a lot more chips into this packet, and Lay's is notorious for filling it with air. It's actually nitrogen gas, which helps preserve the chips and also acts as a cushion to stop them from getting smashed in transit. I mean, what would it have been like without the cushion? This whole bag would have been dust, apparently. But what is the air to chip ratio, you ask? Let's find out in a new segment I like to call the R. Chipmides Principle. <laughs> Can I just say this is one of the weirdest things I've done in my life. A generous 55 ml of chips in this packet. Now let's measure how much the packet itself can hold in volume. Let's go. Oh, this smells so bad. 900 ml. That's 845 ml of chips that we could have had, Lays. I feel cheated. So I think to make it more accurate, let's do four, and then we'll fill this guy up, and then we'll divide by four, and that would give us the average of those. Does that make sense? Dust. Uh -huh. All right. Oh, man, all right. Can I please have the scientific chip crunching Nunchucks, throw them. Ah, whoa! Look out, chips. Pow, pow, pow. 2.75 fluid ounces per bag. Now that's science you can use. So now we're gonna fill this with water. Oh, the whole thing's 20. We're just gonna 2.75, 17.25 units or whatever cubic fluid ounces. Even more interesting air information, because of India's varied geography, the amount of air that's packed into these packets is different for different altitudes. For example, uh, in cities of higher altitude like Leh in the Himalayas, there is the risk of these packets exploding due to the low atmospheric pressure. And so when they're sent there, they're sent with no air at all inside of them. And so they run the risk of being crushed in transport. So they have to be taken as delicately as a crate of eggs. But what about price? This is our largest chips packet, the 174 grams, and on Swiggy and Amazon, this sells for about 78 rupees, which is about a dollar right now. And that equals rupees 0.44 per gram, about 0.005 dollars. And yes, I did all of that math and conversion in my head. Here in the US, if we break it down, starting with this big bag, the 226.8 gram, AKA eight ounce bag, it's $3.99 at Target, or 316.58 rupees. Yes, it's a bigger bag, I know. So, breaking it down per gram, we found that in the US, the cost is a 260% increase compared to India. While we do enjoy our Lay's chips, we also have a giant chip culture here in uh, India. In fact, these are called hot chips and they're sold all across India at stalls called hot chip stalls, where basically they have a giant frying pan and they cut the potato in front of you to these thin slices and fry it and give it to you nice, hot, hot, fresh, fresh. And so for 174 grams, which is the same as this, you're paying rupees 45 for a lot fresher 
chips. So as you can see, Lay's is competing against a giant chip market here in India and doing pretty well, I would say. Now for the burning question, are there any questionable ingredients that are in your Lay's chips that you need to watch out for? Fret not because Joe and I have found them out for you. As far as the basic salted version goes, you're totally fine. Both in India and the US, they're made of potatoes, vegetable oil, salt. Warning, warning alert. Here in India, some of our flavors have an ingredient called potassium chloride. In regular doses, this is completely safe and it's a low sodium alternative to salt. However, it's also one of the three ingredients used in the three drug cocktail for lethal injections. Too much potassium chloride will cause irregular heartbeats and boom, your heart will stop. So if you've been thinking of doing a Lay's mukbang, be careful. We don't have any of that in the US Lay's, but we do have food coloring, caramel color in our barbecue and honey barbecue chips. Certain types of caramel color can contain a byproduct called 4-ME uppercase I. Studies found that it caused cancer in rats and mice, leading campaigns in support of banning it from foods. Give me that dancing rat. All right. The FDA was like, nah, it's fine. Humans don't come close to the level of exposure that caused that rat tumors. But that didn't stop the state of California, adding it to its Proposition 65 list of chemicals, quote, known to the state of California to cause cancer or reproductive toxicity, end quote. Ooh. Another ingredient found in several varieties of lace chips here in India is disodium glutamate, AKA Flavor Enhancer 69. No, not 69. <laughs> Flavor Enhancer 627. But basically, it's used alongside MSG to enhance the flavor of the chips. Both the Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, in the United States and the European Food Safety Authority, or the EFSA, consider disodium glutamate safe. But it's not recommended for babies, children, pregnant women, and lactating mothers, and also should be avoided by asthmatics or people suffering from gout. MSG, if you're wondering, is the commonly misunderstood uh, ingredient known as monosodium glutamate, which is added to a lot of Asian cuisine and gives it that umami flavor. In 2019, Lay's sued a bunch of Indian farmers for growing a certain variety of potato, FC5 variety, saying it has a patent on that variety. This type of potato is ideal for snack chips as it has a lower moisture content. But strike one up for the little guy. Farmers' rights activists petitioned the Protection of the Plant Varieties and Farmers' Rights Authority, and it agreed PepsiCo, Lay's, cannot claim a patent over a seed variety. It was revoked immediately, and the Indian potato farmers are now flush with low moisture potato money. Let's go! So which country has the unhealthiest chips? Let's compare the classics first. A 28 gram bag of classic Lay's in the US contains 160 calories, uh, 10 grams of total fat, 1.5 grams of saturated fat, 15 grams of carbs, and 170 milligrams of sodium. Okay, so our Lay's nutrition is per 100 grams, so I did a little bit of math to compare it to the US 28 grams. Actually, Joe did the math, so if the math is wrong, blame Joe. Okay, so we have 154.8 calories, total fat 9.8 grams, of which saturates are 3.7 grams, Carbs are 14.7 grams and sodium, 142.8 milligrams. Wow, that was pretty close actually. We're under the US in every metric except for saturated fats where we are over 164%. And I think that's because we use palmolin oil to fry our chips and it's very high in saturated fats, unlike the US vegetable oil. What about the least healthiest chip in each country? Over here, there are a lot of them that are tied to 160 calories per 28 gram bag. Show list. But we did find that the 160 calorie chips with the highest fat content are these. No, the cheddar and sour cream. I love these guys. Making them the least healthy. If I did have a bag that small, it would contain all of this. And uh, here in India, our highest calorific chip is Classic salted. How lame. How is this the most calorific chip we sell here, Lays? If I had to run an extra mile, it wouldn't be for classic salted. So you know what the next most calorific chip is? Magic Masala, baby. Blue Lays. We had to end with this one. Super calorific. I don't know why I'm proud of that, but uh, good. Great to know that this is and forever will be the Maharaja of Lays.
From calorie count to portion size, we want to find out all the differences between Taco Bell in India and the US. This is Food Wars. Here in India, our typical tacos come in orders of one, two in a two taco meal with fries and a drink, three taco trio combo which comes with nachos and a drink, or on weekends, they have a special offer where you can get eight tacos in their weekend taco party extra. What is it called? What is it called? Taco taco eight weekend party pack taco. Eight taco weekend party pack. Have a party with your friends. Only if there are eight of them, and they all are okay with having just one taco. In the U.S., our standard Taco Bell tacos come in orders of one, three with a drink, and the twelve taco box. Twelve tacos, one box. How you doing? Here in India, our classic burrito is six and a half centimeters or six and a half inches. Our U.S. burrito is five inches across. In terms of girth, this is the first time I've measured the girth of anything. Promise. Seven inches. Also about five inches. And that's what matters most. Okay, now to measure the weight of our classic burrito. Damn! This is a big boy. Two hundred and ninety-one grams. One hundred and eighty-five grams. Our classic quesadilla is just shy of 11 inches. 10 inches. And as for weight, boop, 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 boop. and it weighs 174 grams. 202 grams. At an Indian Taco Bell, the largest item we have on our menu is the aforementioned weekend eight taco party picnic popping. What the f is this thing? Eight taco weekend party pack, and it's always a party. So the vegetarian version is 499 rupees and the non-vegetarian version is 599 rupees. In the US, our biggest menu item is a Supreme Variety Taco Party Pack. It is 12 Supreme Tacos and it runs $21.99 or 1,751.65 Indian rupee. Here's everything you'll find at a Taco Bell in India that you will not find in the US. And here is everything at a US Taco Bell you can't find in India. Let's taco about it. Here in India, all of the tacos have a vegetarian option. This is because even though India is a primarily non-vegetarian country, we have a huge population of vegetarians or people who have different preferences of what kind of meat they like to eat. And so it's great for most of these fast food chains to have a lot of veg options. All of them have the option of either pinto beans, fajita veggies, or Mexican paneer. And they're also in increasing order of spice. The cheesy double-decker taco. Honestly, I actually really like this taco. I know it's sacrilege for some people to eat a soft shell and a hard shell taco together. But when you parcel this stuff and get it delivered to you, both the tacos become soft shell. Really yum. All right, the next taco I'm gonna eat is a crunchy taco, plain and simple. It's got pinto beans in it. It's unfair to like diss on a crunchy taco after you've ordered it from a restaurant that's far away because look at this, it's become soggy already. So I'm gonna be gentle on my criticism of this. But you, you soft shell tacos are getting it, huh? Just do some decent crunch to it. Here in India, pinto beans are what we call rajma and they're a staple. We love our rajma. So it's a perfect match to put them in a taco. Next up, another crunchy taco. This one is the Mexican paneer. Now paneer, if you're unaware, is cottage cheese. We make it all over here in India. We basically take curdle milk, add some sort of fruit or vegetable acid to it, like lemon juice, and you get cottage cheese, which is paneer. I'm curious to know what makes this Mexican. Paneer is one of the most popular things you'll find in India at any restaurant. This paneer tastes chalky, like most processed paneer that you'd store in a freezer would. If you prefer your paneer chunky, you might enjoy this, me not so much. Now on to the soft shell tacos. Uh, this one is Mexican paneer, the same thing I just had. This Mexican paneer is a little bit more spicy. My favorite thing about tacos is that not every bite is uniform, so you get a lot of different textures and flavors in each bite you take. And I guess that's proving its point over here. Okay, so the next one we're gonna try is a soft taco with fajita veggies inside. I'm opting out of the fajita veggies as a filling in general. And finally, we have our last veggie option, which is a veggie fiesta, which has tater tots. Win, that's a win. 
if I was going to Taco Bell, I had to order a veggie taco for some reason. My option would be a crunchy pinto bean taco. And now for our non-vegetarian tacos, please note that all of the meat in our tacos is chicken and not beef. This is because we have a huge percentage of Hindus here in India and they do not eat beef. This makes all of our non-veg tacos exclusives. Because yes, in the US, you can substitute your beef for chicken, but it's not on the official menu, all right? It's a modification, which means these are more exclusives to India. Okay, so you have two options of filling, either Mexican chicken or grilled chicken. We're starting off with a grilled chicken crunchy taco, which has severely disintegrated. Not bad, this is also kind of the test of Taco Bell's uh, structural integrity. Pretty good. That's a win for me. What else do you want, Taco Bell? This taco, though, has seen better times. It kind of reminds me of like a Rajma Chawal. Like when you're chewing on a Rajma Chawal, that's how soft the chicken is. There are a lot of comparisons you can make with uh, Mexican and Indian food. We have something exactly like this in India. It's called a chapati and it's made out of wheat. The tortillas in Mexico are typically made with corn. The one in Taco Bell is made out of maida, which is all-purpose flour. I can't speak for Mexican cuisine, but there's definitely a lot of Indian flavors in this. This is actually a soft grilled chicken taco and I can wholeheartedly say worst of the bunch. Don't get this one. A cheese double decker taco with grilled chicken again. Come on man, I wanted the Mexican one but the hard shell taco is disintegrating into a soft shell taco. There's nothing special. Chicken fiesta taco. Oh my god. I didn't expect that at all. I've just been chewing for so long, I'm so tired. Oh damn, the aftertaste of this is really good. There's a lot of nice spice to it. Now we have a very special taco. As you can see, this one is still wrapped because I've never seen this in my life. It's called a naked chicken taco. Pause for a moment. What do you think that means? Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, the naked chicken taco. <laughs> Genuinely feels like I just undressed food. So there's no chicken filling inside it because the chicken is the taco. That's right, that's how far we've come as the human race. We have taken this bird and turned it into a freaking pancake and folded it over cheese. So your scientists were too busy trying to figure out whether they could do it. They didn't stop to think whether they should do it. I think that might be one of the worst things I've had on this show. Oh God, oh God. I'm gonna be honest, it actually looks pretty good to me. That reminds me of the KFC Double Down, which I did actually enjoy. I'd try it. Starting off, soft taco and soft taco supreme, which is beef, flimsiest thing in the world. This stuff is, oh, this stuff is sweating already. So I don't know how many vegetarians are watching now, but look at what you're missing. I think I just created a few vegetarians. I mean, I like how they taste, but I mean, Taco Bell's got so much fun stuff on the menu. What are you doing eating regular tacos? Like, get out of here. Crunchy taco, which we saw earlier. Fantastic. Even a little more stuff in it. The, the beef supreme taco. It really loaded up with the veggies. India, India, India. Look at me. This is my favorite thing in the Taco Bell menu. I sing its phrases at every Taco Bell food wars. It is the nacho cheese, Doritos, Locos, Tacos. Some genius somewhere connected Taco Bell and Doritos to make a hard shell taco that is in fact a Doritos shell. Mmm, comes in standard and of course, Supreme. This is, I've been looking forward to this all day. It's burrito time, baby! I've got a Mexican paneer version here, as well as a pinto beans version. I think I'll go with the pinto beans one. By the way, this tray is all of the vegetarian burritos, and this is the non-vegetarian tray. Happy baby! India has a lot of roll culture. We have kati rolls, we have uh, Kolkata rolls, we also have shawarmas, which we are a huge fan of. Most Indians, this basically will feel like you took rajma rice, and you shoved it inside a maida roti. I think I'd go with the taco over this. Next up, we have tikka masala. But I found this out recently. It was actually invented by the British. So clearly inspired by India, but invented by them. Another thing that the British took from us that we haven't been paid back for. We have a flavor here, which is called achari. And it's basically like a pickle. This is more achari than chicken tikka masala yi. Also, I, I would be lying if I didn't admit that Taco Bell, it's, all, it's already doing its thing to my digestive system. Taco Bell is notorious for making you go to the bathroom. Zoom in to my stomach right now and just listen to the, the noises. And let, let's get a translation. Oh my God! And now for sriracha wedge. 
burrito is now running the risk of offending three different cultures. I don't normally eat a burrito by ripping it in half. Actually, that sounds awesome. We should do that more often, like a double-handed. Don't clip that. Hmm. You can skip it. We have the seven-layer burrito. This one tastes like all of these put together. And we have one last veg wrap. Ah, guys, I can't do this. It's the same thing. It's just tater tots, that same filling. I bow down and defeat Taco Bell. You have vanquished me. Moving on to the non-vegetarian burritos and we're hoping some of these are a little more distinct from the others. All right, we have a classic Mexican chicken burrito. This is so bad, this is damn bad. Let's just say I'm glad you didn't call yourself burrito bowl. Next up, tikka masala, but now in non-vich. This is actually quite good. This one doesn't taste as dry as the other ones I've had. And of course, we have the seven layer non-vegetarian burrito. Instead of paneer, we have grilled chicken. Let's just do the slap test again. Oof. Yeah, you could really hurt somebody with this seven layer one. Okay, we have one last burrito, which is... Why? What is this? This is not... Why have we done this? This burrito looks like the, the love child of all other burritos over here. These burritos are definitely related and this is the product of incest. Wow, it's actually not that bad. Honestly, out of all of these, I'd prefer to finish this one because it's just smaller. <laughs> the pain will end faster. Burritos might not be visually the most exciting part of the video, but please don't leave. Maybe just open some clips of Family Guy next to it so you watch that and this like you're on TikTok. The double steak grilled cheese burrito and the spicy double steak grilled cheese burrito. And right, it's grilled cheese because they like grill it shut with cheese. Genius idea. Yeah, look at that, it has jalapenos on it. Oh, that's fantastic. That's a really great idea. Oh, yeah, this rules. A beefy quesarito. When these things cool off though, it's just a lot of cheese in there. Oh, and it has uh, rice in it. Well, burritos have rice. I don't know why I'm so surprised by that. Rice on a burrito. Same thing, but with black beans. I mean, it's already kind of, they're kind of like dripping out there already. It's grilled number one. Beans and cheese in there, you see that? And the red is uh, those like chips. They put those crispy chips in there. Five layer burrito. It used to be seven layer. Took out two layers and added a beefy one for some weird reason. I assure you there's five layers and beef inside this. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not some weird fetish that on the internet that I'm not aware of slapping faces with burritos. Burrito Supreme. Look, it's so much different from the last thing we were just looking at. But like that one's just like. CK Chipotle chicken. Yeah, Chipotle mail's legit. And an extra one, if anyone wants it, go ahead and comment below and I'll mail it to you. Beefy melt? Beef and melted cheese. I can't believe it. Together at last. I mean, it tastes like all the other ones. I feel like we could pare this menu down a little bit. Last and not least, cheesy bean and rice. Now for India's specialities. I am excited for the diversity. That's all I'll say. Very representative of our country. Let's start off with the chalupa. The humble chalupa is nice. If you guys are at home wondering what the difference between a normal taco and a chalupa is, you should Google it. What is this, I an mean, education show? I'm just here to eat, man. For my Indian brethren, it's kind of the difference between a chapati and like a batura. They actually fry it a little bit. Mm. But that was a very horrible place to bite because I only got chicken. I have a soft spot for the chalupa and it gets my approval. We have the wedge star wrap. Voila! So inventive. Let's take a burrito but make it flat. Oh, wow. Don't make me eat this inside of it. Please. Oh! I'm coming from a country where we're used to eating something like this, a, a chapati with a sabzi on the side, which is like a curry, which has vegetables and fresh paneer and maybe some chicken. So to eat something like this just feels, not even subpar, it just feels wrong. I'm actually curious to know if uh, any Mexicans watching this video can let me know in the comments whether you feel like Taco Bell has done justice to representing your cuisine in any way. Next up, we have a chick star. Round of applause. I'm just gonna keep this UFO of man's worst accomplishment over here. Quesadilla fajita veg. Very thin. I'm curious to know how they fit a lot of fajita ve veggies into it. They haven't. How do people do this? My God. I just realized, Joe is insane. How have you eaten so much Taco Bell, Joe? Yeah, I'm insane. I lost my mind somewhere during the Japan season. Oh well. And it's strange because I'm still an intern. We're doing rice bowls now. Ooh, yeah, it looks really good. Um, if it was abstract art in a museum about 20 meters away from your eyeballs. But when you come close and then you're faced with the proposition of eating it. 
I can feel my body rejecting this. Otherwise, it's fine. I mean, it's it's just very average. This is a normal rice bowl. We have the same thing, another rice bowl, but this time it's got some grilled chicken in there. That was really good. This feels like the safest bet. Uh, I don't know what anything is still. So let's go through it together. The first thing, this is uh, either a black bean chalupa or a dirty diaper. I can't tell because it's thick and wrinkly and just dripping with black goo. Don't want that. Oh, it's this, uh, yeah. I mean, every time these Doritos shell show up, I'm just happy. Dorito, cheesy, gordita, crunch, nacho cheese. They put every word in that. Oh, it's that thing, but not nacho. So once you have the Dorito shell version, like to go back is like, no way, no way. I've touched the sky. I can stay on the ground no longer. And then we have Two Crunchwrap Supreme options, black bean Crunchwrap Supreme, and then the regular Crunchwrap Supreme is of course filled with beef. Okay, it's time now for India's sides menu. Starting off with Mexican corn salad. You don't need to add so much sauce to it. I feel like this could have been a lot simpler and people would have appreciated it more. Next up, we have loaded fries and loaded uh, nachos. So typically Taco Bell does not serve loaded uh, nachos and loaded fries here in India, but we found a restaurant that was kind enough to send it to us anyways. I will say this is probably my favorite thing about Taco Bell in India. The loaded nachos are banging when you get them at the restaurant. Oh yeah. But yeah, there's a reason they don't deliver it. It tastes like wet cardboard. And now we have two barf bags, just kidding. Chicken nachos. They had chicken tacos and now there are chicken nachos. And our second doggy bag has... Whoa! That was alarming because what I saw was this. I did not expect this to come out of that bag. Crispy chicken strips. Sides, baby! We got them. Cheesy Fiesta potatoes. There's better things to be had on the menu, but I do like those. Black beans, black beans and rice, and you can get a guacamole side. Now here are some items that are available both in India and the US, but are still very different. For example, this is India's quesadilla, grilled cheese quesadilla. But as you can see, it's filled with a lot of fajita veggies. Um, it's got like this special creamy sauce and it's topped with a lot of jalapenos. Whereas in the US, it comes with just cheese. How boring is that? Correct. And this is what it looks like. Incredibly boring. Another big difference is here in India, our nachos are all seasoned. So they already have like a masala or some sort of spice to them. Our nacho chips in the US are just regular tortilla chips with nacho cheese. Here in India, in our wedge options, we use pinto beans or rajma. Whereas in the US, our bean of choice is the black bean. Exclusive US sauces, hey, you know what that means. Sauce talk. It's now time for India's exclusive sauces. We have quite the wide range. We have Cool Ranch, because there's a lot of spice in a lot of these burritos and tacos. I imagine if you're somebody who can't tolerate spice, definitely get a side of this. Then there is Spicy Salsa. I tasted it, it's really nice. It's got a lot more spice to it, but also the flavor of Imli, which is tamarind. We use it in a lot of our uh, dishes, especially South Indian dishes. Then there's a the chocolate sauce, which I imagine is for churros or some sort of dippable dessert. But if you want to dip your quesadilla into this, I'm not going to judge. Next up, we have lava sauce, which doesn't really look as much like lava, but it definitely has a kick to it. Chicken tikka masala sauce, which looks more like lava. Down in the end here, we got reduced fat sour cream. Who doesn't like chips and sour cream, right? Could use some fat. Then moving on, we have a chipotle sauce. Chipotle sauce is very good. Mm, 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 mm. Avocado ranch. Mmm, I love it. More of that, please. And they have a spicy ranch. How spicy could it be? Not very. And finally, the red sauce. Okay, it is finally dessert time. I've eaten a lot of savory food and I'm excited for the desserts. Good old churros. I am a big fan of churros. They send you one chocolatey dip. I feel like you can't really go wrong with churros if you want to call yourself a restaurant. And next is something I have never seen before. Cinnamon twisties. I could see myself, you know, 3 a.m. in the night, sad, vulnerable, eating a whole packet of these. So that means it's a good dessert. Taco Bell used to sell quesadillas filled with chocolate and they were called chocodillas. But I guess they've stopped that now. Taco Bell is against puns. 
The only U.S. exclusive dessert we have are these, the Cinnabon Delights. They're Cinnabons, and I'm pretty sure this is filled with some sort of like cream cheese, right? I share this cream cheese in this or whatever they're frosting. Someone's gotta eat it, that definitely can't go to waste. Eat it now, right? They're fantastic. All right, it's time for India's exclusive drinks. What could we do without them? Nothing, I would have choked to death on all that burrito maida wrap. First up, uh, the soft drinks that we have, we sell 7up and Mirinda over here, but actually in Bangalore, I've seen a lot more variety of drinks, so I think it varies from store to store. Next up, Taco Bell sells juices. This one was a mixed fruit juice, but I drank it all. And I can tell you, it was pretty good. They also sell a cranberry and apple juice, but the stores that we asked in Mumbai did not have those available. And finally, they sell milkshakes. This is mango, this is chocolate, cookie crumble. The true test of a milkshake is to test the fruit one and see if it's still fresh. Hey, that's pretty good. Mango milkshake. U.S. exclusive drinks. There's literally a million, yes, really, of soft drinks you can get at the Taco Bell you can't get in India. So I just went and got a Diet Pepsi and of course, Baja Blast. After like doing this, what, three, four times at this point, I'm actually starting to like Baja Blast. You can actually get a whole bunch of soft drinks at the U.S. Taco Bell. All of these. I wasn't getting 20 drinks. You know, so get yourself a bottle. OJ, Tropicana. Also something you can get are things called freezes, which at one point were frozen slushy or slurpy like drinks. You can get, of course, a Mountain Dew Baja Blast. And also get yourself wild cherry freeze. Oh, fuck. That's cough syrup. Also, you can get coffee, both iced and hot. Iced coffee? Oh, no, wait, that's soda. What is this? Ignore that. Right over there. The Cinnabon Delight coffee. Okay, Zach's gonna give us two of these. Iced coffee that's flavored like the Cinnabon Delights. Are you kidding me? I can just feel my life expectancy just getting closer and closer. Just like, sip. Mm. He ain't seen his 80s. Mm. But it's worth that, it's delicious. You can also get those coffees hot. Taco Bell breakfast, baby! I think this is just about everything. Once again, I can't tell what anything is. It's all just a sea of beige. Let's find out together. This one just says bacon. Thank you for that. Burrito with bacon. I'm like the Riddler over here. Just like, yay, figure it out. Question mark, question mark. I mean, it's a bit unnatural how yellow that is. It's really bright. It's a bit concerning. This one's gonna be the one with steak, I assume. Yeah. Who's hungry? The steak's a little weird. Maybe don't get the steak one specifically. <laughs> Did you see this, this the condensation? How bad this food is sweating? Breakfast crunch wrap supreme. Oh, there's sausage inside of this. Look, it comes inside. It's like the magic ticket. Now I get to work at Taco Bell or something. Their sausage is good though. Get yourself a hash brown. They also have breakfast salsa, but the Taco Bell I went to did not have any. Let's talk about nutrition, everybody's favorite topic. That's why you come to Food Wars, because you love fast food, but mainly you love nutrition. In India, a typical soft shell Mexican chicken taco will be 185 calories. In the US, our standard chicken soft taco is 160 calories. So we have fewer calories, fat, carbs, and sodium, but more protein. Next up is the chicken quesadilla. Ours has 268.5 calories. And ours is 510 calories. Now, please note the sodium level on our quesadilla. It's over half the daily recommended amount. That's a salty quesadilla. In India, a Veg Star wrap is 239.9 calories. Closest we have to that is our Black Bean Crunch Wrap Supreme. Again, double the calorie count. Get a load of that sodium. Are you looking for the most calorific item here in India? Well, look no further than the cinnamon twist. Each of these packets will cost you 480.9 calories. Here in the US, if you're having a hard time finding calories at the Taco Bell, check out this, the double beef grilled cheese burrito. So Taco Bell in India does not disclose any of their ingredients, but I thought it would be interesting to talk about two of the ingredients that we have here that are unique to India. Number one is paneer. So the problem with the Mexican paneer that was served to me in this batch of Taco Bell 
is that it tasted like the processed paneer you get at stores it tasted like something that had been stored in a fridge also because paneer is so popular here in india every single fast food restaurant has paneer options you know when you know how well it can be done i didn't like the paneer that much in the burritos and tacos i had today the next ingredient i want to talk about is tikka masala i thought it was okay it had a lot of flavor it was quite spicy but the thing that makes tikka masala so exciting is that it's always made from fresh tomatoes and so you can sort of tell there's a difference when it's in the sauce form however i will say it's always a valiant effort to see these fast food companies and people who come here from abroad in general adapt to the indian palate and try to make cuisine that matches ours in the us we do disclose our ingredients and here's a few you should be wary of first is brominated vegetable oil aka bvo BVO is an emulsifier found in citrus flavored sodas that specifically use citrus oils and is considered a health risk when ingested in large amounts. In one case, a man who drank 2 to 4 liters of BVO soda per day developed bromism and experienced symptoms such as memory loss and extreme muscle fatigue. It can be found in the ingredients of 3 of the Cantina menu freezes, the beach berry freeze, the ginger mule freeze and the party punch freeze. The last one, the party punch freeze also contains yellow number 5, aka tartrazine, which is subject to restriction outside the US in places like the EU and India as it quote may have an adverse effect on activity and attention in children. And you can find it in several Taco Bell menu items, specifically the Doritos Locos Taco Nacho Cheese Shells. Oh no, I had like 3 of those today. And Baja Blast. I just want to start to like it. From Cadbury Count to portion sizes, we want to find out all the differences between Cadbury chocolates in the UK and in India. This is Food Wars. Cadbury Dairy Milk in India comes in ranges of four sizes. Number one is Cadbury Dairy Milk Minis. It comes in this large packet with 18 smaller pieces of seven grams each. Our smallest are these bite-sized 11 gram bars. Then we have these 18 gram little bars. A simple 24 grams tiny one. Next up we have our multi-pack bars which weigh 33.5 grams. The standard individual dairy milk bar weighs 45 grams. A duo bar which comes in two halves and weighs 54.4 grams. Then a 55 grams maha pack. Next up we have this 110 gram bar. Family pack 126 grams. Then we move to a 180 gram bar. We have this 360 gram bar. The biggest size you'll find in the UK is an 850 gram giant bar. So in India Cadbury is really well known for its gift boxes. In fact, they've done so much marketing over so many years that it's become synonymous with festivals like Diwali, Dasera, and even Christmas and New Year's. On their website right now, you can get anything from an anniversary tin box to a Ramadan tin box, and they come in several different sizes. For starters, there's a standard personalized gift box which contains 6 Cadbury Dairy Milk bars, 3 of which are silk and 3 of which are standard. And that's the one we have right here. In fact, they've put my face on it. I mean, that's a whole lot of packaging for normal bars of chocolate you can just buy, I guess. It even says Food Wars. Oh, it says US versus India. Sorry, Harry. <laughs> Apart from this, you can also get a larger personalized birthday gift box which will contain 450 grams silk bars, three birthday whistles, a large banner, a birthday hat. So, the next time you don't know what to do for your birthday, just order this to your house. and you can have a party by yourself. Now we have some gift box items of our own but they usually come more in the form of selection boxes. These are most commonly seen around Christmas time at which point Cadbury's will release Heroes and Roses which are selection boxes containing 600 grams of individually wrapped chocolates. It's a real tradition in British households to have a few of these lying around. The other options include Quality Street and Celebrations. People tend to have their own favorites when it comes to the selection boxes and also the chocolates inside them. I think generally Heroes would be my preferred option over Roses. I prefer the kind of more mainstream chocolate bars that you'll find including doing a little whisper bites which i think might be my favorite. If you want a gift option for all year round, up for a milk tray. These have been around for decades. I think my mum used to be giving these to people when she was growing up. And for the run up to Christmas, got to get yourself an advent calendar. I don't think I'd normally go for one of these. These are a little bit flimsy, quite narrow, but still, you get a lot of joy from opening a uh, tiny bite of chocolate every morning in the run up to Christmas. Here are all the Cadbury products that you'll find in India that you will not find in the UK. Here are all the Cadbury products from the UK that you won't find in India. This is so much chocolate. In terms of our classic dairy milk flavors, we have two exclusives. Number 1, roast almond and number 2, crackle. This used to be my favorite as a child, but right now I really like this delicious chunks of roast almond. We have some exclusive dairy milk flavors of our own. Firstly, for the health conscious among us, we have this 30% less sugar dairy milk. 
I guess this could be helpful as well if you find regular milk chocolate too sweet, which some people do, but then I guess just opt for some dark chocolate instead. Next up we have Cadbury Caramel. It's a bar of dairy milk, but inside each square there's a little bit of caramel. This is one of my favorite ones. It does get a little bit sickly if you eat too much of it because of the amount of sugar, but very tasty. We have some big taste bars, which are chunky versions of dairy milk, starting with peanut caramel crisp. And we also have a triple choc sensation big taste bar, which combines dark milk and white chocolate in one delicious bar. These ones look really cool. They've definitely put a bit more thought into the design of the bars. Tastes really good as well. Next up, we've got dairy milk with crunchy bits. Now this is crunchy with an IE, not crunchy with a Y. Crunchy with an IE is actually a bar of chocolate you can get here in the UK. It's milk chocolate with a honeycomb center. Then we have a Dairy Milk Dime Bar. Dime is another chocolate bar which Dairy Milk has kind of collabed with. I think it's like a very thin, brittle almond caramel bar with a little bit of chocolate on the outside. My granddad really used to like Dime. Then we have this Marvelous Creations Jelly Popping Candy Bar. As the name suggests, it's a bar of chocolate which contains some popping candy as well as I think jelly beans. I've not tried this in a long time. I wanna see what the ratios are like and also if I can really feel the popping candy. You can see like a couple of bits of, I assume jelly beans peeking out of the top. The pattern is kind of odd. Usually obviously you have squares, makes it nice and easy to break apart and share. I'm just gonna bite into it like a madman. You really do get the popping candy. My mouth is popping. It's actually not too bad. You get little chewy sweet bits in with your chocolate. There's a lot going on, but I don't hate it. For vegans in the UK, Cadbury's also has a plant-based bar. I've never tried this, so I want to see if I can taste the difference between this and dairy milk. I mean, it looks like chocolate. Definitely does taste of almond, which is okay, because I quite like kind of nut and chocolate as a combination. If I went vegan, I don't know if I'd be rushing to the store to buy this. It's okay, the texture's pretty good, but the flavor just really isn't there. Our last two exclusive dairy milk bars are actually a mystery. Two bars which contain fillings of a mystery flavor. You try and guess what the flavor is, and then you can submit your answer online. Myself and the rest of the crew have now got to try these and give our best guesses. Mystery bar one. Oh God, last time I threw stuff at you, it didn't go very well. Got it. Ooh. Okay, it's fruity. Currently we're thinking maybe rose. I'm personally thinking apricot. Struggling to agree here. We can taste more. I swear I get fruit. While we figure that one out, we'll try mystery bar number two. Now this one smells aggressively fruity. Catch Leon. I'm getting quite a lot of like very artificial raspberry flavor. I'd be fairly confident in asserting that as raspberry. It might be blueberry. Plot twist, they've already revealed the flavors. We didn't know. First one was rhubarb and custard, classic British dessert. Didn't really get very close to that one. Second was blue raspberry, which we actually did kind of get. I personally don't think I would buy either of those again though. Maybe the first one. You don't mind it. And now for our silk range, or as Cadbury is trying to rebrand it, the S range. What is this, some sort of new iPhone? But whether you call it silk or S, I love these chocolates. First off, we have the typical silk. It, basically, it's just dairy milk, but a lot silkier. Then we have Dairy Milk Silk Bubbly. It's Dairy Milk Silk, but bubbly. That's nice, light, airy. Next, you have a Dairy Milk Silk Fruit and Nut. Then we have Dairy Milk Silk Hazelnut. Wow, there are some proper large chunks of hazelnut. The hazelnut itself, the flavor of it really lends to the chocolate and it doesn't taste as sweet. Next up, we have Dairy Milk Silk Roast Almond. We have Dairy Milk Silk Mousse. They've tried to recreate the flavor of mousse and you can see that it's a lot more fudgy, the chocolate inside. It's all right. Oh man, there's one that I'm scared to try. Dairy Milk Silk Bubbly Bubblegum. Oh no, I saw the color of it. Oh my God, why have they done this? Growing up, we had a bubblegum called Boomer, which is now what we've all become. That one bite was really not that bad. It definitely tastes like bubblegum and gave me that Boomer vibe. That's as much as I can have of that. Now to cleanse the palate, Silk Oreo. Mmm. That is a nice flavor, dude. I think this is my favorite out of the lot. We also have another variation of Oreo. It's a Red Velvet Oreo. If you've watched previous episodes of Food Wars, you remember that one of the ingredients that has taken India by storm in the past few decades is Red Velvet. And I have tasted this before and I actually think it's really good. But it is overkill. It's literally Dairy Milk Silk, the Oreo White Cream, and chunks of Oreo that have been turned into Red Velvet. Do you have a treadmill? Finally, we have Dairy Milk Silk Heart Blush. I imagine you give this to your loved one. It says pull over here, and I'm pretty excited to pull this. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. I can't believe I've been rickrolled in my own video. At the back, there is a very elaborate looking tear tab. So I'm just gonna... 
not very easy to wait what i'd probably break up with whoever gave me this at this point this is frustrating it's more packaging all right more packaging this is honestly a very wasteful way to tell somebody you like them there you go it's some pink chocolate oh my god i swear to god if it's the same as the bubble gum i'm going to cry it's not bubble gum so this is actually quite a fun experience i'm not going to like now we don't have silk bars but we do have something called dark milk cadbury's has kind of invented this hybrid milk and dark chocolate for someone whose tastes lie somewhere between those two here is the dark milk Dark milk also comes in variations including a salted caramel flavor and a hazelnut flavor. I feel like they've tried to market these a little bit more at adults maybe as opposed to kids. The packaging kind of gives a slightly more sophisticated vibe. Sexy if you will. At the other end of the scale we have some even sweeter options than classic milk chocolate. Firstly, we have caramel milk, which is golden caramel chocolate. This one I have not tried. I'm kind of intrigued. I'm going to have a bite. I worry it's going to be far too sweet. Wow. That's very sweet. You do get notes of caramel. But I really don't think I could eat more than a couple of bites of that. And of course, we also just have white chocolate. As I've said, I'm not really a big fan of white chocolate and I don't think I'm alone in that because this basically wasn't available in any of the big supermarkets that I looked in. The shop we were able to track it down in was Poundland, which is a shop in the UK where everything costs a pound. I know it sounds ridiculous to an American audience, but that is what it's called. So you can find Cadbury Boneville dark chocolate in both the UK and in India, but there's a slight difference. In the UK, the packaging is bright red. Mm. And over here we have different flavors: 50% dark chocolate and 70% dark chocolate. I have uh, over the years grown to like dark chocolate. I was never a fan of it growing up, but 70% dark chocolate? I don't know. Oh, you know it's not as bitter as I expected. Very creamy. Also, the cocoa is 100% sustainably sourced. Next up we have a uh, fruit and nut. It's got a peanut in there. It doesn't taste as heavy as the other. chocolates i've had so far and i really appreciate this am i growing old is that what's happening and the final flavor is cranberry which i've been the most excited about i don't think i've had any chocolate bars that have had cranberry in them but obviously cranberry and dark chocolate sounds like an amazing combination that is so good the tartness of the cranberry and like that slight sugariness really complements the dark chocolate there's a crunch of roasted almond this is a winner Really nice. I like this range of Bonvilles. Feels like a healthier guilty pleasure. We also have some Bonville products you'll find in the UK that you won't find in India. Firstly, we have Bonville Old Jamaica. The Old Jamaica refers to rum and raisin flavors added to the dark chocolate. And we also have an orange Bonville. I personally don't love dark chocolate and I especially do not love dark chocolate combined with fruit, so I'm respectfully not going to try any of these. If you're wondering where the name Bonville comes from, it's actually a village that was created by the Cadbury family for workers who worked in their factory near Birmingham. Bonville still exists today, so you can go and visit it. It's home to Cadbury World, which is a kind of Cadbury museum interactive experience thing, and apparently is a really nice place to live. And now it's time for all of the remaining Indian Cadbury Cadbury products starting with Cadbury Fuse their tagline for this is a delicious chocolatey feast like some sort of chocolatey mousse in the middle surrounded by caramel and then the outer layer of chocolate has peanuts in it so i can imagine this being a proper feast kind of nice i think i could eat this much of one chocolate but the fact that i'm eating so many varieties of chocolate one after the other is really doing something to my brain like why are we doing this no like what is this why are we tasting all of this what is the point of this show next in line we have the cadbury crispello i want to be on the team that gets to name all of these chocolates seems like you can just get away with anything it's clearly filled with some rice crispies and things that are crispies hey this one is actually really yum next up cadbury five star 3D. If you don't know what five star is, it's basically the chocolate that made caramel cool in India. It's been around for decades, and actually, fun fact, it's my mom's favorite chocolate. Now they've upgraded to five star 3D. What's the difference between this and any other five star? It has nuts. I will say, having eaten the past three chocolates in a row, I'm starting to realize they're kind of the same thing. It's decent. I prefer the original five star. That one sparks nostalgia. This one just feels too modern. Next up. We have a perk. So perk is another chocolate that's been around in India for ages now and it's gone through a lot of evolutions like every other chocolate has. Now they sell perk in a double pack. It says you can rip it, share it. Oh! Next up, some gemstones. That's right, the UK didn't give us our gemstones back, but they definitely gave us gems. 
Yeah, I mean, fair enough. Sorry, guys. So the M&Ms without the M&M &M branding on top. What I used to do as a kid, you would get a small packet of gems and I would suck on each gem until the color would come off and it would be a white gem. And then I'd put all the white ones in my mouth and bite them like one big chocolate. That was weird. And I had no friends. Cadbury Temptations Rum and Raise Rum. And uh, Cab Cadbury 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 Temptations Almond Treat. It smells like rum. Whoa! I did not expect that flavor to be so strong. Can they sell this to children? It kind of tastes like a Christmas rum cake. Yeah, I don't mind it. I think this could be a great Christmas sort of chocolate to have around. Next up is my favorite childhood chocolate, Nutties. I freaking love Nutties. And my favorite part about Nutties is that the branding has not really changed for like decades now. What this chocolate is, is basically Cadbury chocolate coated over a cashew nut that's covered in nougat. Oh my God, that is so good. Then we have a load more Cadbury exclusives in the UK and we'll start with the bars. We'll start with what is technically a Cadbury product, but initially was not. This is the Fry's Chocolate Cream Bar. It's a dark chocolate bar with a creamy, smooth fondant center. A fun fact is that the Fries were a Quaker family who were the first ones to actually commercially produce chocolate bars in the UK. Before the Fries came along, drinking chocolate was kind of the only way to consume it. Fries also makes a peppermint cream bar as well as Turkish Delight. I will say this is not the best Turkish Delight out there. If you want Turkish Delight, go to a grocery store that sells Turkish food, get some classic stuff, whereas this is a kind of slightly cheapy Turkish Delight encased in chocolate. Next up, we have Boost Bars. These are chocolate bars filled with caramel and biscuit pieces. When Boost was first launched, I think they were kind of marketed as almost like an energy bar. They had loads of sugar and glucose in them, although I think they have now recently dropped that down and it's just in line more with a standard chocolate bar. Then we're on to Chomps. I personally love a Chomp. These were also a little bit hard to find. I think we had to go to Poundland for these ones as well, but they used to cost like 10p from your local news agents. It's just like a chocolate bar with toffee slash caramel inside. Simple, but effective. Then we have Crunchy Bars, which are chocolate bars with a large honeycomb center. Personally don't love crunchy bars. I don't love the texture of the honeycomb and they're very, very sweet. What I do love, however, is a curly whirly. These are brilliantly named. They come in these little individual bars like this. They look a bit weird. It's kind of a web of chocolate and caramel. I used to have braces as a kid and I really missed toffee and caramel while I had them on. Moving on, we have a double decker bar. A nod to the British double decker buses. This is a two layered chocolate bar with a nougat layer, as well as a kind of crunchy pieces and caramel layer. I like these. Next up, we have fudge bars. Got these little bite-sized ones today. I like these. The guys seem to disagree with me, but I think these are good. I will opt for these in a hero's box. It's just a bar of fudge covered with chocolate. Then we move on to the picnic bar. It's a chocolate bar that contains, I think, caramel, some rice crispy kind of pieces, as well as some raisins and peanuts. Now, while India has a five-star bar in the UK, we just have a star bar. I don't think I've ever had one of these before. Apparently it's milk chocolate with caramel and peanut. Let's give it a try. That might get added to my rotation, you know, that's pretty good. Next up, we have the 12. These are like ribboned chocolate bars, which are then kind of cased within more chocolate. It leads to uh, quite an interesting texture and quite a nice taste. The only issue with 12s is that they do crumble and kind of go everywhere. You can also get 12s in orange flavor. Then we're on to whisper bars. I don't really know how they make these because it's milk chocolate, but it's like aerated. There's kind of little holes all the way through it. We put a man on the moon and we aerated a chocolate bar. The result is a really nice texture, actually. It sort of melts in your mouth when you eat it. I have some American colleagues in the US. Last time I visited, this was the one thing they asked me to bring over. You can also get Whisper Gold bars. These are the same as regular Whispers, but they have a layer of caramel running along the top. And the last, but by no means least bar, is the Freddo. It's basically just a tiny piece of solid milk chocolate in the shape of Freddo the Frog. But for people of a certain generation, namely mine, they're also a surprising representation of economic inflation. To put on my angry old man hat for a second, when I was a young'un, these were 10p. And then around 2005, prices started to gradually creep up. Before we knew it, prices were as high as 30p for a Freddo. These outrageous prices actually led to public outcry, so much so that they backed down, and I think nowadays they're around 25p. The Bank of England says that it should have been around 17 or 18p by now, whereas we are getting charged 25, so Cadbury's Give us some cheap Freddos again. Economic rant is now over. You can also get Freddos in a caramel flavor. The last thing to add to the chocolate bars is that you can get pretty much all of them in the form of these share bags. They basically just condense them into bite-sized pieces and put them in a bag that you can open and reseal. Next up, we have Dairy Milk Bites. There are two flavors that we have right now, hazelnut and almond. They look pretty similar to the silk of these flavors. So I imagine these are just smaller bite-sized versions. Next up, Lickables. Why have they done this? Thoughts on this, this is clearly for small children. 
somebody want to help me i have no idea how to open this this feels like one of those uh, puzzles oh the lower half of it was a chocolate and the rest of it had this toy now to the chocolate there's a qr code because most children have uh, phones that they can scan this with oh looks like goopy cadbury chocolate with chunks of oreo and you just got to lick it this is just beer at cadbury okay next up we have cadbury choco bakes chalk filled cookies in case you didn't think this contained chocolate they reminded you eight times in the branding the packaging and the design feels a lot more premium i feel like there's good value for money here because it was filled to the literal brim now we're going to go to this side we have oreo dipped in cadbury damn I'm really enjoying this whole Oreo Cadbury marriage over here. Now we have an Oreo biscuit coated in Cadbury chocolate. The Oreo biscuit itself is kind of overpowering, so it's all right. Next up, we have this tin can of rich dry fruits. Again, in the Cadbury celebrations line in India, common gifting culture is to give a box of dry fruits and nuts, and so Cadbury has adapted really well to that. Okay, so the next thing is something very different. This is actually Bone Vita. Cadbury Bone Vita, and this is a drinking chocolate. We drink a lot of milk here in India, and as kids, everybody was addicted to one of many different drinking chocolates: Horlicks, Complan. I'm a Milo guy myself. There was Boost, and then obviously Bone Vita. I think most people were not Bone Vita people. This is Cadbury's range of choco melts, and it's a small dish of chocolate that's used for baking. And finally, the last three packets are toffees. that cadbury sells in bulk this one is five star bites it's similar to the dairy milk minis for all my indian fans of five star out there comment and let me know whether you're more of a ramesh guy or a suresh guy these are packs of toffees eclairs to be specific this one is chocolate flavored and this one is coffee flavored another quirky thing about india is sometimes when you go to the local stores and you pay in cash and they have to give you change but they don't have any they'll just give you one of these chocolates and you can't really argue it you just grab it and go i think it's very cute actually it's a very endearing thing about india but remember if you're going to take a chocolate from a store screw all this take melody melody is the best chocolate all right In the UK, Cadbury's offers a lot of seasonal products. Now we're recording this episode in late October, so unfortunately we can't get some of the most famous ones. What I'm of course referring to here are Cadbury Cream Eggs and Cadbury Mini Eggs. In the UK, these are only available in the run up to the Easter holidays, but while they are available, they're wildly popular. Well, I will say I don't like cream eggs. I take stick for this. I think they're gross. The fondant in the middle is grim. You have to kind of like tongue it out. It's just really bizarre. Mini eggs, however, are delicious. I don't know what they're putting in the shells of those things, but god, they're amazing. While we can't get the Easter exclusives right now, what we do have are Halloween and Christmas options. For Halloween, I was able to find these goo heads. I think this is kind of a Halloween version of cream eggs, so I'm going to crack one open and see. That does look exactly the same as a cream egg, even down to the patterning that's kind of printed on the egg. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much just a cream egg. I just don't like them. Then for Christmas exclusives, I found these Cadbury puds. These are dairy milk chocolate balls with a truffle center, hazelnut pieces, and rice crisps. They sound pretty good. We also found Cadbury mini snowballs, which are milk chocolate in a crisp sugar shell. They might hurt a little bit more than a normal snowball fight if you have one of these thrown at your head. And of course, you can get a dairy milk advent calendar for Christmas. It looks like some kind of mud monster. Moving away from seasonal items, we have Cadbury eclairs. Cadbury eclairs are quite tough pieces of toffee with some chocolate in the center. They're a pretty good jaw workout, but I do quite like these. And another iconic Cadbury item is buttons. These are bags of discs of dairy milk chocolate, real classic. These have been around for years. From there, we're moving on to Cadbury's biscuit options, possibly the most iconic of which are fingers. These are thin sticks of sweet biscuit covered in dairy milk chocolate. They're very tasty. They're pretty Moorish, and they come in these kind of iconic sleeve tray things. I know with Joey, I have a caffeine meter, but if I had a sugar meter. We're blasting off right now. Woo! We also have some other flavor options including mint, orange, Bourneville dark, and finally white. Roundies are circular layered wafer biscuits covered in dairy milk chocolate. If you're a fan of wafers, you can also get Time Out wafer bars. Again, it's chocolate wafers layered and surrounded by chocolate, but this time in more of a bar form than a circular biscuit. The next Cadbury biscuit option is Animals. Fredo has hopped into the jungle to join his friends. These are little animal-shaped biscuits which on one side are covered with chocolate. I don't think I've eaten one of these as an adult, but they were an excellent lunchbox edition when I was a little kid. I'd also be remiss not to talk about mini rolls. These are an iconic British snack. What it is is like a chocolate sponge with this kind of cream swirl in the middle surrounded by milk chocolate. I'm not sure why the mini roll is currently saying I'm rich and famous, but good for the mini roll. These are great. 
Finally, Cadbury's offers some baked options, which you might find in the bakery section of your local supermarket. These can include things like donuts and muffins, but the ones I was able to find today were flapjack bites. In the UK, when we say flapjacks, we don't mean pancakes, which I think Americans can say sometimes. Flapjacks over here are kind of like oats held together with honey, golden syrup, and some other stuff. And these mini cookies. Here's everything in a bar of dairy milk chocolate in the UK. Here's everything you'll find in a bar of dairy milk chocolate here in India. So the list of ingredients is pretty much the same in the UK and in India, but the UK uses palm and shea fats, which is not specifically listed here in India. India goes into a little bit more detail on the flavorings used in the chocolate, listing natural vanillin as well as artificial ethyl vanillin. As the name suggests, this is the main component of vanilla bean extract. Some kind of vanillin is likely present in the UK chocolate, it's just contained within the flavorings on the list. But how much chocolate are you actually getting in your chocolate? chocolate. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India has some minimum requirements for what milk chocolate should contain. The rules are 25% total fat, 2% milk fat, 2.5% cocoa solids and 10.5% milk solids. We have equivalent rules here in the UK. The Cocoa and Chocolate Products Regulations of 2003 set the minimums for milk chocolate at 25% total fat, 5% milk fat, 20% dry cocoa solids, 2.5% dry non-fat cocoa solids, and 20% dry milk solids. Cadbury in the UK says its chocolate contains 23% milk solids and meets the EU minimum of 20% for cocoa solids. India's Cadbury packaging says it contains over 22% milk solids, so thank you Cadbury for not being chindi. It is interesting that Indian rules do not have a minimum for dry, fat-free cocoa solids in milk chocolate. The dark chocolates, however, have a minimum and it's 14%. Dry cocoa solids tends to refer to cocoa powder, which is one of the purest forms of cocoa. Having more cocoa solids therefore gives the end product a stronger chocolate taste. 100 grams of dairy milk in the UK contains the following. 100 grams of dairy milk in India contains... The calories are actually identical. The least healthy bar in the UK is the Big Taste Toffee Whole Nut Bar. One of these contains 560 calories per 100 grams, a slight increase on dairy milk. But what is the least healthy chocolate bar here in India? It's the Dairy Milk Silk Hazelnut. 100 grams of this contains 571 calories, which is more than any bar in the UK. I guess it's a win. I'm counting it as a win. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Nando's in the UK and India. This is Food Wars. If you're ordering chicken for one person, it comes in three sizes at a UK Nando's. As a quarter chicken, as a half chicken, or as a whole chicken. Chicken for one person here in Nando's India comes in the form of a quarter chicken, which is one piece, or a half chicken, which is two pieces. You can also get a whole chicken, but it only comes in the form of a sharing platter, the largest of which is a jumbo platter, two whole chickens, and five large sides. I'm excited to eat this, but all I need now is friends. So, hit me up. The largest item in the UK is the family platter. It comes with two whole chickens as well as five large sides. Family of one. I could eat this. What about some other things from the Nando's menu? Well, in the UK, you can get a grilled chicken burger in two sizes, as a single or as a double. Nando's India also sells chicken burgers and offers customers the option to double their chicken. So you can get a single chicken burger or double it to a double chicken burger. Nando's India serves chicken wings, but only in one size, a pack of four. Wings from a UK Nando's come in four portion sizes, as a three piece, as a five piece, as a 10 piece and a 15 piece. It's really weird being the country with the biggest sizes for a change. Joe, I miss you. Now the classic side for any order of Nando's in the UK is a side of Peri Peri chips. I'm allowed to call them chips, not fries, because Joe is not in this video. In the UK, these come in two sizes, regular and large. Here in Nando's India, they're advertised not as chips, but as fries, because that's what they are, Harry, you weirdo. I'm gonna weigh them, you get them in two sizes, either regular or large. Let me weigh the regular. It's a hundred grams on the dot. Nice. Next. 418 grams. No, 408 grams. 175 grams in the large. I don't know how to read. Here is everything on the menu at a UK Nando's that you won't find in India. This is everything you'll find on the menu at Nando's India that you will not find in the UK. We'll start with the chicken. Now, when you order chicken at Nando's, they'll ask you to pick a spice level. We have quite a few of these, most of which are shared with India, except for two. Firstly, we have pimenta spice. I think this is limited edition, and it sits somewhere between medium and hot on the spice scale. And our other exclusive spice is peri tamer. 
as the name suggests, this is quite a mild, tame spice. It's, it's somewhere between mild and basically plain chicken. I think it's a slightly sweeter glaze than you might find on the regular peri peri spice. Here in India, we just get our chicken in the classic scale of plain, lemon and herb, mild, hot, and extra hot. I'm willing to bet that our extra hot blows the UK extra hot out of the water. You see this tongue? This tongue can take spice. Oh my God, is this some kind of joke? It's like tickling me, it's teasing me with spice. This is child's play. I will say I love how the UK Nando's has two extra flavors. I wish India Nando's experimented more. We're in India, dude. There are so many spices. But what we lack in spices, we make up for in mains. Number one, creamy cashew chicken with spicy rice. Damn good. Okay, now on to the next main. This is chicken cataplana. Cataplana is a type of Portuguese clam-shaped stove cooking pot and they've also served it with a yogurt dip so using a cataplan is apparently healthier because you end up using less fats to cook your meat and your veggies next up we're having chicken espetada or as i like to call it chicken espetada i've been fired from this show 16 times this season i imagine they take the pieces of chicken put them in skewers put the marinade so nando's is a Portuguese inspired South African restaurant. So most of the recipes are things that were developed by Portuguese explorers when they were in South Africa. We also have a lot of cuisine that's inspired by our uh, former colonial overlords back in Portugal. In fact, Goa, which is our smallest state here in India, was where the Portuguese first settled. And so a lot of the cuisine is derived and inspired by Portuguese cuisine. We have a couple of chicken mains of our own, starting with boneless thighs. These come in orders of four, and you can get them in any of the standard Nando's spice levels. And our other chicken exclusive is this, wing roulette. So wing roulette is an order of 10 wings, and it's a variety of the Nando's spices. The idea is that you'll get some of these, share them with your friends. Some of you might get hit with an extra hot wing, whereas others might get off easy with a mild. When I go to Nando's, I'm generally going for medium or hot. I'm not trying to be a hero. If I'm going for extra hot, I'm just not actually gonna taste the food. It's just gonna kind of hurt. I may also add a little bit of the kind of garlic and herb sauce, which adds a little bit of spice to it. Or also I've used ketchup in the past, which my friends have lambasted me for, so don't do that. Good chicken though. We also have some meal deals. These are more affordable options and you will not find them in the UK. Let's start off with the first one, which is pulled chicken sliders. Oh my God. This is like gourmet dining. I think I would need to eat three of these to feel considerably full. Unfortunately, they only give you two. Next up is a pulled chicken burger. Oh my mother load of chicken. That is a lot of pulled chicken. It needs a sauce. Did I just eat a part that doesn't have sauce? Next up we have chicken tigela, which is basically grilled chicken, some corn, some roasted veggies and tomato. And this is served with some spicy rice. They've also given like a bunch of veggies. Nando's is really trying to get our vitamins in. But take a look at the tigela itself. It's got a bed of rice underneath, but on top there's some pulled chicken, a lot of grilled onions, and a lot of finely chopped capsicum. Next up, you have the option of a pulled chicken wrap. I mean, it looks like a wrap. Or you can also get a pulled chicken pita. Damn, this looks like a donor kebab. I guess the true test of whether Nando's is putting a lot of effort into their food is whether their wraps and their uh, pita taste good. Let's go. Miles better than any other fast food restaurant. Alongside those, you can get a tub of veggies. So next up is chicken skewers for a kebab eating nation. Good job, Nando's. You get these along with some pita bread and a couple of salsas. You get a yogurt sauce and some salsa. Next up, we have Portuguese chicken and gravy. And if you can't tell from my face, I'm having a great time. Ooh, boy. Look at that. It looks like there's tadka on top, dude. Oh my God. What is a tadka, you ask? Basically, it's the best way to finish up a curry here in India. We take oil, heat it, add some spices in there, temper them and then pour them over our curry. And our final meal deal dish is saucy chicken strips in spicy rice. I'm not gonna lie, this one looks like the most boring option out of everything here. Let's look at some of the burgers and wraps from Nando's. In the UK, we have a couple of exclusive options. Firstly, we have the Sunset Burger. If I had to hazard a guess as to why this was called the Sunset Burger, it might be because you kind of get a sunset yellow, orange, red effect going with the cheese, the chicken and the chutney, which looks very pretty. I haven't had this before. I wouldn't normally order it at Nando's, but it's actually very, very good. 
The bun is slightly different to the regular burger buns that we get. It's a little bit more kind of spongy and pillowy. And that chutney stuff is delicious. Very sweet, a little bit smoky. Then we also have the Fino Pitta. I really love the packaging of this. It's great for delivery. You just tear straight through the middle. Not like that. And then pop that off. You have a nicely preserved upright pitta. Now on a Fino Pitta, you get chicken thighs, you get some salad, you get perronese, you get halloumi, and I think there's also some caramelized onions in there as well. I'll be honest, if I'm going to Nando's, this is what I'm getting. It's kind of got all my favorite Nando's things in one little package. They took it off the menu for the pandemic. They've recently brought it back, which I am thrilled about because I missed it dearly. The cheeky Nando's levels, off the charts right now. We have a couple of exclusive burgers and wrap flavors of our own, starting with the chicken Caesar salad wrap. I kind of like that packaging. Let's see how this tastes. That is a messed up way to eat a wrap. Eat it from the top, not from the side, please, Nikhil. Wow. Next up is the Perry cheeseburger, which also comes as a wrap or in pita form. Look at the juices dripping off this thing, man. That's what I'm talking about. This flavor has just taken India by storm in the past few decades. It's part of the trifecta of ingredients that are red velvet, matcha, and peri peri that people just love to put into every menu over here. Peri peri, if you don't know, is a spice mix that was discovered by Portuguese explorers when they were settling slash pillaging South African countries like South Africa and Mozambique. On the subject of foreigners coming to a place and taking things from it, I would like to formally apologize to India from the UK. Feel free to come and take your stuff back from the British Museum whenever's convenient. I feel like most Indians identify peri peri as the little packets of peri peri you get at McDonald's and you pour them into your fries and shake them to get peri peri fries. I feel like when they come to Nando's, they might find it not spicy enough. If you don't eat meat, Nando's is actually pretty good for vegetarian and vegan options in the UK. First up, we have the Great Imitator Wrap. It doesn't look very appealing right now. However, the Great Imitator is Nando's' version of fake chicken. I think it's made with pea protein, and by all accounts, I've heard it's pretty good. Then we have the Beanie Burger. As the name would suggest, it's a bean patty. Also comes with, I believe, an egg-free mayo, some salad as well. Then we have a spiced chickpea burger. It's kind of similar to the Beanie Burger, however, once again, as the name would suggest, the patty is predominantly made of chickpeas. This one actually mirrors the Sunset Burger a little more because it's got the same bun and also has some of that red pepper chutney. And then finally, we have a portobello mushroom and halloumi pitta. It's a pitta bread with a big portobello mushroom inside as well as some salad, some halloumi, and more of that red pepper chutney. Pretty much every fast food restaurant here in India serves vegetarian food because a huge percentage of the country is vegetarian. Having said that, Nando's actually had quite a few non-vegetarian options, which is very cool to see in a restaurant like this. So let's go off the list of vegetarian food now, starting with creamy cashew paneer and spicy rice. So this is the same thing as the creamy cashew chicken, except they've replaced it with chunks of cottage cheese and it just looks delicious. Let's see if Nando's has done paneer right. It's really nice. And it's not as chewy. It's soft, soft paneer at a fast food chain, unheard of. The next vegetarian dish is called something exotic. Ooh, it's a mystery. Even they don't know what it could be. And it is. What the heck? I, okay, I did not expect to see this. It's watermelon and paneer. You know what Nando's? Watermelon and paneer, you really are walking the line between creativity and abomination. No, those are kind of weird together, but I think overall, this is a fun dish and they serve it along with a three bean salad. The three beans are chickpea, rajma, and uh, some other one. Let's taste. Even this is flavorful. What's going on? Okay, now we're moving on to a vegetarian version of the cataplana. They have tossed the same vegetables, but this time, along with paneer and some chickpea. I only taste the chickpea. Very nice. This is easily the best food I've had on Food Wars. Hands. Okay, next up we have a vegetarian version of the espetada as well. Look at this. This is probably the best veg skewer I've seen in my life. It's just too beautiful, I can't eat it. I must frame this in my home. Also, they serve with garlic bread because this isn't enough apparently. The first one is a veg burger. They serve it with a coleslaw. It's a run-of-the-mill frozen patty. It's all right. This is probably the most underwhelming thing on the menu so far. And finally, they have a mushroom and paneer burger. In both of these options, you can get along with a wrap or pita. 
दे हैव पुट अज चंक ऑफ पनीर इन देर हैव यू सीन अ पनीर दिस बिग आई डेंट इवन नो दे मेड दिस Oh, bro, bro. When there's good food in this show, I'm so happy. And that's not all. There are more vegetarian options from the meal deal section. Let's go from the top. First off, we have veg sliders. These ones have patties instead of full chicken. Next up, you can get a veg tigella. This one has paneer. So same thing. It's a bed of rice, some chopped veggies on top, but with paneer as the protein. It's served along with potato wedges. Next up, we have paneer skewers that you can get along with either spiced rice or with some pita bread. Very similar to the skewers we had with chicken, and they seem to have the same sauce as well. They're served along with either pita bread or spiced rice. You can choose which option of side, and you also get a salsa as well as a yogurt dip. I always feel like it's hard to do skewers with paneer because it's such a delicate ingredient that if you fry it too much, it gets too rubbery. Oh, is that a piece of pineapple then? Oh, there's a lot of thought put into these dishes. Nando's is a class apart. It's just a class apart. And finally, we have a very simple option at the end. It's a roasted veg and some grilled paneer. I'd probably skip this one. Next up, the UK exclusive starters. First up, we've got some sweet potato wedges and garlic peronese. For some reason, they've also mixed in a bunch of regular chips as well. I don't know if that's normal because I'm traditionally not going to order sweet potato fries. If you've watched Food Wars for a long time, you will know my thoughts on sweet potato, namely that they are bad. It's just like someone took a chip and went, how can we make this floppier? I know. The garlic peronese, however, very tasty. Would recommend getting a side of this next time you're in Nando's. Also exclusive to the UK are peri peri nuts. You can start your meal off with a combination of, I think, cashews, almonds, and maybe macadamia nuts, all coated in their signature peri-peri spice. I'm usually pretty good at this, let's find out. In the UK, you can also get fried halloumi sticks and a dip of your choice. However, unfortunately, the restaurant forgot ours. Here's what they're supposed to look like. Neither of these are exclusive, but in both countries, you can also start with hummus and olives. India has a variety of options, starting with the cheesy fiesta fries. Seems pretty straightforward, but let's see if it is a fiesta. Oh my God. Bro, their presentation is off the charts. Look at this. Look at this. Everybody marvel at the presentation. Okay, I will say these have been in the cold for a while, so they may not taste as good as when they're fresh. And I am right. Next up, they have cheesy fiesta chicken. Boom! Full chicken, grilled onions, same cheese, and I imagine there's fries underneath. Next up, they have something called the sweet potato and corn snack. Whoa! Why is their food so beautiful? There's corn, there's uh, bits of uh, red paprika, some chopped parsley, but also it's pieces of thinly sliced lemon. That's new. Oh! Are you supposed to eat that? It's interesting. I don't know if I'd serve lemon pieces in my salad. Next up, we have uh, four piece wings, but these ones are spicy tangy wings. They look quite delicious. I'm gonna sprinkle some lemon on there. I am disproportionately jealous of that little lemon wedge with the wings. Why don't we have that? Very little touch, lovely bit of freshness to your wing. Forget about it. I have to be honest, pretty bland. Not tasting any spice, not getting any tang. These are the most underwhelming things on the menu so far. And now for something I did not expect to see on the Nando's menu at all. We have a creamy cashew paneer and chicken naan. More like Nando's, am I right guys? Bro, why is all their food looking like art that I can hang up on my wall? Okay, so this naan has the chicken, so this is the naan wedge naan. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and take a bite. See how it tastes. It's damn good. The gravy on top is very similar to a butter chicken. It's got a lot of sweetness and richness. You can tell there's cashew in it, but they've also sprinkled on a lot of green chili, some coriander and chopped onions. So there is a nice kick of spice and they've just drizzled a lot of malai on top. So it's creamy. This is what it would be like if India had to have a pizza. Bang it. Also, they serve it with uh, something called Perinese dip. Are you sure this is for this? Let's just avoid it. It's just like a huge tub of mayonnaise. But it's Perinese apparently. 
For those looking for a healthier option, Nando's also offers salads. There are two main options in the UK. Firstly, we have this quinoa and peri tomato salad. This actually looks pretty good, I have to say. It looks like kind of sun-dried tomatoes, some lettuce, some dressing, some of these little crunchy crouton cracker things, and of course, quinoa. And our other salad option is the delightfully named Rainbow Bowl. Now the very colorful Rainbow Bowl comes with some hummus, some coleslaw, some tender stem broccoli, there's some grains down in the corner, and I think some shredded carrot as well. I love tender stem broccoli, and will fight to the death tender stem broccoli. By default, the salads come plain, but you can also add chicken breast, chicken thighs, fake chicken, or beanie patties to any of them. Here at Nando's India, we have salad options of our own, starting with the Mediterranean salad. Ooh la la. Oppa. Is that something Mediterranean? Next up, we have an Algarve salad. Looks pretty much the same, minus the olives, plus some cashew nuts, and a lot of uh, sun-dried chili or tomatoes. Then we have a quinoa salad for those of you who are monsters and can't eat rice like a normal person. And finally, we have a Caesar salad, and the Caesar salad comes with a dressing. Now, all of those salads we ordered are vegetarian, but you can optionally get some chicken strips if you need more protein in there. Then we're on to the sides. In the UK, you can get quite a few exclusive sides to go along with your peri-peri chips. First up, we have rainbow slaw, which is coleslaw filled with Skittles. No, it's not. It's just coleslaw. But kind of colorful. We also have a mixed leaf salad. A little box of leaves. Oh, there's some tomato and cucumber in there as well. This one is spiced grains with butternut squash, which actually sounds pretty good. Some grains in there, I think that's feta cheese, some green beans and butternut squash. Next up, we have creamy mashed potato. It's mashed potato. You can also get a side of just some long stem broccoli. This one looks a little more sad than the one that was on the salad, but still great. There's some garlic in there as well. Nice touch. And then finally, we can get macho peas. Peas for macho men, just like me. I wasn't really sure where to put these, but there are a couple of extra things which you can add onto pretty much any order, so I guess they kind of count as sides. First up, you can just buy a couple of pieces of grilled halloumi from Anandos in the UK. For those of you who don't know, halloumi is a cheese which I think is made with sometimes a mixture of sheep and goat's milk, predominantly produced in Cyprus. It's an interesting cheese. When you bite into it, it doesn't really give. It's got a kind of like rubbery texture. I personally find it very satisfying to eat, as do a lot of British people. I think we're responsible for something like 80% of the Cyprus halloumi consumption in the world, which is kind of wild, but yeah, it's pretty good. It like squeaks on your teeth when you eat it. The other sorts of side options include just one whole portobello mushroom, this might have looked okay when it was hot. You can also just get a single plain tortilla from Nando's. I guess the idea is that you could kind of buy maybe the halloumi, the mushroom, and a couple of other bits and sauces and create your own wrap or own burrito situation. But personally, I don't think it's worth doing that. Just buy a pre-assembled one. Options for sides here at an Indian Nando's, you can get potato wedgies. I already showed wedgies. <laughs> no, no, they're not wedgies. The potato wedges. Run of the mill potato wedges. You can also get some char grilled wedge. In fact, they give you a lot. You can also get a three bean salad, which looks really colorful and has like a soup liquid that I want to try. Lentil soup, you say? Nay, I want three bean salad water. Next up, we have a Portuguese salad. Looks pretty straightforward. I have no idea what makes this Portuguese. Is it the olives? Probably. And finally, you can just get a tub of feta cheese. They've given me six cubes of feta cheese. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Nando's actually has quite a few dessert options in the UK. If you're in store, many of the shops will have an option for bottomless frozen yogurt. So you can have that in the flavors of vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, or mango. In store and also on delivery, you can get a few more options, including a naughty natta. This is Nando's take on a Portuguese egg custard tart, AKA pasta de nada. I probably butchered the pronunciation of that. If I take myself out to Nando's and I'm feeling uh, bougie, I'll probably end my meal with one of these because I love these things. We can also get a salted caramel brownie. Look at that, it's very pretty. It's got little gold sprinkles on it. I'm describing more foods as pretty. It's been the theme of today but they are kind of pretty. Next, we have a chocolate cake, which is a slice of what looks like a pretty good, gooey, kind of indulgent chocolate cake. Pretty moist. And then we also have this gooey caramel cheesecake. 
This is actually really good. I'm a cheesecake fan, but this is a great example of a cheesecake. I had it for the first time, I think, when we filmed the UK versus US Nando's. Go watch it now, highly recommend. We don't share any desserts with the UK, but we have our own desserts, starting with an ice cream and hot chocolate, but they don't deliver it, so here's an image of it, I guess. Looks pretty good, looks nice. Then we have a series of cakes, starting with a chocolate cake. It's parceled in a burger case, which is kind of weird, but dude, look at this. It's a thick, moist, fat cake. I must taste for science. Appropriately humid. Next up, a red velvet cake. What did I say? The trifecta of ingredients. I'm surprised there's no matcha milkshake at the end of this. They have to fit in red velvet in every restaurant. Peri peri red velvet and matcha. And finally, we have an out and out cheesecake. Honestly, all of these desserts are okay. I probably skipped the dessert here. Last but by no means least, let's talk about the drinks. If you go into a restaurant of Nando's in the UK, you can get bottomless fizzy drinks, including Coke, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, Sprite, and Fanta. Now, some people will ask for a free glass of tap water and then use that at the fizzy drink fountains to help themselves to free fizzy drinks. But I personally have definitely never done that and would not encourage that kind of flagrantly illegal behavior whatsoever. On delivery, we do also have a few exclusive drink options. The first options are these bottle green cordials. For those of you who aren't familiar with cordials, it's like a flavor concentrate. So what you'll do is you'll put a few splashes of this into a glass, top it up with water, and then you have a drink which you can actually consume. I kind of thought these would come pre-mixed, so I was a little bit surprised to see just bottles of the cordial itself. But I guess you can uh, make yourself some squash at home. This is Rooibos? Roy 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 I don't know how to teas, which are flavored with things like lemon, peach, and berry. And finally, we have Gingerella by Karma Drinks. This is just a ginger ale. We can also get bottomless soda refills here in India, but our bottled options are fresh lime soda and two iced tea options. The way, I don't know if fresh lime soda is a big thing abroad, but over here in India, it is the number one drink for middle-class families. When you go out with your family, each person of the family has a different order for fresh lime soda. Some like it with just salt, some like it just sweet, some like it with sweet and salt, and some monsters like it with no salt or sugar. This is from a company called Brew House, a tea brewing company. This is supposed to be a mojito lemon iced tea. It's nice. And next, a peach iced tea. It's nice. Nando's also offers these drinks called designer drinks, which seem to be non-alcoholic soft drink cocktails. It seems like they just took 7-Up and blended them to form different flavors with different colors. But I'm curious to see if they actually taste good. Color, color, which color do you choose? Let's try the virgin mojito. Ah, tastes like a mojito without the alcohol. You can see they've gone the extra mile. They put in fresh lemon, a lot of mint in there. Next one is Citra, which I assume is a mandarin slash orange flavored drink. Oh, nice. Very delicious, super refreshing. I thought this could be something we could make fun of Nando's for, but they've actually made some delicious, refreshing drinks. Hip dip do, the cat's got the flu, the dog's got the chicken pox, and so have you. Portuguese lemonade, let's go. What makes it Portuguese? I don't know, maybe it's olive oil, let's see. This is really yum. So it's not all sweet. It has like some sort of powder at the bottom. Is it peri peri powder? I don't know, but it tastes like chaat powder that they put in a lot of lemon sodas here in India. And it's really yum. Peach and elderflower. They've actually put a slice of peach in there. These are certified designer drinks. Half a chicken, peri peri chips, and garlic bread at a UK Nando's will cost you 13 pounds and 10 pence. That same meal in India will cost you rupees 869, which at the time of filming this video is equal to 9.85 pounds. That's almost 25% cheaper of a meal than the one in the UK. Okay, now while you Brits might feel hard done by because of these price differences, I must say that this is actually super expensive for a single meal for a single person here in India. In fact, most people in this country would find that almost aspirational. You can get meals here for close to 100 rupees. That's less than a pound. I would say that I can't even consider this fast food. It is the most expensive restaurant we've tried here on Food Wars, but the food was top class throughout, so I guess it makes sense. Now, Nando's does have some slightly more affordable options in the form of meal deals, where you can get a single meal for around 400 rupees, which is equal to 4.5 pounds. This doesn't seem like a significant upgrade, and it isn't. In fact, the state that we're filming this video is Karnataka here in India. 
and the daily wage is around 500 rupees so you would have to literally work an entire day to afford a single meal here in Nando's in fact my first salary as an intern was 10000 rupees per month which is 125 pounds per month and so if i ordered a cheeky nando's it would literally be nearly one tenth of my entire monthly salary i'm not sure i'd consider nando's an affordable option in the uk and i'm not even really sure i'd consider it fast food it sits somewhere in that kind of fast casual bracket combining elements of fast food restaurants with elements of the more traditional dining experience some brits don't really like nando's and might claim that it's kind of overrated i personally love nando's it's fast it's consistent and i have a kind of cultural attachment to it as i was kind of a teenager when it really blew up in popularity here in the uk I might be able to get more value for money at somewhere like a KFC, but to me, it wouldn't hit the same. Unfortunately, Nando's in the UK doesn't disclose a full ingredients list. Nando's in India also doesn't disclose a full ingredient list. So what do we know about the food? Well, the FAQ pages on our respective websites do share some clues. For example, in the UK, Nando says it uses red tractor assured chicken from British farms. To be red tractor certified, chickens must be raised with certain benefits such as no cages and natural light. The Indian FAQ page says that all of Nando's chicken in India is sourced from India and it's all cage free. They also say that all of their chickens are A grade. Now, I don't know what this means because it's hard to keep up with up to date poultry practices here in India. But one report from 2012 said that a top grade chicken must be free of deformities that detract from its appearance or that affect the normal distribution of flesh, slight deformities such as slightly curved or dented breast bones and slightly curved backs may be present. Now, this sounds kind of vague, but I do hope that Nando's is following this practice and only sourcing some A grade chickens because that's what it tasted like, some A grade chicken. One other thing we can glean from the FAQ page is that the great imitator wrap might not be as plant-based as Nando seems to think it is. This is because both the tortilla wrap and also the glaze used on the chicken contain shellac. Shellac is a substance used in food as a glazing agent, but it's found in various other things such as nail polish, fireworks, and sealants. The twist is that it's technically an animal product. It's a resin secreted by lac beetles. Female lac beetles will secrete it onto trees in the forests of India and Thailand, where it's then harvested, processed, and sold for use. Do bugs count as animals for the purpose of veganism? I'm a meat eater, so I can't really talk, but in my opinion, I don't think a bug should count. I think that's fine. You know what, Harry? Up till now, I didn't get the whole cheeky Nando's meme, but now I kind of get it. I feel like they're having a lot of fun with all the food that they're serving, and I had so much fun eating all of the food. I feel like India should have its own version of the cheeky Nando's we're going to call it the Chalu Nando's because Chalu means kind of cheeky in uh, Hindi. 